Hello everyone, Dark Humility here. Welcome to Barbarian Rags to Riches. If you don't know about my YouTube series Rags to Riches, where I already have the other six classes posted with either one part, two parts, or three parts, so definitely check out all of those to learn about how to start from absolutely nothing on Battle.net, friendless and alone, or even on single player, or even on hardcore, doesn't really matter. And get there from naked to riches, and how to start farming for gear. What distinguishes this series from a speedrun or a playthrough is that we go over various strategies for how to go through the game quickly and effectively with whatever class, but also how to start gathering gear and how to essentially get rich. You can start with whatever one of these characters you want, and you can indeed be able to farm whatever you want for whatever class you want, including just building up the class of your choice. Here today, of course, we have the Barbarian. This is arguably the hardest class, period. Probably not even arguably, I think it is not even arguably, it is not debatable. But this is the toughest class to start from nothing on. Typically the way to get rich in a Barbarian is to have your friends give you gear in exchange for your battle orders, shout, and battle command. However, or of course to follow behind them in various runs and games like in Chaos, or Travancle, and Hork Bodies, and claim the gear for your own. Of course, you can even go to public games and do that as well. Arguably, that is the fastest and most effective way to riches on a Barbarian. However, today, I'll be showing you what it is like to torture yourself. If you want to choose the hardest class to start with, start with nothing, and even will be able to do it without manipulating the player count on Battle.net, Solo, I will show you how to do it. Of course, there are many approaches to the Barbarian, um, especially more since Double Throw was massively buffed. Of course, um, I'm actually going to plan on showing you guys the Double Throw approach at least early on, and then it'll transition into something a bit more familiar in the mid game, which is Warcry as a primary approach. And in the end game, we'll show you guys a number of approaches for effective farming all of those nightmare and hell areas that are going to make you rich. And uh, of course we will have chapters for everything throughout. This is only part one, so make sure to check out the other parts of the video as well. Once again, this is not a speedrun, but I will be showing you guys some strats that may or may not be used in speedruns, of course, uh, so that you guys will see how to do things optimally, but I'll be slowing them down significantly. I'll also be showing you guys map reading and all kinds of other strategies to play a barbarian from nothing effectively. Alright, so with all that being said, let's get to it. Look at him. It looks like he's ready to go. It looks like he's like one of the most dangerous characters to start. But nothing could be further from the truth. Of course, we'll be doing it on softcore as well, um, because in, I will be giving tips for hardcore, but I won't be doing the guide itself, this guided playthrough um, on hardcore, because you never know. I, even I can make mistakes, and then the guide will be dead in the water. But I do often do hardcore playthroughs as well, so um, that will not be the goal of this, though, today. Of course... <clears throat> Let's begin. Of course, we're doing this online once again, so you cannot change the player count, but I'll also be talking about what you would want to do differently. If you can, change the player count and differently on Hardcore. But the idea is to do these guided playthroughs in the most extreme circumstances I possible. Can. Let's say you just really love Barbarian, and you want to get rich as fast as possible from nothing. Naked on a Barbarian, this is going to be how to do it. Yes, all of my Rags to Riches guides are all done online, Players 1, Solo Battle.net, um, so that people are not like, well, this is cool and all, but how do you do it when you can't change the player count? And it's like, well, 
I'll show you guys the most extreme form, and then of course, if you can change the player count, it's much better. As you can see, we have no gear anywhere. This is a naked barbarian. Alright. Of course, before you get going, you're going to want to make sure you have whatever hotkeys that you're most familiar with. I'm going to use the ones that I'm most familiar with here. Let's see. Gonna assign whatever button. Make sure just I like using keys around the home row as uh, opposed to the F keys. I feel like it's a bit better on your hands because your hands have to reach more to get to the F keys, um, and of course that allows you more keys near your hands. So that's kind of what I do. You can do whatever you want though. Demons and beasts. Anyway, we're gonna want to do of course. Leave the camp and start killing monsters and in the very beginning, just like I mentioned with all my Rags to Riches guides, you're going to want to just start killing everything around you, following the path to the Den of Evil, which is the first quest. Ooh, that is actually quite a nice thing to find from the get-go there. We just got more damage. There's a scepter. Weapons can be good to put on, sashes can be good to put on. Um, and socketed items can be good to keep, and gems and things like that. But for the most part, we're just going to be um, killing monsters and making our way to the Den of Evil and picking up everything that, so that we can sell it and buy potions in our first back. Um, it's not till I complete Hell Bale, so... This is a run to get to the parts of the game where you're going to get rich by farming. And we'll show you guys different strategies to do that. Uh, since Bale doesn't really include getting rich on the Barbarian and there's no way to do that early, it's actually very likely we'll not be doing any Hell Bale content as that will just make the guide take longer than is necessary. <clears throat> Um, we'll also not be doing ubers in this guide, because unlike Rags to Riches Assassin or Paladin, it is a lot tougher to do ubers from nothing on a Barbarian. But that being said, eventually once you get a few more items, you can also do ubers with no problem. The Barb can truly do these things despite him having a bit of a tougher time than most. So anyway, once you get to the Den of Evil, the ends of the path at the end of one of these path forks here. Put down a TP, keep killing monsters along the way. Uh, as you can see there, hitting these chests and these houses is very nice, and that is a very important item we just got there for a barbarian. Um, especially if you're going to be using certain strats. That is a Stringling Gas Potion, and this is the only class that I would say really should try to find one early on because you really lack damage early game. The earliest parts of the game are truly the most painful for the Barbarian. Alright, so I'm just gonna keep picking things up. Looks like we already have a decent amount of things here, so what I'll do is I'll get the Cold Plains Waypoint, go back to town, sell real quick and then pick up a whole bunch of other stuff there Hello. in the Den of Evil. So for the most part you sell pretty much everything. Um, those won't sell for anything early on. Blue Scepter, however, we can use that for our own use. Use that for damage at level 6. Scepters are like the first major upgrade for double swing. And then we'll keep the strangling gas potion for now. And we'll keep chip gems. In general, you don't want to sell those. You're going to want to keep those as well. And then you can actually, if you already can, you can buy some books already, which would be nice. Buy some stamina potions. We don't actually need a... <laughs> don't need mana potions this early, actually. Uh, just buy more health potions, and then you're good to go. That was a mistake. That's okay, though. Health potions, stamina potions, you can get thawing potions as well. Wow. But anyway, typically the first back can be after the Den of Evil anyway, so... Doesn't really matter. 
All right, what's up everyone? How you doing, Alexander Bax? This is a Barb Start guided playthrough with no items, no single player, nothing. It is painful indeed. The last, maybe not as painful as some think. So in general, the Barbarian skills very well off of Vitality. Um, of course, in most classes, you'll be doing this anyway. You're just going to want to be putting almost all your points into Vitality at this stage. Uh, you get 4 life per Vitality point on this class, the most out of any class in the game. Uh, so you're definitely going to want to do that. Absolutely. Um, one thing you can do is if you were going to go Maces early on and help out your Mace power, you can start putting some points into Mace Mastery after putting a point to Bash. Um, but what we're going to do is just put a point to bash and prepare for double throw um, and try to save as many respects as possible because the point is to get rich and not have to dump all of our wealth into trying to respec our character. That would be kind of bad. <clears throat> What's up, Scorpio? How you doing? There are many Hello, Rose. Here. That being said, I should probably get normal attack as well. Since we already have a scepter, which is pretty nice, we're already doing some more damage with just a regular attack. In the very beginning of the game, you can just use your normal attack. You don't need anything fancy. You just smash him with the left click. Easy mode. I'm gonna want to kill every monster in here. This will continue to get us some more experience. Continue to pick up everything at this point in the game so you can make sure you have some gold. Then you'll progress from here. Interestingly enough, you don't even really need the buckler, but you can have it if you want. It's nice to have stamina potions this early. That's kind of nice. Have you ever tried leap attack when leveling? Feels good until act one hell. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, we're probably gonna mess with that a little bit. It's not gonna be like our primary approach because I feel like it's a little tougher probably for a lot, but it does a ton of damage though. So you can indeed do that. Maybe we'll find a weapon that makes leap attack better too. I don't know. We'll have to see. One thing at a time, though. There's definitely a couple of different approaches I'd like to show off in this, but there's always more approaches than I can show off in just one guided playthrough. So I typically just mention some of the ones and I mention how to do them, in case you don't want to. One thing to note is that if you were already on single player, you'd already have it set to players 8 instead of players 1. And even though you'd kill the monsters a lot slower, you could level a lot faster. Alright, so we just leveled up to level 3. Gonna have another skill point from Den of Evil. At this point though, I am just going to save a lot of skill points. This is gonna make it a little slower, but it's gonna make it easier. So that we can transition into my favorite leveling approach, which is double throw. However, you can also go the double swing frenzy approach, and that would also be pretty prominent at this point in the game. We will, of course, transition into double swing temporarily because it is on the way to double throw. But we're not going to super focus it. Alright, Barbarian is doing okay, right? Rare items sold for more than all these other types of items. So we can start talking about what items to pick up after this a bit, but um, at this point you just want to kill every monster in the den and pick up every item. It's pretty simple. Ooh, here we go. And there we did. You were pretty thorough there. I recommend when doing this quest to make sure you're very meticulous checking out everything along the way so that you don't have to backtrack, but it can be difficult to avoid that oftentimes. So, 
Do your best. What's up, chat? What's up, everyone? Welcome to Barbarian Rags to Riches. Solo battle net guided playthrough. Barbarian nothing to gobbly. A lot of people have been looking for this guide on YouTube. I don't know how many people will be watching it today. This will be part one today, though. I think minimum we're looking at two parts. However, um, like our Amazon one, it might be a three-parter. The Amazon was supposed to be a two-parter, but very possible this is a two or three part guide it's gonna take a while the barbarian as i mentioned in the beginning is uh he's a little slow just a little bit Good day. not much just a little bit yeah it's broken all right so one dexterity isn't very good that's just better for selling fire resist ring that's not bad so resistances are good to keep We'll keep some resistances there as well, why not? Resistances, life, and weapon damage. It's pretty much all you need. Everything else you just can keep selling to the vendor. And yeah, that's... IDing things will typically make them worth a lot more, especially if they can have plus skills on them. But for the most part, it won't actually matter. Slow till you get frenzy. Mm, See, so yeah, we're... Uh, to some extent, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys an approach I like to do. To be honest, though, there's a lot of things you can do early on because it's not super strong, period. So you don't actually have to worry about that at all. And even from the very beginning, you can check Charcy for two socketed armors or um, two socketed armors or two socketed helms. And even a three socketed large shield. But don't worry about that too much. You're definitely going to want two scepters pretty early on, though, but uh, you'll get those, of course. That's really good, though. Because you already have two crap scepters, so that's nice. But we'll get two more as well. Um, you're going to want some basic scepters in a bit. Honestly, this one's kind of nice. Two socketed scepter. We can already get this set up, and that's already better than what we're using. Boom. Sockets are nice, because we can also make ourselves a bit stronger with gems early on. And you can do that with no problem. You go to legacy mode, you can quick buy potions just by spamming left click. Then you can switch back, you can sell the mana potions, because you don't need them this early. And thawing potions are nice to use in case you get frozen, which is a big problem on this character because you use physical damage as your primary mode of attack and you use attack speed. So you're definitely going to want to have those on hand. Alright. But anyway. Got some plus skills. We have three skills now. Don't worry about using any plus skills yet though. I would kind of save them. But we're going to do my approach. If you're doing the uh, double swing approach and you're putting extra points into double swing, I recommend putting your points, two points into bash or one point into bash, depending on what you want to do here. And then you can put like a couple points into bash and then you put some points into mace mastery. That's what you would do from the beginning. However, we're not going to do that. We're going to hold points for double throw. I like double throw. I think I think it makes a lot of things easier. Some people don't like it though because you might have to go back and repair here and there. But it's not a big deal. So one thing to note now is that now that you're, that you're out of the den of evil, you can kill some monsters a few here and there like I just did. But notice how I went for that elite pack there next to the waypoint where there's minions. And there's a special named monster. Those monsters give 500% more experience than regular monsters. So killing those is way more efficient, and ignoring the regular monsters is typically the right thing to do. Uh, champions will give 300% experience, so you can also kill those, and that's also going to be pretty efficient. So right there, we are following the trail in the cold plains. Uh, since this is leading to a new area that's right by the wall, we know that's burial grounds. You don't ever have to do the burial grounds quest, it's actually not very useful. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to avoid that and not bother doing that at all. 
You can do it if you really want a mercenary, but you never need a mercenary this early on in the game. And uh, it's just going to die a lot anyway, unless you want to focus on giving it somewhat decent gear. But that's just going to slow you down for the most part. Let's see if there's anything good in this house here. No. As certain houses can have super chests in them. Clickables are very nice for items. In general, at this point, what you're going to want to focus on picking up for gold is items that can have plus skills, like class-specific items like staves, druid helms, barbarian helms, necro shields, necro wands, and things of that nature. This thing, uh, sorceress orbs, you know, things like that will give you the most bing for your buck if they have plus skills. The higher down the skill tree the skill is, in this case this would just be a level 0 skill, 2 to Ice Bolt, um, the more gold you can get from them. So those are very good. You're also going to want to pick up certain items like uh, strangling potions early on. You can sell jewelry or use jewelry. Ow. Oh dear. <laughs> Alright, so this is Rockaniju. We found him going into the other area where... It, where it forks off. And that's the stony field. Rockinizu hurts. As you can see, he's lightning enchanted. He's the first actually semi dangerous monster in the game. Of course, fire, not really. Let him hit you. And that's the fun. But yeah, it's no good. Yeah, I didn't buy any javelins yet. I was waiting to get my javelin, but I will get the javelin. So I didn't find a javelin. He, someone in chat is talking about a javelin. So the way it works is um, from Charcy you can buy a javelin. And javelins do the most amount of damage possible, and you can just throw them. Of course, you can also just kite him out and kind of run away and hit him here and there and do that as well. But that's usually a little bit slower. There's another elite pack right there, and there's also a minion. We dropped a wand. Since we didn't find a javelin, typically I'd find one by this point, and then let's actually buy one as well and show it off like I normally do in Rags to Riches. Normally we have a javelin by this point. We could do that as well though. Let me go find the uh, stony field though. Oops. Oh yeah, that's a very good reason to like Javelins. So one thing to note about Rockinizu is this is where you're going to be going into Tristram and saving Kane. These stones are always located somewhere along the path in the stony field. So once you get into the stony field, which is in the entrance that is not right next to a wall, unlike this one over here, you're going to want to continue along this path and find him and kill him. He's an elite monster. He's a super unique monster, which means he always spawns. He always drops two items, and he's the first dangerous monster. Right there, what I did, though, is I just made use of my HP. Barb has a lot of HP. You can kind of just kite him out, and as long as you're putting all your points into vitality still at this point in the game, you can just do that, no problem. Just got to make sure you heal yourself here and there. Make sure you know where your potion hotkeys are. Be dangerous. I am overburdened. At any rate, we are now level 5, almost level 6. Right now what I'm doing is I'm looking for the stony field waypoint, which is somewhere out here. And this will be useful to go back to if you want to save Kane real quick and get a free uh, piece of jewelry. You don't have to do this quest. I typically like doing them though, it's quite a nice. And we just got a free chip gem, which is also kind of nice and we'll be able to use those for a lot of things later. Make sure to keep all those chip gems. Um, Second, you get a rejuvenation potion, put it in your belt as well, and make sure you have it in your panic button, so make sure you know where to, where to find that button. If your health gets really low instantly, you can use it to instantly refill your health, at least 35% of it, and then you won't instantly die. So, that's always a nice thing to be aware of. You're also going to want to hold on to as many of those as possible in the very beginning. But then you keep following the path. I'm going to the underground passage. Continue to find elite packs, pick up some armor items, some potion items, maybe some throwing knives, and pick up some of those class specific items to sell them. 
Like, this has three to raise skeleton. This would be insane on a Necro for a start. But since we're not a Necromancer, that's going to sell for a lot of gold. So that's kind of cool. So no more level. We can get double swing, which we're going to use. I'm not really too concerned right now. At this point in the game, you literally don't need much. You just need it. You just need to be putting points into vitality. You can just use normal attack or bash. Bash will do a bit more damage. Consume your mana. Should have actually used bash against Rock and Iju there, but I forgot. I haven't, uh, haven't started Barb in a while, but there you go. Better late than never, right? Plus three. Yes, okay. Yeah, Rock and Iju would have died a bit faster if I did that. And then you can do it in higher player count as well. If you do it in players 8 on sing uh, single player, once again, you can level up even faster. It will take a little while to kill some of the monsters, though. Alright, so Underground Passage map is kind of weird. Once you get into here, this starting area here kind of all points in a general direction. Wherever the hallway is kind of leading you to. So this hallway here is going this way, so in general we're going to want to follow it. It might be pointing in the same direction, maybe a little bit off to the left or off to the right, but in general the exit's going to be towards that direction. So you're going to want to follow uh, wherever that's pointing you to so you can get out of the underground passage and successfully get out. Uh, we always do our uh, bar, uh, Rags to Riches guided playthroughs on Softcore. If you want examples of them, um, I actually have an example of one right there. There's Rags to Riches Assassin Part 1 Part 2. In case you wanted to know how to start from nothing and get rich playing an Assassin. These are full length guided playthroughs. They are not just uh, playthroughs and they're not necessarily, necessarily a guide either. They are very long. You can follow along while you play the Barbarian. You can follow along with me right now if you want. It's fun stuff. Okay, so now the monsters are a little stronger, so it's gonna be a little harder to hit them. In order to hit something, you need attack rating. I haven't put any points into decks yet, which is still fine. Keep in mind that this will make it a little harder to hit things there at this point. But you're still going to want to be putting points into vitality for the most part. Found an elite pack, so I'm killing the monsters. Anything that says minion under it, 500% experience. It's really nice. We are using Bash a little bit here and there. We can definitely make use. Mana potions now, which is nice. Ooh, another one. Okay. There's the javelin we were looking for. Sweet. What's up, Q Mac? How you doing? Oh, baby. What a good time to log in. What's up, Rolling Hammer? How you doing? Alright, so in general, once your stamina runs out and you're walking instead of running, you're gonna pop stamina, stamina potions at every time. These are gonna do quite a bit of damage to you. That's okay. Barb has a lot of HP already at this point in the game. Really allows him to. Uh, Get right in there and do damage. Alright, sweet. So we're only going to put Vitality in for one more level, and then we're going to start getting Dexterity and Strength. This is an F Javelin. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we actually didn't end up having to buy it from Charcy because I found one. So what you can do with this... Actually, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, it does a lot of damage. Look how much damage that is versus Bash. And I can also use it from afar. If you don't want to get um, electrocuted by Rock and Iju, using a Javelin, if you find it, is actually quite nice. And you don't need the Waypoint from Dark Wood, but you do need to click it. 
And then you can continue on into the next area following the path in the dark wood to Black Marsh. Now what we're going to be looking for in the Black Marsh is two things, the tower and the waypoint. I only really need to find the waypoint right now though because I'm also going to save Kane just for a free ring. Don't have to do that though. So we already found the tower which means you already know where to go. For the first important farm in any of the Rags for Riches guides it would be no. Uh, exception. This one's no exception, of course. Thank you, sir. Already out of stamina, it seems. I have a broken cap. I'm gonna toss it on the ground. At this point, you really don't need much. Don't worry about the small amounts of defense from items. However, things like that cold res and that fire res can be somewhat useful, so you can hold on to those. Nothing else really matters though, small tiny amounts of defense don't really do much in this game. You're going to need a lot of defense before it becomes a valuable stat. You're going to want to use it. There's a lot of items you can get distracted by, but you're not really going to want to care about that. If you're going to want to do this at any reasonable pace at all. <laughs> Despite it being a barbarian. Okay, so we're looking for the waypoint. Waypoint... Might have to backtrack. Sometimes can be difficult to find. Those clickables, those like chests and things and rocks and things can be quite useful early on. Give you things like rings and amulets, those can be nice. They're also level 6 too, I'm gonna go over that in a moment. But. So as you can see, the monsters are getting strong, but that's okay. Ow, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Alright, so level 6 is actually very important for a barbarian. We're gonna go over a bunch of things now in a second here. Broke our javelin, it's nice. I am our leather armor, that's a that's an armor, it's a little bit of a higher rank, so armor sold pretty well. Pick that up. Okay, so let's see. Question is though, is where is the waypoint? Give me a waypoint. I just need a waypoint somewhere so I can go back to town. Will Diablo 4 make me quit Diablo 2? Nope. This is uh, always going to be my main game, but I will play D4 when it's hot. I do enjoy Diablo 4 so far, and I think it's got a lot of potential. If you guys don't enjoy it, that's cool though. Alright, so here we go. We have Black Marsh. And the waypoints. Alright, so there's a bunch of things to go over here. So, we can save came with that. That's nice. Um... Control left click, we can just sell these items. You see those items with plus skills, how much gold they give us early on? It's very important. Also, looks like we just got some additional fire res, which is actually kind of nice. You can definitely take use of that a little bit. I'd rather have the fire res, actually, than the rare one. Higher resistance is better. Okay, and then... The rest of this, you can look for ones with, like, gems, but it's not really important because it's not going to be our main thing anyway. Early on, I can actually use the chip Amethyst for, like, some additional attack rating, which could be nice. And then, of course, we could also use the chipped Emerald as well for some poison damage, which is nice, but we're actually not going to do that because we're going to have a main source of poison damage. And what we're also going to do is we're going to put one point into double swing. And then of course we can just hold on to the rest of these points because there's not really any point in doing anything with them at the moment. Uh, you can get leap but we'll get that later on I think and yeah. 
And then you can just put points into Throwing Mastery once you're able to use it. But since we can't use Double Throw yet, it doesn't really matter. We're actually just going to continue to use now. We're going to now use Double Swing instead. And we're going to use this Strangling Gas Potion. You might be wondering. And make sure it doesn't run out. If it runs out, it will disappear. And they don't sell these at the vendor, so then you'll have to find another one from a monster. We got lucky finding this very early on. Sometimes when you play a barb, it can take uh, many runs of even the tower seller just to get your first strangling gas potion, which is really lame. But that's okay. This early in the game, though, that is a very useful item. Um, you don't have to have a strangling gas potion, but don't have one, it's definitely going to make life a little more difficult. And those socketed things... We can even get like a three socketed bow if we find one. That would be nice for much later in the game. But normal Charcy sells some very useful things indeed. And then we'll go to the other ones. The order welcomes you. Always I, I hard to find the waypoint in Dark Wood. Yeah, I don't... you don't even need to, so... Uh, keep in mind, these better potions are going to be better than these light ones. You can sell them if you have excess potions. Make sure you have enough stamina potions, though. And then make sure you have some thawing potions as well. And then leave open some room for uh, picking up some items. Uh, you can, of course, consume potions to pick up more items if necessary. But yeah, that's about it. So we got our strangling gas potion usable at level 6. We have double swing at level 6. And at this point, you're going to want to make sure for sure you have at least two scepters. You can have white scepters. You can have ones with sockets like this. And if you put gems in them, it can make you a little stronger. <clears throat> at the very least, that's what you're going to want at level 6. And then all your points need to be in vitality. Makes your life a lot easier when you're not constantly dying. <clears throat> and the Barbarian gets right up in the face of the monster, so... Don't want that. In Hardcore, you definitely don't want that, so... See that we were actually able to face tank Treehead Woodfist in Dark Wood. Most classes can't do that at this point in the game. Normally you're going to want to kite them out. And if you watch my other uh, Rags for Riches, you'll see that's what I do for the other ones. The bar gets so much life per vitality point that it's actually quite nice. The barb does have some advantages early on after all. However, the one advantage it doesn't have is damage. So that's always going to be a bit of a struggle this early on. So there you go, we're going to kill some champions, we're going to click the cage. Ooh, amp. Okay, careful for that. So this monster is cursed. That means that it casts amplified damage. You see that fire-looking thing above your head? That means that the monsters will now do double physical damage to you. It's very dangerous. Also, Griswold will do the same thing as well. Killing him, I don't really recommend it. Uh, he doesn't drop any good things. I can't carry anymore. Uh, his loot table is pretty bad. But you can kill him if you want. It also just takes a while. He doesn't give you much experience either, so instead I killed an elite pack with minions. And I killed some champions, and I freed Decker Kane, and then I picked up this Word Slig. A Word Slig will become very useful later on. So make sure to uh, keep that handy. Ken. Diablo 4 Rags for Riches Druid sounds painful. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, there you go. There's some, there's some light res. There's some mana. I guess we'll have some mana for a bit here. All right, mana. Mana could be good a little bit later, but mostly just res. Everything else you just sell. Plus skills you sell. Um, notice here has a bit of attack rating. If there's anything with sockets, though, you can still look for like a socketed weapon at this point um, until you hit level 12, and then that's not gonna matter anymore. Um, we're no longer using a throwing javelin because at this point we are stronger without using a throwing javelin. We also have a strangling gas potion, uh, so you don't need that anymore. 
Also, we found an F1, which means you can't even repair it. So, by the way, if you run out of javelins and you always want them, they're always here uh, from Charcy. Uh, these are going to become important in a little bit, uh, especially important, even more so than the very beginning. Get some decks, why not? Okay. Generally, you just want to look for sockets. All right. Um, what can okay. I do for you? Is there no? No three socket bows. Okay. All right. So we saved Kane. We got our free ring. It's kind of random, but whatever. If you've made it to this point in the game with a Barbarian, by the way, you've already gotten past some of the more difficult parts. A lot of players find up to this point a little difficult. But, just do what I do. It's not that bad. Now this part is when things get a little hairy and where some people start, where they, they quit the playthrough. Straight up. So you're always going to want to do uh, tower solar runs for Countess. Countess can drop up to Rao or any rune from L to Rao. A lot of these runes are very important for your run, depending on what kind of approach you're going to take when leveling early on. Um, there's a lot of runes that are going to be important here, potentially. So you're going to want to do this run for a while, and while you're doing that, you're also going to want to level up to at least level 12 and up to level 15 in here. Finding a strangling gas potion is very useful, and you're going to want to use this to supplement your damage against the lead pack so you don't get wrecked. Otherwise, of course, it's going to be like this. Now, when it comes to navigating the tower, this entrance area here, as you can see, is pointing this way. It's pointing towards this wall where I'm running into right now. Uh, you're going to want to look for a west or a left-facing tile relative to where this is pointing. So this is pointing this way, so some kind of like, I guess you'd say like southwest. So what we're looking for is a southeast. And believe it or not, we can actually see the exit here. Sure enough, it is pointing in that direction. It's gonna be southeast. So it's gonna be west or left facing. It's pointing that way, kind of where I'm drawing my cursor relative to this way. So a lot of maps in D2 work like this. Tower Cellar is only the first one you might encounter. Otherwise, it's kind of good. Also, I just realized I could actually have music right now. Normally, I have it off. Ah, that's a barb helm. So a barb helm could be good. Could have plus skills. That's not really that useful of a plus skill, but it's one you could have. I'm not going to bother with it. I'd actually rather have the res. But let's say I found, like, a, I don't know, plus one to, like, throw mastery or something. I'd probably put that on. Otherwise, it can sell them. <laughs> Alright, so as you can see, this is an elite pack. When you're this low of a level, you're definitely going to want to use the throwing gas potion if you can. You're going to want to toss it in, and then finish them off with double double swing. I can't carry anymore. Okay. That's in general how you pretty much deal with every elite pack. You throw the gas potion right in front of them or on top of them, depending on if they're archers or if they're monsters that are going to run at you. Ow. Okay, so as you can see, they hurt a lot. When you take damage, you want to try to have a potion running. Ran out of juice. These juice are your lifeline, though, so make sure to keep them. They're on hardcore. Try to make sure you have at least one at all times. Alright. So, we can kill the champions. This is pointing this way, so we're looking for something pointing this way to the left. And sure enough, it's immediately to the left. One thing to note, though, is while you're going down the levels in the tower cellar, is that if you go a little bit further sometimes from where you're supposed to go, you might find another elite pack. And then you can get more experience. <clears throat> yes, this is the most painful class to level, to solo level in Diablo 2. However, you will now be equipped to do it. You so choose. Alright, so it's pointing this way, so we're looking for the left or this way. So I'm going to go immediately to the left here. I'm going to try that. 
See if there's anything over there. There's not. And this one's straightforward. There's only one space, only one place you can really go. Archers hurt very badly, by the way. So we're gonna put five more points into vitality, and then we're gonna start putting some points into decks. So those are our last five points into vitality once you hit level seven. Do you want to make sure about level six before you even mess around in the tower cellar? Which we made sure we were doing. See, these are an elite archers. And that is a gray armor that can have sockets that can be useful. Nope, it has one socket. That is disappointing. Okay. It's a ring. Energy is not very useful to put into a bar because you get very little mana per point of energy. It's not very stat efficient, so I wouldn't bother messing with energy stat in the lands class. You can if you want, but it's not good. Okay, here we go. Is there another elite pack? No, there's not. Okay. Make sure you don't run out. So when you start running out of potions, there'll be a red icon over here or a yellow icon. So don't run out of those. Otherwise, you're going to have to find new ones. Or you're just going to make your run slower. Because you just won't find them again. Which can very well happen. Don't worry about the rest of your skill points yet. We're not going pure double swings, so we're not going to deal with that. Sure to set down throw potions as much as you can. Notice that these potions do a lot of work. So even though I'm really weak as a barbarian, I can still kill the monsters. Really. So we went and killed the Countess, no problem. She dropped a Tur rune. This rune can be useful in a Barbarian, specifically if you're making the rune word Steel Tur L. However, it's not going to matter yet. At this point, though, we're going to want to reload and we're going to farm the Countess again and again and again until we get the runes that we want. At minimum, you're going to want Tau Eth for stealth. There's also a possible bunch of other runes you might want as well. Alright, Fulminating Potions aren't very good. I'm going to take the Fire Resist, though. That's kind of nice. There's a Two-Socketed Helm. That's kind of nice. I don't know why, but she's not selling socketed items. Typically, she sells them a lot easier. But that's okay. Well, and better. Where can I take you? FHR. Hit recovery is not bad with res. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to make or break your playthrough early on, though. Jewels, in general, you're going to want to keep, if you can. At this point, uh, once you get to about 10,000 gold, you can just, like, uh, shift, right-click, uh, tone, uh, Scrolls of uh, Town Portal and Scrolls of Identity, so that you can max out uh, your quantity. So you don't have to keep buying them or not have them available when you need them out in the wild. And there you have it. You can also max out your keys as well. You're not playing an assassin, so we're going to need keys. Open up locked things and locked chests and things like that have a better chance to drop better items. This also appears to be the case in Diablo 4 if you've played it. Interestingly enough. Alright. This has some fire damage. Pick that up very early on. Uh, we can sell these though at some point here and then we'll get more gold. But we don't have to worry about that at the moment. And in general, 
Once you have potions that you need and you sell everything, you can just go back and do it again. Now we, one thing we didn't do, which we should do actually, just to show you guys how to do it properly, is make sure you resell your strangling gas potions and rebuy them so that you have max quantity again. Since we bothered to do that, I may as well check for a two-socketed piece of armor, which I found finally. Remember, you can only put rune words in gray items with the exact number of sockets and the runes in the exact order. This is a gray item. If you try to get a blue armor with two sockets, that would not work. Um, people make this mistake literally all the time on every forum I've ever seen, and it's always tragic. Don't do it if you can avoid it. So it has to have gray lettering at the top, hard leather armor sockets. No other item will work there. Is a mercenary not helpful at this point? Correct, that's actually something I already went over. Um, mercenary doesn't... you could get one if you want, but it's not really going to make or break uh, your playthrough, and usually it just takes unnecessary amounts of time to keep reviving her and other things like that if you want the act one. I do like the Act 2 one, though, and of course, uh, we'll uh, go over that once that becomes relevant. We're still in Act 1. Uh, damaged items sell for less. Certain ones can still be useful, but if you see any damaged or cracked things, those are going to be no good unless they can spawn with plus skills. Uh, items that can spawn with plus skills, like scepters and things like this thing, like the Defiance and Prayer Aura. Um, can be good even if they're damaged for selling. That's about it. <clears throat> Everything else you pretty much leave on the ground. So one thing to note about the tower I haven't mentioned yet is that the tower is always located on one of the walls, either in the inner walls or on the outside of the Black Marsh somewhere. Sometimes the Black Marsh is split into two parts with one half across a bridge as well. And then sometimes you'll have to look for it on the outside there as well. One thing to note here as well, is that if you're playing on single player, okay, so we just got frozen. Is it cold enchant? Cold enchant does full damage on Nova if you kill one of those monsters. So notice how slow it is without the strangling gas potion. This is I just kinda wanted to show you guys that uh, the strangling gas potion saves a lot of time. But yeah. Anyway. Um, one thing I kinda wanted to mention here though is that we have, so this map here is pointing this way, so then you're actually going to want to go to the left or west of that in order to find the countess. So it's the same here just as it is everywhere. Also wanted to show you guys what it looks like without the sprinkling gas potion. Alright, here we go. So we're just going to keep farming the countess for levels and runes. We're not even a minimum of level 12 yet, so... Don't worry about leaving the tower yet, it's going to be very hard to leave it. It's very difficult to move on from here, especially on a Barbarian. Um, so definitely don't do that. As you can see though, the string of gas potion is a lifesaver. Yeah, as you can see, these cold enchanted monsters will always do a cold nova. They will freeze you. To unfreeze yourself instantly, click a thawing potion. Buying potions and antidotes will also give you 50 res for 30 seconds for every potion that you pop, which means you can get like 10 minutes of 50 res as well if you want, and 10 maximum of that res as well. So you can also get overstacked res. That can become more useful later, but we'll talk about that when that becomes relevant. Really not relevant. One way to tell an elite pack, by the way, is the fact that it has an aura under it. But even if there is no aura, so this aura here is blessed aim, which means that it has a higher chance to hit you, it has attack rating. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. So, this is pointing this way, so I was looking for one going west or to the left, but I decided to go a little bit up here, like I mentioned before, to find an elite pack. Killing those elite packs and leveling yourself up as fast as possible is very nice. 
Now, we put a lot of points into Vitality, so what we're going to do is we're going to start putting some points into Dex. This is going to help a lot with attack rating, especially early on, uh, which is really key. This is my starting class in D4, probably Rogue or Sorcerer. I don't know, though. we'll have to see. I am making, I am doing my last Rags to Riches guide, yes. This is the last one. I have one for every other class on YouTube, including tons of other guides on YouTube and MaxRoll at MaxRoll.gg as well. Your best resource for Diablo 2 information. Gymnasium coming in with a fat raid. Woo! What were you doing today, man? That's a, that's a nice one. Thank you so much, man. That's a... Insane, insane, man. I hope you had a great stream. Archers hurt the most, by the way. Very wary of their damage. Uh, kill them as fast as possible. This is definitely where uh, this strangling gas potion is coming in handy. Yeah, what I was going to say is putting Dex in helps mostly early game with attack rating, but it's also going to help being able to wear some very key items uh, early on. So there's a, there's a couple reasons to put some points into Dexterity. You, your inclination might be to put points into Strength by this point. You might be thinking, I'm the strong man, I'm a barbarian, I'm going to put points into Strength. But then you'll probably be doing it wrong because you'll have no health. You might do a little bit more damage, but you're not going to even be able to get to them because you'll die before you reach the monster. That's that's a problem. We're going to target a stealth at minimum here. We'll also talk about other approaches though. Goal is to kind of pack these rags to riches guys with as much info as I possibly can. So that people can learn as many things as they possibly can when they are watching them. So, once again, it's pointing up this way. This is where the whole area is pointing, the whole entrance is pointing this way. So then you're looking for something immediately to the left or west of that. And sure enough, it's all the way up here. It can even be behind the area too. And we'll see some maps that are quote unquote backwards where that is the case. Or you might have to go east first and go all the way around into the west. Um, that can also happen. So we'll talk about that as well. Yep, that's right. And that's something I've already mentioned twice in the video, Gymnasium, which is very important. Once again, just to mention it a third time. No! So that, you know, on, on, the, uh, on the recommendation of Gymnasium, once again, you get four points of life per vitality. So once again, that is why we don't put all our points in strength. But we have already mentioned that at, like, what, level two or something? <laughs> but just in case you didn't, uh, you just skipped ahead to this point in the video. I'll remind you that it's very important to rely a lot on your vitality early on. Whoa! What is that? Okay, sometimes when you play the game, you get lucky, and you find something that is very good. So I don't have any magic finds, so this is kind of interesting to find. This is Blood Crescent Scimitar. Wow. Now this item is kind of cool for a few reasons, but the main reason it's cool is that it has open wounds, but it's also at this level a very strong weapon. So... Strangely enough, though, it doesn't do quite as much damage as these other weapons, so it's kind of up to you whether you want to use it. It is fast, though, so I can actually make my attacks faster by putting this in my main hand because it's a faster weapon. One thing to also note, though, is that it's not a mace, though, but don't worry about that because, once again, I am not going double swing. At level 12, our whole point is to go into double throw because that's just the approach that I want to show you guys. But if you were Mace Mastery and you put some points in there, you might not want to bother with this. But do note it does give res, life, life leech, more attack speed, and open wounds. That's pretty cool. 
So, but you can put this in your other hand there to make your attacks faster. You'll notice that we're actually attacking faster now. I, I think it's worth using this at this point in the game, pretty much always. Uh, because you still have one mace anyway. And now you're going to be attacking faster. This is your main hand, so you always, if you have a slower weapon, you always put it in the right hand. If you have a faster weapon, you're going to want to put it in the left hand. And so that's something that we're going to explain a bit more when we go over the bar in more detail. But we're not really at those parts in the game yet. Just kind of wanted to mention that in case you do find something like that, though found it, so it was an interesting talking point. <clears throat> it's always an interesting talking point, right? Very, very, very interesting indeed. Alright, so, actually, I think I'd rather keep the mana. We're gonna need the mana for double throw early on. It definitely helps a tiny bit. None of this other stuff matters, though. Let's see if there's plus skills on the Druid Helm. There's not. Um, that's really cool stuff, though. Actually, I think we're going to keep that just for attack rating. Yeah, I don't care about the fire damage. Some flat elemental damage can also maybe be decent early on. And that's actually something that you might want to focus as you try to make your barb stronger um, as you progress through the game. Right now, though, we're still farming the Countess. There's two sockets. We got Raul F. Those are nice runes. And at this point, we can already make... Um, Actually, no, we can't. <laughs> Not yet. Just keep picking up every rune. Don't sell any of the runes to the vendor. Even if it's not for a rune word you think you need, keep all of your runes. Do you want to emphasize that? I don't think I've emphasized that yet in this Rags to Riches video. It's very important that I mention that somewhere. Hey, look, more fire is. We could actually just have even more fire res. I think I'll just keep the tiny amount of uh, mana though. That can actually help a bit. That is a barbarian helm. We don't have enough strength to wear it, but it'd be pretty easy to get. Has only one to howl though. Not super interesting. Uh, we did mention that certain skills like maybe double throw or throw mastery could be good, uh, especially as we start to transition out of some things, but yeah. And then notice that this scepter we picked up early on is worth 5,000. You could even keep that till Act 2 and sell it for up to 10,000. In normal Act 1, you can only sell things up to a limit of 5,000. In Act 2, it's 10,000. And later on, a lot more. <clears throat> Don't I get tired? What do you mean? <clears throat> We're doing a guide right now, sir. I am energized! I am I'm ready for a super long grind stream thing today. If you mean if I do ever get tired of D2, I don't know. I just played D4 for 74 hours. I think I'm good. <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah, it's too early to be asking that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Alright, so we got a bunch of potions again. Oh, it looks like we forgot our thawing potions because I'm a knucklehead. That does happen, though. Thank you again, Gymnasium, by the way. Oh, it looks like uh, on software is going to be a Diablo clone walk. That's kind of nice. Too bad I'm not in hell already, or I, uh, we can maybe do that for fun. All right, so this is a softcore versus hardcore thing, but once you get a decent amount of gold, you can also stash it so that when you die, you don't drop all of it. So putting, putting that in your stash is nice. Uh, on hardcore, it won't matter because you just die anyway and lose everything. So, worry about that. Make sure your HP never goes below one on hardcore if you don't already know. Dangerous stuff. Okay, here we go. Quick softcore players, log in to North America and get your Nihilus Charm. Yep. Looks like there's going to be one. Alright, so we're also now going to put another five points into dexterity because once again, we're trying to get enough dexterity to wear some basic items. Um, we're actually going to put five more points into dex after this. And then we're going to put uh, two rounds of points into strength. And that should be about it. And then we'll start putting points into vitality again. 
but at this point, um, until we've started putting more points into decks, but in general, that's kind of what you're going to want to do by this point. And I know it looks weird with seven skills not put in, but once again, it doesn't matter. If you really want to, if you don't want to have all these skills remaining, and you're going throw like I am instead of putting points into Mates Mastery and putting points into Double Swing, which you would be doing at this point if that's what you were doing, you could just put a point into Throwing Mastery and start preparing for that, but that's, um, that's really good. As you can see, putting points into Throwing Mastery is very good. It will increase your damage and attack rating massively. I'm going to put three points in there just to show you guys that there are there is a place you can spend your points to get ready for the skill that we're going to use. Two primary approaches would be double throw and double uh, double swing at this point in the game, though. Eventually, leap attack is a thing as well, as someone else in chat mentioned. That's not what I wanted to do. That was a mistake. You can do either one. I'm going to show you guys the new approach. Or rather, a, a new approach. Mace is also very good, yes. I found when I did throw them on another gold. playthrough. A small gem on a hardcore is playthrough. all I want in exchange for the equipment you'll need on whatever quest you that, might undertake. Uh, throw is very nah, nah, nah. good. Don't be shy. Your guides are the best. I always learn something new. There it is. Diablo has invaded Sanctuary and a thousand small gems from Gorilla. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the kind words, man. Uh, maybe you learned something new already. I don't know. We're gonna go. We're gonna go through. Actually, we're gonna do through. Remember to only kill elite packs if you can, if possible. I am level 9. That means I can be PK'd. That's correct. Once you hit level 9, you can be PK'd. Alright, so yeah, we're looking for the tower again. We're gonna need at least a towel to move on for stealth. Um, if you absolutely want to make steel, though, which is a very good approach very early on, or malice, you're gonna need to stick around a bit longer. I just like throw. Double swing is good too. I, I've been I've been talking about the double swing approach the entire time through this guide so far because I know it's also a dominant approach. However, there's not just one way to do it anymore, and with the new throw mastery additions, totally level is throw, and it's gonna be very strong. One thing I haven't gone over yet, because I haven't really encountered it much, is that if you see shrines in order, there's shrines that are better than other shrines. If you see an experience shrine, uh, it's going to be better than a skill shrine, which is better than things like mana regeneration shrines, armor shrines, and things like that. Combat shrine is also pretty good on a barbarian, though. Experience Shrines give you 50% bonus experience for a long time, so they can be very good if you find them along the way, and they can quicken your leveling journey. I can't carry anymore. Ah, shoot. Wrong button. Anyway... Let's continue. That's pretty cool to find Blood Crescent Cemetery. One thing to note is that attack rating is not just a function of your attack rating, it's also a function of your level and the monster level. If monsters are significantly higher level than you, they'll be hard to hit no matter what. So, 
Harry. It is very difficult to kill monsters when you're not a at least the same level as them on a barbarian. You're using uh, any kind of physical attack. Okay, so this is unfortunate here. We've got a cursed amplified damage archer. I am overburdened. Cursed amplified damage archer. Those hit really hard. Didn't already know. Alright, so yeah, there's another scepter, but it has plus skills. Paladin skills will make it sell for a lot. Racks give you a guaranteed socketed item. This can be kind of nice. Attack rating is such a mess in Diablo 2. It kind of is. It's one of the reasons, attack rating is one of the cited reasons why melee builds very early on without gear, or even in the end of the game, are not as strong as caster builds. And, uh, I would tend to agree myself, that is definitely how it works. Character level is the reason why you might struggle with goobers on the kick send versus like a smiter early on as well, which is something you might have seen if you watched Assassin or Paladin Rags to Riches. Angelic Ring and Amy are good for attack ra rating. Yeah, if you can acquire those early on, that would be the dream for sure. Will we encounter those in Barbarian Rags for Riches? Doubtful we'll get both of them. Might find an Angelic Ring, maybe an Amy. We'll see. Alright, so as you can see, you know, this one is a left or west facing tile relative to the entrance here. Pointing this way, and this is pointing that way. At this point, you can put some points into strength if you want to. You're gonna need those points for wearing items later. You can also continue to put some points into dex though. If you're going throw, that might not be a bad idea. Ah, there we go. Nice. Alright, so we got some very nice rooms there. I am overburdened. Uh, what is that for, Torque Hammer? We're making a YouTube guide right now. This is not a Grail character. <laughs> <laughs> oh man do you need to be refunded for a different day I, I don't I don't know I think so we have a moderator that can refund him for that yeah I don't think he knew what we were doing we're making the uh, final installment of rags to riches here and yes I do remember my telly Z lot but we cannot play that right now I know. Do I have a moderator in the chat? Lammy, can you refund him points? Ugh, someone refund him some points. Oh, you did it? Okay, sweet. Okay. 
So anyway, we got Throwing Master. Yeah, we're still just waiting on level 12 for the most part. And we're going to make a new game. Good day. Good to see you. Yeah, I know. You can spin those when we're doing our grilling. We're just doing something different right now. You can probably spin those again in a couple days if you want. I have a lot of options for my points. What? Tower is located on the outside somewhere. It's pretty cool finding a blood crescent, though. That's a uh... wow. I have found Nell Striker and other things like that in the tower on other playthroughs, but that's kind of nice. As you can see, though, this weapon doesn't do that much damage. It's actually the scepter that's doing more damage. Um, but it does make you attack faster, which I do think is worth it here. You guys enjoy me hitting 99 last night? You guys like those 99 pushes, right? Push 99 Barb? Oh, well, I mean, this is a softcore one, so I don't know if I'd do that anyway. So this is this way. It's facing to the left or to the west. At this point, I don't need as much... Um, I mostly just need experience. I got, like, a lot of good runes in that last one. And I can at least make a stealth at this point. Which, by this point, is, I'd say, typical. You might be able to make a stealth. Usually Etherin would be the problem, but not, but we do have an Etherin, so I think we're good. I can't carry anymore. Oh, I know what you're talking about, yeah. I am overburdened. Ah, yes. I can't carry anymore. Gonna make steel? Um, probably not. Also, that requires L rune. So steel require L. Inter malice would require if l f some of those really good starting flail rune words um require l runes which is one of the more rare runes believe it or not from yeah uh, from normal countess Okay. 
Right, right. So one thing to note is that if you can actually manipulate the player account, you normally want to be at the highest possible player account on single player. And if you're struggling with the barb, you can lower the peak count a bit. Um, but uh, if you're going to kill the Countess, make sure before you enter Tower Cellar 5 that you switch it back to Players 1. That's because in players, anything higher than players one, the countess will usually only drop one rune from her rune table, and that's not good. She has a really weird uh, loot table, which is what causes that. Wait, she dropped no runes? Wow, that is um, incredibly unlucky there. It is pretty unlucky. But, that's okay. We don't need more runes from her necessarily. One of the one of the advantages to going double throw, which you'll see here, is if you don't get an L rune, which quite frankly can be pretty difficult to find sometimes. From the Countess, you don't actually need one for double throw. And so you're not a hundred percent dependent on finding this very difficult rune. L rune is one of the toughest runes to get from her, for sure. She can also drop zero runes, even if... Yeah, careful. That's a blue-lettered one. See, that's what I was talking about earlier. You can't make a rune word in that. Got a belt. Nice. So unlike most classes, you can actually use a... a regular belt from the get-go, so that's kind of cool. And that's really good, because now we can put more potions in our belt. Believe it or not, that's better than having stats on your belt, just having more potions. More potions is good. Alright, so we're level 11. I might put more points in this strength. I think I'm actually going to put more points into decks right now and prepare for some of those throwing weapons. At any rate, you can put points into Strength or Dex at this point, and then you're going to be putting more points into Vitality pretty soon. But notice that we already have 200 health, which is not bad. Next level is when we're going to switch everything. Oh, Snake's Barb! I know. Good luck, man. I know. Now one thing about Battle.net versus single player that I think is kind of important to mention here is that Battle.net, the maps always change. On single player, it's actually optimal to get maps where you have like a tower right next to the waypoint because then you have the same map and you know exactly where to go every time. That'll prove even more important if you want to power level a monster like Beetle Burst for levels. However, you're on Battle.net, we do Rags to Riches always in the most extreme circumstances, which is solo Battle.net, no ability to uh, change your player count. Um, you're just going to have to find it every time, but if you have your map hack downloaded in your brain, you don't need to get banned from map hack in the game. Because, remember, tower is always on the outside, always looking for west or a left facing tile relative to where the entrance is pointing. Oh shoot. Ooh, that's nasty. Cursed ghosts. So ghosts are a very interesting monster. A lot of people think they're pretty harmless. They typically are, unless like if 
five to ten of them stack on top of you and then die instantly. They're the only monster where they can literally stack directly on top of one another. And they can all hit you at the same time from the same angle. So be very careful about that. It's pretty dangerous stuff. And they do physical damage and a little bit of cold damage, I think, uh, in later acts, but it doesn't matter. Or later difficulties, sorry. Anyway, left or west facing tile. You gotta know where to go. You know where to go every time. And in Hell and Nightmare, even when the tower gets bigger, that will still be the case. Make sure to have a potion running as your health gets low. If you're on hardcore, you usually don't want your HP to go below half. Throwing knives sell somewhat. I don't know why I picked up a white scimitar. It might have been an accident. It's not going to sell for anything. We did t talk about sell value quite a bit. Okay, so if you go dancing, there we go, regeneration, alright, so remember to always keep rejuves, don't sell them, you're going to need them later, you're going to need as many as possible. Wrath of Guide, I'm going to try to, you know, mention things multiple times if possible, so that people watching the guide at different points. Know what to do. I can't carry anymore. We'll do our best though. I can't carry anymore. So notice here that it is a left or west facing area. It's facing this way relative to this way. But notice how it's all the way in the back. That can happen. But if you in general go up in the left and to the west, you'll usually find it the fastest um, for the tower. Of course, a lot of maps work like this. So we'll go over which ones do. Wow, she dropped nothing again. That is really unlucky, actually. Um, I think it's like 1 in 60 times she drops no runes. But that's okay, because we have all of the runes we need at a bare minimum. So that's going to be what we have. Now, if we were doing a double swing run, this would actually be very unfortunate at this point, because we have no L runes. Um, the, the tower runes would have to save us at this point, but we have no L runes. So that's fine, because we're going to be doing double throws, so it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Good point. Point taken, though. As you can see, the L runes aren't easy to get from Countess, even though she's the most likely to drop runes, period. Um, all the way up till much later in the game. Uh, charms are always good. If you get ones with res, you can use them. If you get res or life, maybe even faster run walk, uh, faster hit recovery be good. If it's anything else, don't really need to bother. You could get some flat damage amounts too, though, on a barb, unlike most other classes, because those will increase your damage slightly. But keep in mind that if your inventory is too full of charms, which you have to keep in your inventory at all times to use them, uh, it's going to be difficult to pick up items and sell them, and that's you know that has its own problems. All right, so attack rating I'm actually going to say is better than maximum damage. We actually have an amulet doing something now. That's kind of cool. Not required though. All right, so at this point in the game, again, yeah, I know that was kind of. It's kind of sus, right, chat? How how in the world did we get two, <laughs> two 
two kills with no... Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, as you can see, we got our juice. It's looking, life's looking pretty good right now. We can sell some of these excess potions as well, maybe. But we're going to need them a lot more here in a second. And you're going to want to use these to start if you're using a double throw barb. And if you find the other javelins or throwing spears, you're going to want to use those. Um, these other ones are much slower. And they either do the same damage or they do less damage. So I'd recommend just using some javelins if you're going double throw. Remember, we're using scepters before. If you're going double swing, you're going to evolve into flails, which you can buy from Farah in Act 2. And you can get socketed flails for some of those rune words like Tur-El and um, if -L -F, which is what I believe is Malice. So Malice and Steel. Or you can just put Talrins in a flail uh, for poison damage, which is very effective. However, we're not going to be going that path. Um, oh, there we go. I got a three socket and rumored base. Might want that later. Maybe, maybe not. Another two socketed armor. It doesn't hurt to have a bunch of those, actually. All right, so now we have two javelins. And interestingly enough, and buy more too. You're gonna need to replenish these because they're white. They're gonna run out. Their blues are any higher. Uh, you can repair them instead. And um, yeah, sometimes it's kind of annoying to do that. But as of patch 2.4, uh, they will self regenerate. They'll self retain their quantity a bit, so you won't lose quantity every time you hit something. And that's because of throwing mastery. But you'll see here the chance to not consume quantity, and that's one of the reasons why putting points into throwing mastery is very good, even early on. But now that we have double throw, we have everything we need there as well. Now notice we can put points into double swing for more damage, but it's only 8% damage per level, whereas we get... Also, we get 5% damage per level, and we get attack rating here. And of course, we'll also get a lot of damage leveling that up as well. I personally recommend to maintain attack rating and other things that you probably put most of your points in a double throw, at least early on. And then you're, sorry, not double th throwing mastery. And then you can continue to put other things into uh, other points later. Also at this level, at level 12, I would consider putting one point to leap. And that is because you're going to want this mobility. This mobility will also help you out in Act 2, um, especially in areas like Arcane Sanctuary. So that might be nice to use as well. So you have leap. You can kind of do, like I said, uh, if you're going double throw, you can save all these points and kind of just put them wherever. The other thing you also get is chance to pierce and critical strike chance, so that is going to increase your damage further. So once again, it's actually really good to put points into throwing mastery. Um, once I level up again, though, I'll show you guys kind of more options. So I'm actually going to hold on to a couple of skill points here, but there really are a lot of options when it comes to the barb. I wouldn't worry at all about shouts yet. Um, you will probably want to mess with these, but much later at least on your first respec. Um, but we're not gonna deal with those yet. Um, obviously at level 24, we're also gonna want battle orders and we're gonna want some other stuff. Don't worry about any of that stuff yet. Um, battle cry and battle orders and war cry and things like that will become more important here as we continue to level up. All right, so now we're putting more points into Vitality again. Notice that we have a bit more attack rating with the double throw. It's looking pretty good. good day. And so, because we got our Tal F, which is bare minimum for stealth, which we can use at level 17, which is like a mandatory rune word on every character. I wouldn't say it's mandatory, but the idea. See, well, we, we could even put it in there if we want to. 
Since we have the strength, we may as well put it in the studded leather, which is still a light base, so we'll still have good movement speed. There you go, Tal F. Um, we're going to use that in a little bit, though. Don't worry about that. These Rao runes and these Tal runes can prove useful for other purposes, so you're going to want to hold on to those. Um, we didn't get an L, but the tur would have been necessary if we were going for double swing. Don't worry about that, though. I've already mentioned it a few times. All right. Look at that damage. 13 to 32. Yeah, that's no joke, right? So, yeah, that's a... Uh... That is... A leap. That is a leap right there. Leap is fun. I like leap. Man's got grief tier DPS, oh yeah. Honestly, at this point in the game, that's a lot of damage. There's how we just one-shot that elite there. There's another elite we can one-shot. And at this point, you can see that our damage from afar is really good. Matter of fact, it's so good that we don't really even need to rely on... Oh, I went backwards into the dark wood on accident, so I normally want to follow the trail to, to Mo Highland. I went the wrong way. Um, on single player, you would know which way you already went. On Battle.net, you just kind of have to check the two from the Black Marsh, but... One thing you can do is, uh, when you get the Black Marsh warp, warp the first time, waypoint the first time, you can just walk to Timo Highland. That can be a little sketch on Hardcore, though, so be careful. Those mages and archers in the Timo Highland are quite high level. Much higher than you would be running through there at level 6, so... You might get wrecked. Okay, so... So yeah, double swing, we're, we're done with the double swing, but <clears throat> keep in mind. So one thing you can also do is you can use force move as well. Force move can be nice. i to make sure to have those stamina potions on hand. Ah, faster cast rate, even with some mana. That can be very useful for the first, what I would say is a required respec on the Barbarian. Um, could be your second respec, though. Which is Warcry. I wouldn't say it's required, but if you want to do this in any reasonable pace, it is definitely the meta. We will be doing that once we hit level 32. Alright, so you follow the you follow the path all the way through the Timo Highland and then you hit the fountain. And of course the waypoint will be somewhere there. Now sometimes there's not a fountain, there's a garden in the middle. If there's a garden in the middle, it'll be straight ahead. If it's a fountain and it's to the right of the fountain, barracks is to the left. If it's to the left of the fountain, barracks is to the right. As you can see, barracks is to the left because the waypoint's to the right of the fountain. <clears throat> and the barracks typically you just want to go straight ahead. You can still use. Oh, yikes. Ah! There's a Jude there. You can still use your uh, strangling gas potions, but I was going to say. You want to help out with some damage, but they're already starting to become a lot less useful. If you find a choking gas potion, though, you could upgrade those, which could be quite nice. Um, Rags to Riches guides are under exclamation D2R guides. Oh, what am I doing? Is that why I'm not hitting anything? I don't know. 
wasn't using double throw, I was using single throw. That's weird. You messing with me, detour? Straight ahead is either the exit to the jail or the smith. You find the smith, you can click the anvil there and get the hammer, and then you can get an imbue quest. An imbue quest can actually be quite useful um, later on in the game, as you can make a very strong item for yourself potentially. No one should ever be caged. Alright, so the jail is typically wherever this entrance area is pointing. I'm gonna get rid of these so I can mention this real here. Wherever it's pointing, typically the jail 2 will be facing the same direction. Which means that if you typically go somewhere straight ahead, you will find it. You will find the jail 2. Typically. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. 2012 what? Gotcha. Okay. By the way, feel free chat to ask any questions or make any comments or if you think there's something useful that I'm not mentioning throughout the guide, you can definitely uh can definitely uh let me know here and I'll uh I'll put it in the video. <clears throat> As you can see the double throw is quite strong. What is this? Barbarian Rags to Riches. Solo Battle.net Players 1 playthrough. Guided playthrough. Where we get to the point where we start out naked. We don't necessarily get rich, however, in almost every Rags to Riches video we do end up having some kind of riches. This is just part one though. I've... <laughs> I'm thinking we can't avoid at least three parts on this video, so we'll see. You'll notice, pit spawn foul dog can be very difficult to attack with something like double swing, but it was pretty easy to address here. Double throw. And he's always going to be on the west or to the left of jail, too. However, jail 3 is the same as jail 2. It's going to be straight ahead, typically. You're going to be trying to go as far away from that entrance in one direction, and that one direction is possible.
What is the best merc to have for this build? Very early on, it will be blessed aim. But don't worry, we'll be going over that when that becomes relevant. Currently, we're just kind of wandering our way to the end of Act 1. And the checklist for starting that after doing the towers, making sure you're at least level 12 and you at least have stealth. If you're going for some of those other rune words and L runes, you can stick around and keep farming the Countess. Otherwise, um, yeah, this is what you want to do. And we ran out of stamina potions. Yeah, we're doing, um... I'm, I'm maxing out the ring master. Yeah. We're not necessarily maxing it out, but we're, uh... We are, uh, we're putting points into it. Whoa! What is that? Holy moly. Look at that. Wow. That has some resistances on it, doesn't it? Now, the one thing this doesn't have is faster run walk, which is kind of unfortunate. If you're doing a speed run, that would be your main concern, but... Getting any amount of magic find at all at any point in the game early on is very, very big. And uh, something I'm going to be mentioning quite a bit here. Um, so what we're going to want to be doing here is anytime you get any little bit of magic find, put it on. Same thing with res. I didn't mention MF yet because that's something you typically start finding towards the beginning of like Act 2. But the sooner you get MF and start stacking it, the better, because the more rares you can sell them more, the more blues you get for selling, and even the more likelihood you get those low, uh, early game sets and uniques, which can make your playthrough even easier. This will prove useful later. We're not doing faster cast rate yet, but uh, Warcry uses faster cast rate, so we're going to hold on to that. And Jade O'Hanna... 27 months! Remember, Zana's attack squad, the goose in the machine, the arcane disciples. Chat, can we spam some eyes and Zana in the chat for Jade O'Hanna? Absolutely. How you doing, man? Yeah, that is kind of nice, too, to have some of that as well. I do agree. Uh, one thing to note is if you're playing hardcore, you wouldn't put any of your gear in the personal. You can put things like random gems and things and maybe juves. But um, you put them in your shared stashes because you wouldn't lose those upon death. Uh, I forgot to mention that earlier. Oh. And turn in the hammer to Charcy. You don't have to repair every time. However, you may as well get in the habit of doing that because your javelins do require quantity. As a matter of fact, I'm actually going to buy two more javelins. And you can reset vendors, of course, by going to a waypoint, going uh, going to the waypoint, going to a different waypoint, and then going back to the rogue encampment, and then you can buy more of them, of course. What can I do for you? This is very useful. See, so, yeah, as you can see, there's now more available to buy. But don't worry about that. At any rate, just gonna have some here just for using and be a good time. I don't think we really need much more. I could use another two socket at home, maybe, but it's probably not required. And honestly, we're just gonna want to make sure we have stamina potions and Hello. sell these minor mana potions. You could have even two rows of mana pots if you want at the moment, in case a double throw is taking its toll. It's kind of up to you, though. Once again, though, you really only need to target elites and things of that nature, so you don't need to go too crazy. Uh, yes. <laughs> Double fisting challenge. No, no, that's not what this is. Um, this is not fully geared. The point of this is to show you guys how to gear up from nothing. This is not, the point is not to do the grind, the actual riches grind, you know, and actually, like, farm, traveling for whatever else 4,000 times and, uh, get rich. But you can do that. Anyway. See, if you're playing in single player, you might be level 15 already, by the way, so 
That's one important thing to know. So once you get to the inner cloister, which by the way, jail 3 is to the left or to the west of where the entrance is facing or inner cloister is from jail 3. That's how we found it instantly. And he found this, which is predictable because he's got cold enchant. We used a thawing potion. So cold and damp under the earth. And always keep your inventory up. Make sure to know where that hockey is so you can quickly access your potions. All right, so now that we're in the catacombs, there's actually no telltale way to know how to get to the next catacombs level, at least not from catacombs one. So you basically, on button, gotta use this. <laughs> So what you're going to want to do is skirt the edge of the catacombs and look for the exit. There's no way to know. Nobody knows, nobody can know. There are certain maps where there's just no pattern, and uh, the only pattern is that it's somewhere on the outside of the map. So you're not going to find it in the middle anywhere to get to catacombs too. I can't carry anymore. Another two socketed stud leather. I'll take it. Remember to keep picking up rejuvenation potions. You're gonna need as many of those as you possibly can get. And we did level up. We're gonna kill some elite packs along the way first if we find them. There's some Ratman minions there. Alright, um. At this point, I'm actually gonna put five more points in de decks. Believe it or not, does improve throwing damage. So, decks will improve throwing damage, not just strength. And it's also usually the highest stat on good throwing weapons. If you want to stick with throwing um, past level 30, you're definitely going to want to keep that in mind. You're going to want to put more points into decks, but most people are going to switch to Warcry, and I'm going to do the same, as that is the easiest way to get from point A to point B on this character. So now we're level 13. If you've already made it to this point, the end of Act 1 on a barb, you can definitely pat yourself on the back. Pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty rough slog sometimes. All right, so we found it on the end here. Now in Cat Two, there is a way to tell where Catacombs Three or the Waypoint is if you can find either one of them. And of course, those will both be on the outside. Well, that could be a better amulet. Yep, I did mention that, but yes, you're able to spam click potions with a left click faster on legacy graphics. It's kind of weird, I don't know. So as you can see, double throw is very strong. And all I'm using is javelins I can buy from Chersey. And that's key, because if you couldn't, um, finding those all the time and repairing them is a pain in the A, so don't do that. Alright, here we go. Let's see if I can find the waypoint. Okay, no, I actually found Cat 3. So if you find Cat 3, and let's say you want to farm Normal and Dariel, which is never required. You can always get items like Nadral Ring, which is the only unique ring she can drop. And things like Gold Agar. You could also just get to level 11 though, and you can gamble gold aggro if you somehow had like 3 million gold on hand, and that could be very useful when you start using find item much later in the game when you start farming for those riches on the barbarian. But notice though, I knew exactly where to find this waypoint. You might wonder, how is that? Well, if you know where this is, this is going to be to the left or to the west of wherever this is facing outwards. Of course, from the waypoint, Cat 3 is actually facing to the east, or to the right, of the waypoint. And generally you want to go in that direction to find it. 
That's how I knew exactly where to find it, even though we're on Battle.net once again. Good day. No tricks here, no single player. This is just how to do it. Alright, you might notice that they only have 90 quantity, and you might be wondering why I'm not running out of quantity faster. Well, that's the magic of throwing mastery in patch 2.4 and beyond. A chance to not consume quantity is really good. Also, the fact that you replenish quantity on crit strike and it raises your crit strike means there's even more chance that it will, you can replenish quantity and not consume quantity. And those two stats together uh, make it so what your quality of life in playing this build is not terrible. Alright, but as you can see though, yeah, we haven't even had to do anything. I have some spares in case I needed them, but it's pretty good. That's a three socketed armor. But we're not gonna wanna spend any gold just yet. If we have to buy one later, we will. We're gonna wanna save up as much gold as possible because there's an item called a teleport staff, which we're gonna wanna make sure we can buy ASAP. So it's a staff of teleportation. And that's going to make your life on this character, like, a lot easier. I'm going to go to Legacy Graphics and do some spam clicking and do some more. So we're about to hit Dario. Antidotes can be quite useful against her if you want to prevent dying. If you're on Hardcore, getting that extra 50 Poison Res for 30 seconds apiece, which stack, by the way, at least time-wise, not resistance-wise, um, is quite nice. So, bosses is definitely where Double Swing tends to shine a bit. But as you'll see, uh, you don't need Double Swing to kill Dario. And not only do you not need it, but it's not that hard. So we're going to be looking for 4 on the end, and we got lucky. Good map. So we found 4 instantly. That, that can happen. So, Elite Pack right here. Yeah, I mean, it, results may vary, right, Nick, right? <laughs> he's mentioning he spent 4 million gold. Yeah, I meant like an average of like 2 million, but he spent 4 million gold and didn't get his gold dagger, so. Yeah, well. You gotta use on it. 10 million will all but guarantee it, I think, but, you know. You're gonna need a lot of gold, so. You can just stack your whole shared stash with it before you make a new barb, I guess. Alright, so this is Endario, first boss. What I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to chug the antidote potions. And with that, I actually have almost max poison resistance. Notice that we actually do quite a bit of damage here. Let's kind of kite backwards and just throw shit at her. There you go. Shuck sharp implements. You can even stand perfectly still, especially if you pop some antidote so she doesn't kill you instantly. If you have low poison res against her, she'll do way more damage than that, so just be aware of that. And we got a pillum. That's probably not any good, but it could be. Interesting, 45 dexterity. So that actually could be good because it has a lot more throw damage as you can see there. It also gives us even more of a stack size, which is nice. And since we only want to put the fastest weapon in the um, left hand, we can just put this in the right hand. So right there we just got an upgrade, so that's kind of cool. Uh, we can't use it yet, so you'll see it requires more dex. And that was my point before, is that the good weapons you're going to want to use in a throw barb early on are going to require dexterity. So we can use that very soon though. All I have to do is uh, wait till I get like three and a half more bars there, which won't take long. That is a very unfortunate rare gloves. No res, no nothing. And that's no magic find. That's going to be garbage, so we're going to sell that. Don't automatically think that a rare item is better than a blue item and vice versa. Uh, really prioritize res, life, and magic find early on. 
maybe mana if you're feeling a little bit strapped on it um but yeah don't don't worry about anything else for the most part you're livid oh god i'd be kind of pissed off after gambling that much too why did you gamble for the gold dagger? Did a guide say to do it? And then you're like, oh no, I can't get it. And you just got mad. I don't blame you. Gambling can be frustrating, but it is gambling for a reason, I suppose. All right, so now you can get light potions, so that's nice. You can also sell things for up to 10,000. Farah will sell slightly better items, including uh, belts, so you can maybe get some more res that way. Um, oh. There we go, see? Perfect. Lightning res and magic find. So res and magic find. Magic find and res, look at that. So those are the things if you do want to shop the vendors, Farah or um, Elzik, you want to get real quick. You don't have to though. As a matter of fact, all you really have to do is, we're gonna try to gear up a mercenary here. Which we can't do immediately, but we can do pretty soon here. Um. buy some very basic stuff. I think I'm just gonna find stuff for him on the ground. Since I don't have anything for him, it's okay though. Also, if you want more faster run walk, you can definitely buy those boots and keep them for later. Now, uh, note that you can buy pillums and short spears and things like that. And they do more damage, but notice that they uh, have slower attack speed, so do keep that in mind. I do recommend keeping at least one of these in here so that you have that very fast attack speed with decent damage. Um, this is a very fast javelin, whereas these are slower ones. So we're going to use some of the other ones. Another thing to note about Farah though is you can get three socketed weapons so you can put gems in them for the mercenary, or you can just get a basic mercenary weapon. Uh, you can also farm flails, which we can't. She's not selling any right now, but she does tend to sell them. Also, nice. Three socketed large shield. That could potentially be used to make Ancient's Pledge later. That could be nice. And you can also get a two socketed bone shield from him. Two socketed large shield to make Ancient's Pledge. You can get a two socketed bone shield for Rhyme. There's a rune words you can make after finding higher runes later in the game. But yeah. There's a lot of things they can sell. Anyway, Elzik sells a lot of like res MF gear as well. And what we're gonna do first here is we're gonna do sewer. Now, if you really hate being frozen, the stat half freeze duration can be kind of nice, but you can always just use thawing potions as well. All right, so we could get our mercenary, but I'm actually not gonna bother with him yet because I feel like they're not selling any good weapons for him or anything yet. I will get him in a bit, but an act two mercenary is worth it. And it's also nice to have some kind of front line while you're attacking things. And then of course you can heal them using shift potion button instead of just the potion button instead of dragging the potion to him which is way easier to do while you're attacking uh, I didn't need a tube there that's okay though all right so one thing to note about finding sewers 2 typically what you want to do is go to the bottom entrance because sewers 2 is going to be closer to it and then also it's typically immediately to the left or right and if not it's a little bit up this case is almost immediately to the left. Find sewers three, you're gonna wanna go straight ahead from wherever this area is pointing, which is this way. If you wanna get the waypoint, you can go a little bit to the right. Also, if you find gems, continue to pick them up as they become, can become useful for recipes to generate gold. And to upgrade rooms later on. Ow. Oh, that hurts. So at this point in the game is where the strangling gas potion is kind of useless, honestly. Like, if I use it right here, you might ask, like, why am I not using it? It's, it, it does some I damage still. But if you find a choking gas potion, that's where that upgrade can be nice. 
It's like they're glitching out. Like they're having a fun time. I think that's the first small charm you've found all run. Is it any good? Not really, but it gives us one of strength. <clears throat> So sewer is three. It's not immediately straight ahead, but notice it's in a tile that's facing straight ahead, the same direction as the entrance. So in general, going straight ahead will get you where you want to go. Now in sewer is three, wherever this is pointing, usually you want to try to find like a left or a west facing area. And you'll be good. It's important to observe just how strong double uh, double throw is at this point in the game, and I don't even have three of my skill points in. So double throw is very much underestimated. It's very strong. I like it because you don't need those rumors, and it's a lot tougher to shot for flails and things of that nature. It just takes a lot of time. Uh... This isn't good. Oh no! Yeah, I think we're gonna die here, actually. <laughs> Holy moly, that's uh, that's unfortunate. Well, that can happen. Anyway, we'll go back in there. We got trapped. Good day. We got trapped. We went into the corner. We got greedy. I thought I can like get my way out of there. That can happen, but having that save and exit ready, especially on hardcore, is very important. That's a good demo of a save and exit there pretty early on. Unfortunately, didn't get the waypoint, so one advantage of that is in case you do some mistake like that, you can indeed uh, go back to Sewers 2 immediately, but it's okay. Wasn't too bad. Yeah, practice putting your cursor in the center and pressing escape. I'm pretty fast at it, but that's, you know, I'm generally, uh, I generally play hardcore on Battle.net, so, I, you know. I've learned to get decently good at it. Sometimes you panic, though, and you don't do it very well. Are you ready for Project Diablo 2? PD2 Season 7 is looking good, right? Did any of you guys see what he revealed today? Was there anything interesting going on in PD2 that you saw today? I need just one more level. If I get one more level, I'll get like a... Go get my mercenary. I'll go uh, put all my skill points in because I just wanted to show that off real quick. And I can also put points into decks and give myself more damage. If you didn't have this pillum, you can definitely uh, buy one, a white one, and that one will be good as a slower weapon in your offhand. Okay, so level 14. I don't need to do any of that there to kill him though. Let me just not trap myself like a fool. Runes are always good to pick up, just pick them all up. You likely need them later, and even if you don't, it's okay. See how being frozen can be very bad? That's why doing that is nice. I need mana. So if you're worried about getting surrounded and dying to Radiant, by the way, you can always just lead them away from Radiant like this. And then you won't be able to revive them. We live again. And then you can just attack. I need mana. I need mana. And we'll kill him pretty fast like this. And then I'm gonna put on my better weapon here in a second. Okay, so I've just about had my fill of the walking dead. Do I recommend gambling? Not this early on. If you continue on with it or later on, I might show that a little bit, but 
This is too early to think about gambling, things like that. Some decks and some strength can actually be nice early on, but we'll probably end up selling those soon if you don't have anything better. At this point, you can just put your stats into decks and then voila, you gotta. You gotta pill them. And as you can see, keep the faster weapon there. This weapon is slower, believe it or not. And it'll still attack just as fast. Very important stuff. Remember to keep your faster weapon in your left weapon slot. To confirm that that is actually the case in your screen, make sure that the weapon that does... Um, make sure to check your damage on your left hand weapon and make sure it is at a lower or higher depending on which weapon you put in there. So this one has the higher damage here, so it's actually going to be kind of nice. Now we're level 14 and we're going to continue on. And a second here. And check for some red stuff. Honestly though, the only thing I have that's like a white item that I can buy easily though would probably be the belt, but that's about it. And I even have a three socketed large shield, so that's good. Haven't seen her sell a flail yet, but trust me, she does sell them. Oh, there it is, there's a flail. She sells them with sockets, but you'll have to keep reloading her by going in and out of that waypoint there, and then uh, joining a new waypoint, and then coming back to Act 2. Okay, so... Yep, yeah, we're good. I'm actually kind of trying to see if we can get a three-socket pull-arm for the mercenary. I don't know. It's not proving very fruitful, though. 20 magic fund. There you go. Kind of like the light res though in this difficulty though. Lightning res will probably be the most useful at the moment because beetles are going to hurt so also keep that in mind as well. Yeah we're not actually going for those things. Three socketed flails and two socketed gray flails because we're doing double throw but if you were then you'd have to farm far. Notice how we don't need to do any of that nonsense though. So notice here, double fur will give us 8% damage. And so will double swing. So there's no reason to put additional points into double swing if you can also get attack rating, right? So that's kind of what I wanted to show there. So that's why I kind of held all my points. I could have put points in a double swing early on, but I was super greedy, so I didn't have to respec. However, I'm also going to put a lot more points here into Throw Mastery. And I'm actually going to max it out. Um, because that crit strike and that chance to pierce and all the other things is really good. But if I just want damage, I'd start putting points into double throw. At this point, that's kind of what it should look like. You should have all your points to double throw and throwing mastery. I recommend mostly focusing throwing mastery though, because all those stats are very nice quality of life, including the chance to not consume. Also, the crit strike chance is very nice as well. Of course, it's also useful that if you don't have a pillum or a uh, somewhat higher damage weapon to put it in your in your right weapon slot. The one that is, uh, does not affect your attack speed, so that you get more damage. And notice how fast we're killing things. That's good. So now you can put a TP there. <clears throat> oh shoot. That is kind of what you want to do. We did find our Pillum from Indario though, so that was nice. The rare pull-up is even better. So we're gonna go kill some champions. Now, in the desert, this is what you're looking for out in the desert. <clears throat> but yeah, one thing I didn't mention about Doriel is if you're playing a single player, make sure to change it back to players one before you fight bosses. Otherwise, they're gonna be very painful um, if you're doing players eight for leveling. However, keep in mind you shouldn't go for higher than level 15 in Act 1, so at that point you should just be rushing through the game. 
All right, so <clears throat> in the Rocky Waste, we got really lucky. Somewhere on the outside of the Rocky Waste, either immediately to the left, right, or somewhere in the top area. Um, on the outside is always going to be an entrance to the next area in the desert. In this case, it was immediately to the left, and this is the Dry Hills. Um, what you're going to want to do, though, is you're going to want to look for areas to enter, and then you're going to look for waypoints. Now, what we could do is, because we found it so fast and so close to town, we could probably just immediately go into the halls and then start looking for the most overpowered item in the game, the Haraja Cube. However, if it's farther on, you can just put a TP here, like I did, and then you can look for a waypoint first, and then you can enter your own portal, and then go back into here, and then enter the waypoint, maybe in Far Oasis, or in Lost City, which will get you closer to doing the other quests. Since this is so close to town, though, me as well not even bother and just go into here, and then we'll go look for the other thing anyway. That's pretty rare, though. You don't usually get something like that. Rare, but interesting and useful. Alright, so as you can see, we're doing some damage. That's good. <clears throat> I am overburdened. Don't worry about random throwing axes, those aren't gonna be any good. You can check rare ones if you want though. Just remember though, this is your fastest weapon base though, so keeping that in your left hand slot is very good. What is this wolf owl? Ooh, wolf head. Oh, that's not good. <clears throat> What's the end game weapon for a throw bar build? Uh, Lacerator and Warstrike typically. If you want to see an end game uh, double throw barbarian, type exclamation D2R throw barb in the chat. Um, I actually wrote that guide myself, so let me know if you have any questions. Really liking this double throw version. I, I like it because there's a lot of things you don't have to farm. When you do double throw, and it actually speeds it up, in my opinion, quite a bit and gets you through the game. Um, I personally like this version. Yeah, there you go. Plane Shift just pulled it up in the chat. That's an end game throw bar, though, so that's level 75 plus. Uh, and that's the kind of gear that you would ideally have. Of course, you can check out the starter versions as well at the bottom for hell farming. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so Halls of the Dead, one thing to know is that Halls of the Dead is like tower. So you're always going to be going to the left. In this case, this entrance here is just to the left, and this area is pointing this way. Um, this hallway here is pointing down here to this middle hallway. So you're going to want to go to the left to find the cube once you get down to Halls of the Dead 3. It might be straight ahead and to the left. But we're going to be doing it no matter what. Or it can be to the left and down and to the left again, which is probably what this is. Looks like it. Oh, it looks like we have a minion. Nice. Gonna go make sure to keep killing the elites and champions along the way. Don't stop doing that or you're not going to get experience. Also, they're the most likely to drop good items as well. And that will become more important when you're trying to get items. But which the wild is extra strong curse. Don't let her just face don't just face tank her. She can probably kill you. She can kill you very fast. Not probably, but she will. So be very careful. Don't let her get close to you. Extra strong is 250% damage on top of double damage from amplify damage. Once you get a couple of auras in the mix, and once you get extra strong, once you get amplified damage, um, the multiplayers can really make monsters do some serious damage to you. Uh, so keep that in mind. Ooh, that's kind of nice too. I didn't even mean to pick that up. And another 10 of Sierra Ring. So it looks like we are totally set for our Warcry conversion. We get once we get to that point. We have faster cast rate. You're going to want to make sure you keep some of those faster cast rate items for later. Don't eat them now, though. You're going to put them in your stash and put them away. You want to put this one. Oh, man. Stop glugging the juice. 
I am overburdened. Yeah, 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 I am messing that up a lot right now. It's not good. Okay, um, and then you do that. As you can see, it was a left-facing tile relative to the entrance. It points towards the middle hall, typically, in the tombs in Act 2, and it follows the same general tile logic as the tower cellar. So, except one major area does not follow that logic, which is... Uh, which is the maggot layer, but we'll be doing that in a little bit. Anyway, so these are some pretty cool items. As you can see, we have some decent light res, which is nice. You can maybe face tank the beetles a bit. If you're playing hardcore, I highly recommend you try to maybe farm a tiny bit of light res. Maybe get some chipped topazes. Can't really do chip. Never mind. You can't do the chipped topaz uh, shield thing on a barb because you either go double throw or uh, Good day. or double swing, so you can't use a shield. So that, no, that that's not a thing. Or what I just said, but anyway. Everything else is good. Alright, so now we have what is a pretty decent mercenary weapon. You might also find this from a Dariel, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and get the mercenary now. You can also go three socketed and put gems in it, like for poison damage and cold damage and have them slow things as well. Yeah, I was thinking like every other class playing a shift, <laughs> and I was like, wait a moment, I'm a barb. Eh, no. See, Barb is Barb is a little different. He's 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 special. I'll put that to good use. I'll put that to good use. Not always in a good way either. All right, so there you go. I'm gonna give him some res. Mercenary just needs res, maybe some damage, and he'll be good to go. It's nice to have things like uh, cold damage because he can slow monsters. Uh, that weapon gives him knockback, which is interesting. I shouldn't do anything bad, I don't think. Hopefully he doesn't knock back monsters out of my attacks, but you never know. A lot of people have been looking for this one. I don't know. People in the comments on my YouTube Rags to Riches guides are always like, where's the bar one? So, yeah. At any rate, you want to keep picking up uh, body armors and things as well. The gold's not looking super good yet, so we're going to want to make sure to get a lot more gold, especially throughout Act 2 and Act 3. And not farming for flails no more. Okay. So we got our cube. Your cube, you can use to store items. It's going to help you complete these quests anyway, though. Absolutely need the cube. And the Halls of the Dead is a good place to find. Found it instantly right outside of town, so I decided not even bother looking for a waypoint. Now I'm just going to go looking for... Far Oasis, which will be on the outside somewhere in Dry Hills. The waypoint will be somewhere in the middle, but we don't even need it because now we have Halls of the Dead. So just look on the outside. Check, check, check. Everything. Maybe click some chests along the way. Look for Elite Packs if you see any. Nope, nope, nope. If you're on Battle.net, <clears throat> kind of got to kill whatever Elite Packs you can find. If you're on single player, you can uh, get to Far Oasis, and you can farm a monster called Beetle Burst, which is a super unique monster. It always spawns, it always drops two items. It's a beetle. You can just kill it over and over again next to the waypoint. On single player, you can also kill Dark Elder over and over again if you get that one next to the waypoint. And that would be next to the Lost City waypoint. Over if you're on... Multiplayer is trying to level up, and your friends can't play with you because they're too busy, you know, working or something not completely important, like Diablo 2. You can just level your barb up while you're waiting. <clears throat> and so, this is how to do it drop those fools. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do that. Hey, there you go, rare axe. That's interesting. The only problem is it doesn't do nearly as much damage as the Pallone. See, 11 to 17 isn't nearly as good as 7 to 24. So, <clears throat> that's no good. We also have a combat shrine right now. Well, we did end up finding the Dry Hills Waypoint anyway, but we weren't looking for it. Then we found the Far Oasis. Okay, so that took a while. That was unlucky. Champion Beetles. Watch for Mercenary's health. Sometimes feed him jubes. It's 
so he doesn't die. He dies very fast to beetles. He doesn't like them. I fed him one potion there and one jube using my shift two and shift one buttons. Very useful. And early defense numbers can be a little more consequential for the mercenary than they are for you. So just keep that in mind. Alright, so this is Magalair. Now since we did find a waypoint a little bit further back, and that waypoint is right next to the Far Oasis entrance, we can just go back into the Far Oasis and look for the city. So we may as well just go into the Magalair at this point. But otherwise you put a waypoint next to it like I just did. Alright, Magalair is different than almost every other map in the game. The exit, or the next level of Magalir, will always be right or to the east of the entrance. So this entrance here is pointing up this way, and then you're looking for a right or east facing tile. So in general you want to go to the right or the east to find it fast. That's what we're going to do. Unless the whole map is pointing um, to the left or something, and then it might be all the way down and to the back and to the right. The whole map is like turning you to the left, that's a good sign that you might just want to uh, follow the, the edge there and go around in a very short circle. But that's probably not the case here. So leap is actually quite useful. I don't even have to kill the monsters. They don't want I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Oh, I did find an elite pack, which is nice. So, this is why I took Leap, as Leap is already starting to pay some dividends. Problem with it, though, is only level 1 Leap is pretty weak. But, they will do some things. If we don't glitch out, that is. I can't. Game, stop it! Sometimes Diablo 2 is a struggle. Right now. Alright. <clears throat> and we'll continue there, and there you go, Magalir. So, I'd recommend leaping over everything that's not an elite monster, because it's going to waste your time. I can't. I can't. <clears throat> However, you can kill your way through here if you want as well. I wouldn't go higher than players 1 on single player in this area because it's just this really thin area. It's Got some lightning enchant in there. Also, if you don't want to accidentally, like, use throw while you're clicking, put either force move or leap on your left click and then put throw on your right click. It makes it a little bit easier. Impossible. Something that I just was too lazy to do before, but uh, I'll do it. Or rather negligent, but whatever. And double throw is quite good in the maggot layer. Yeah, and it pierces through monsters if you get all those points into throwing mastery, so it has a pierce chance as well. Which is, that has a chance that it can go through the monsters. Of course, I'll use leap and double throw, but either way. Yeah, double throw is very good to start with. I think a lot of people don't realize. I, th I think a lot of people might be surprised at how easy I'm getting through the game just playing double throw with some mediocre weapons at that. One of my weapons is literally trash. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, he's got my door. We gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't let them surround you there. Uh, that 
that's gonna hurt quite badly. We're gonna kill the minions though. Get us some experience. Ooh, a rare helm. Considering I only have a seven light res helm. Oh, it's just some dumb axe mastery though. Well, it's good to sell, I guess. I'd rather have light res than that. And stamina. And sell that though. And sell bad charms. Stamina is a useless charm. Impossible. Keep going to the right, and then in Maggot Layer 3, another turn. I actually want to try to go straight ahead, as close to straight as possible. And we keep glitching out, so it's not working. That is just easier just to just double through as I mentioned earlier. Not working. Lag can make it doubly worse, so you're on battle net. So you see, it's straight ahead, kind of, but it's not like a little bit to the left like I went. We're gonna go back there then. All right, we just leveled up. I can't. I need money. A blood crescent was nice for a little bit. Attacking while the potion is going is good, because then you maximize use of the potion. No! Heal! Oh, my mercenary. I can't carry anymore. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so that was funny. Um, that's a great thing to have in the video. So, <laughs> I got poisoned, of course, so my health went down to one, and I was like, there's no more monsters in here. I'm fine, I don't have to heal or go back to town. And then, well, little did I know, there were some monsters, and I ended up jumping, leafing up. And then the, the tiny little baby maggot killed me. I just died to a baby maggot. That's a that's pretty funny. Well, see, this is why we don't do it on hardcore, just in case uh, we mess around like that. <clears throat> to be fair, I don't play like that on hardcore. The second I start getting poisoned like that, I go to town, but that is pretty funny, though. Alright, so now that we're back here... We did get what we came to get, though, which is the Staff of Kings, so that's good. Otherwise, that would have been really tragic, because then we would have to go back in there. <laughs> that's really freaking funny. <laughs> Alrighty, then. That's a blooper. A yeah, good blooper every once in a while. Never hurt anybody. We don't need a TP. Like I said, we have the Staff of Kings, so we're fine. <clears throat> we do need to get our body back so we can re-enter the game if we want. That's pretty easy. I'm gonna restart. <laughs> oh no. Uh, that's actually kind of funny. Alright, so... A little bit of attack rating versus... Um, nine fire res. I'd actually rather have the fire res. Once again... Res is king. There you go. See, life and light res. That's actually going to be even better. We find any of that stuff. Nice. That was a... Uh... Wow, that was pretty funny. 
There's a uh, no socketed flails, no white socketed flails. See, there's a three socketed one I was looking for, like a spedum or something. But we ended up finding a rare one, so I'll just go with that. What's up, Grass Fax? How you doing? Yes, citizen. <laughs> now people are gonna watch this point in the video and be like, I'm not watching a guide from this guy. He just died to a baby maggot. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. And I wouldn't blame them, really. That didn't look good at all. Well, that's okay. <clears throat> that's pretty funny, though. Uh, yeah, so, on Hardcore, when you start seeing your health just plummet like that, and you don't have any a antidotes on hand, one thing you might want to start doing in Act 2, by the way, is use antidotes, but if you don't, uh, you're definitely going to want to just go to town. I decided to take my chances, and I didn't see there was an egg, and I just jumped right into it, and, uh, yeah, wow. Pretty brutal. Okay, so we got our Book of Skill. Definitely want that from Radamant. We got our cube. We got our staff. So now we need our amulet. Ugh. Absolute brutality. Now you might see at this point there's some diminishing returns occurring uh, by putting more points into throwing mastery. And you wouldn't be wrong for thinking that. It's because there are some diminishing returns. Now the next level doesn't even give us any crit strike and we get like 1% chance to pierce. So at this point, once you kind of see that it's like 0, 1%, you can kind of choose whether or not you want to put more points in a double throw, which will give you 3% more damage and which will give you more attack rating. Um, this won't give you as much attack rating or as much damage. It's more for like the other stats, but since, you, since we're seeing some pretty severe diminishing returns here, this is when we probably are going to want to just start putting the rest of our points in a double throw. And if you want to... Um, of course, you can even save a point for something like Leaf Attack as well, if you get like a good two-hander or something, but we're not going to bother with that. Um, it's also important to note is that once we hit like a level 20, 21, really going to start holding points for some of these bottom skills. Um, but for the time being, you can just keep putting points into like Double Throw or something because of the diminishing returns here. You're seeing only like a 1% increase now in Throwing Mastery. That's not that effective. You'd rather just get more attack rating and damage by leveling up Double Throw. And so... That's a save and exit. Oh well, no, you don't have to save and exit. You can just go to town. You can make a TP once you see that. If your health gets that low already, you're already screwed on Hardcore in a lot of cases. So, uh, don't do that. It's, uh, not advisable. Now, if you want, you can put some more points into decks and prepare for some better weapons. You can do that. Um, and if you continue to go double throw, um, I do recommend that, actually. So you can kind of maybe, like, alternate vitality to dexterity at this point, or you can just put more points into vitality. All right, so we kind of went over all that. Level 16, one more level we can get some movement speed, which will be nice. Then we use stealth. Be making sure you have at least some stamina potions, maybe thawing potions, and yes, antidotes are nice too. Uh, you can instantly cleanse yourself of poison, give yourself some extra poison res for 30 seconds as well. Now, does this lightning never hurt in uh, Beetle Land, so that's not bad. I don't think we've encountered Beetle Burst in Far Oasis, but it's not going to matter because we're doing this on Battle.net anyway. But you'd want to find Beetle Burst and hopefully get a waypoint next to him. If you don't, you can go look for um, Dark Elder next to the Lost City waypoint. <clears throat> okay, so we got the Far Oasis waypoint. That's actually good. We don't need it at this point. We're kind of just looking for the lost city on the outside of the Far Oasis, which is the last desert area outside of Valley of the Snakes, which is our final destination. In the desert, at the very least. For the lost city. Level 16 by this point, and Players 1 is pretty solid. I wanna. Let's see. Okay, so now. 
Wall of Viper Temple is not a tomb or a hole in the middle. It's actually an area on the outside, just like we've been, just how we've been finding, just like how we've been finding these uh, new areas to enter here. So we're gonna want to go look for an area on the outside. And notice the mercenary I bought is Blessed Aim. Blessed Aim is by far your best choice on either double throw or double swing as it gives you a ton of free attack rating. When I'm next to my mercenary, you notice how I have 300 more attack rating. That's really good, especially against bosses. But the Merc will probably die to some bosses too, but it can help you a tiny bit. This a tiny bit. bosses, doesn't matter. It's uh, definitely the case though. Thank you, Rizella Kill, by the way. I don't know if I said that. Alright, so we found the Valley of Snakes on the outside. Don't worry about the Lost City Waypoint unless, well, you know, we're worried about dying or something. Has never shown here. But who would do that at this point? Like, not me, that's for sure. Ugh. All right, so at this point, I don't recommend leaping in here because you're gonna get knocked back and the snakes can surround you and kill you very quickly. So kind of just fight your way through here if you have to get through the uh, entryway or if you end up seeing yourself getting surrounded. Otherwise though, see that middle hallway there? This area is pointing always towards the middle hallway. So looking for a west or left facing tile like in almost every tomb. I can later it's not a tomb, it is a hole, so a hole that is very tough to find. Just like every hole in life. But we actually got and kinda got lucky there. And that one's east or right facing until you get to maggot three and then it's straight ahead. I'm just gonna go kill some of these dudes. I can use leap a little bit, but it's not gonna be that useful here. Hey, there's a rare chain mail. That's nice. There you go. And since this hardly gives any stats at all, I think I'll put that on the mercenary because you may as well get more defense. I hope him survive a bit. And then we'll save one. You might think, why not use it on ourselves? Well, that's because we're about to get a rune word that will outstrip almost any rare item you can possibly find in the game. Which is stealth, and that will be in a half level. You know you can even give your mercenaries antidote potions and thawing potions. Alright, so in general we're trying to go to the left, and the map wants us go to go to the right, so we're kind of fighting it and trying to go straight ahead, sort of, as much as possible so we can go to the left. If the whole map, though, goes immediately to the right, it's probably behind it. In this case, though, I think we found our exit, so we found Claw Viper 2, we had to go all the way up here and to the left, but nonetheless... Follows the same pattern that it always does. One advantage here is that you don't have to use double swing and almost die to fin skin. You can just attack him from afar if you feed your most mercenary a potion while you're doing that. You're usually not going to have much of a difficult time. It is good to know that the sun shines once again. There you go. Pretty easy, right? Uh, we don't start checking for the teleport staff yet, and that will be in Act 3. Don't worry about the teleport staff at this point in the game. Someone in chat just asked about it, so... 
I will answer any questions, of course, the chat has, or any commentary, or anything they think is important for me to pay attention to. I try to pack these informational videos as much as possible with things so you guys have a good time making whatever class it is without any problems. Believe it or not, well, I guess it has hit recovery. Yeah, that does help the Merc a little bit. Merc does have hit recovery, strangely enough. Is the Merc even using a helm yet still or no? No, he's not. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so now we just made the staff. We fused the staff and the amulet. Amulet is good. Now we're going to make our way to the end of Act 2 in Hurricane Sanctuary. As you can see, Act 2 is a lot faster than Act 1, no matter what. It's a lot... It's, you don't have to farm anything in Act 2, you kind of just have to get the skill quests and then farm everything else. So you don't really have to worry about anything else whatsoever. And you can kind of just like farm elites along the way. Make sure you're at least uh, 17 by the time you hit Duriel. Which is the ending game Act 2 boss, if you don't already know, which you should know. But if you don't, it's okay. What level do we get G-Rushed? <laughs> well, you can get G rush at level 1. But if you want to make a bumper, this is a great one. You can level yourself up. Or you can just get power leveled in uh, public games. Public games in hardcore can be quite dangerous, though, but you can get power leveled in public games. And then. Um, Get to level 25 in Cows, level 20 in Tombs, level 15 in Tristram. You can do that as well. Oh, this is a solo guided playthrough. Okay, so... Until you get to Palace Solar 3, you literally just have to go straight across. Straight along the wall. That's all you have to do, and then you'll hit Palace Solar 3. Now you're looking for the middle. You want to go into the middle. So first we're going to go along the wall again. And then we're going to go to the left. Pretty easy, right? Skip all these regular monsters. Don't need to kill them. I don't know where Fire Eye is, but he can be nice to kill. Kind of want some more experience if possible. Where is he? Yeah, there he is. Okay, sometimes he's like not right on the portal, but he's like. On the I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Right, cool, that will bring us a little bit closer to uh, 17 there. Hopefully we get 17 in Arcane so we can run faster. That's actually very useful. Alright, click the waypoint and then just choose a way. So one thing about Arcane is that speedrunning scientists have spent um, tens of thousands of hours and tens of thousands of dollars trying to figure out a way to figure out which way is definitely the right way to go in Diablo 2 and Arcane. There's no way to know though. However, probabilistically speaking, this down left way has a pretty high probability and in general the west directions are slightly higher probability than the right ones by like two or three percent. It's very slightly. But for the for the most part, though, we're looking at an even 25 split on almost all of them. So you just choose whichever way you feel like it's going to be, and you go. I'm going to choose the slightly higher probability one, but we're very likely to get four way here. This is also where I'm going to have chat tell me how many ways do you think it's going to tell. Uh, do you think it's going to take for me to get to the summit? How many directions are we going to have to go? King Nut, so much for the fall of the cold thing I'm going to say. So, what's interesting is the ghosts in here actually have a decent win drop chance. Especially if you're in like players 3 or above, so if you didn't get your Countess runes, or you just want to farm for just some like low level gems, like chip gems, this is actually a great place to do it. Uh, normal arcane. Of course, once you get to hell arcane, it's incredible for farming this uh, high runes and things of that nature, so... 
five way, huh? Well, there's only four ways, but I have done a five way before, so I think that's not a bad guess. Nah, I don't play it like that, but you can totally make sure to have the game set to whatever settings you want, of course. It's okay, we can buy him again. If we want him. An F Trident? A Merc might like that, actually. Oh, it even has Life Leech and it has. Oh! So, interesting factoid is that if you find an Ethereal item, the Mercenary can wear, you can wear. Ethereal pull arms, ethereal armors, and whatnot, they actually don't break on him. I'll put that to good use. So, not only did we get a weapon with, like, maybe the same exact damage, we actually just got one with life leech, so he might actually be able to sustain himself slightly now. Approach and let's trade. It's kind of nice. I will take that 100%. Got a two socket bone shield, so interestingly enough, we can use this later. To help us do some farms and get through the game. I was mentioning that earlier. How may I help you? Um, notice here, this is a one socket flail, so you'd want like two and three socketed flails to either put uh, gems, tau runes, or any of those rune words, tur l or if l. F, I believe it is, for malice. Fun fact. Buy a couple of stupid helms, why not? Here's one for me. Give the Merc a bit more defense. Probably still gonna die anyway. Just keep in mind with the Mercenary that he's very likely to die until later in the game and you start getting him somewhat better items. But you can always put better resistances on him and more defense and more damage just to make him survive, so. Now, since we have a three slot belt, one thing I haven't shown you guys yet is you can just pick up the belt like this and then you can restock the belt using the shift left click like this and then you can like shift uh, so I can like do that and then I can shift right click and then I can fill up my belt shift right click that and fill up my belt like that so there's a couple different ways you can fill up your belt that's a good trick though if you don't know how to do that speedrunners often do it very quickly so you might not see uh, I'm going to put our next five points into Vitality. I'm not going to alternate Dex and Vitality right now. Uh, we might be able to use those throwing spears uh, at some point soon. This might be nice to do that. Yeah. You can get some nice resistances off gloves and normal, strangely enough. Alright, so what we're going to do now, put on Stealth. You guys may have already realized that we can use that. Um, stealth is very good. As you can see, his faster run walk, faster hit recovery. The faster caster doesn't matter yet, but it will. And then, of course, uh, more dex, right? We needed that dex. Just was mentioning that a second ago. We even have a dex large charm that might help. And there you have it. I'm actually going to want about 65 dex. Um, so we're going to put some more points into there. And then we'll put one more in a double throw for now. Now we're running faster. But we're already getting two weight at the minimum, so that's not good. I don't like the maggot layer. This is a single file area. Another area you can just use leap to jump over though. You can mine with lag and server desync though. It might not always feel so smooth to do this, in which case you can attack them like this. Remember what I talked to you about, about ghosts stacking on top of you. See how many ghosts there are? Those can all stack on one tile. That's very dangerous. They also have some physical resistance, which makes them a little frustrating to kill sometimes. I can't carry 
Oh god. Well, I would normally pick that up, but I don't know if it's even worth it. Also, we see that icon on the right hand side of my screen. We're about to run out of three weapons. I guess I forgot to repair. Notice how we haven't had to repair most of this whole time, though. That's the magic of throwing mastery. And we found it. Yay. Impossible. It does a lot of damage. Flying potion will help a little bit, though. Right? Fun trick, by the way, even if you're a rusher, the symbol here that is not here is the correct tomb. Now you can check your quest log, of course, but that's cheating. So if you know your shapes, you'll know the only one missing here is the half moon. And if you check the quest log, sir, enough. Should say, unless I go through here anyway. I just say I can't complete it in this game. What is going on? What? Well, I guess we'll just uh, remake a game. I don't know how that even happened, actually. Interesting. Well, we found the Canyon of the Magi Waypoint, and we killed the Summoner, so we're good to go. Okay. Doesn't matter. And we have a rare booties. You know, I actually really like these rare booties because they have one more magic find. They have a little bit less res some other stats, but they also have half freeze duration. I really like half freeze duration. So I'm gonna use that for now. Greetings. Good day. Makes things a little less painful. It also means you don't always have to use a thawing potion. Using a thawing potion on an attack speed based build can get a little frustrating sometimes. <clears throat> yes, citizen. Okay. Alright, so the mercenary should be good to go. And now we're about to make our way to Act 3. Is that a leap pack? All right, now we actually have to check the shape because I'm not going backwards. You can't go backwards into there, all right? It's circle. And if you played the game as long as I do, you know exactly which shape of tomb is where. But if you don't, that's okay. Every single one is exactly in the same spot every time. Yeah, yeah. So that's me. Memorize them, I challenge you to. I am overburdened. might wonder, how the heck did I find it so fast? How did I find the altar so fast at the orifice? Well, just like every tomb, this middle hallway here is the center point, and this whole area is pointing towards the center hallway. Once again, it's a left or west facing tile, so I am immediately to the left, and just a hard left, and sure enough, in this particular map at least, it was immediately to the left, so that's a little lucky, but that's okay. Now, fun fact against Duriel. A lot of people have problems against Duriel with any kind of build. However, the best way to survive Duriel, or even for your mercenary to tank him a bit, 
defeat your mercenaries, some thawing potions or some boost to your cold res, and then I can also drink for a boost to my cold res as well. He does a lot of cold damage. So. Mercenary is probably not going to last long. Oh shit. That's not good. Just trying to get him to survive. You can always rebuy the mercenary, of course, to make it a bit easier. Not in town. This is one of those ones where the throw bar isn't necessarily like Who goes there? quite as strong as the double swing approach against Durial particularly, but it doesn't really matter. Because you can always just throw stuff at him and kite him and tank him and do whatever. The more cold res you have, the more you can tank him, so that's nice. There's nothing the right portion can't cure. And yeah, we're gonna use the potion tricks. There you go. Potions. Let go. More of these. And more of these. And more of those. Bone is definitely the way to go in the beginning for a Necromancer. Yeah. You can go Thorn Summons, though. That's like the only other like prominent approach. I'm gonna use some fast potion wizardry there. Okay. Fine drill. This is how he wants to be. This is how he wants to be. Yeah, getting good at putting your potions and drinking them quickly is always nice. So, Thorn Summon is actually an approach because um, the thorns will apply to all of your summons and the monsters will attack the thorned uh, summons. However, Bone Spear is very fast if you do it exactly how I do it in the Rags to Riches video. So, yeah, just, just do it like that. How may I help you? <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm just gonna take him now. The pain. As you can see. Don't be afraid to go back to town, though. Why did he just hit me there? I don't understand. Jesus. Maybe I should have got the one point leap attack. <laughs> That's all right. There we go, he's dead. I am overburdened. I am overburdened. Oh yeah, he's he's a little painful for any uh any early game kill. But if you feed your mercenary cold res, honestly you can give him like some a cold res armor or something too. And then you yeah, just have the Merc tank him, you can also sit there for longer and just attack him. There's lots of potential approaches at the very least. Who goes there? Mercenary, of course. I'll put that to good use. Is he still only level 14? He is. I want to rebuy the mercenary. It's oddly enough. So this is another rare one. But you'll notice that it doesn't really help our situation because it'd make us attack slower. And it wouldn't give us that much more damage, so that's another rare throwing weapon. I wouldn't worry too much about that, though. If your mercenary doesn't level, and you want it to have a bit more survivability, you can always rebuy it. So make I sure can that already you tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken game. Mercenary. 
and then rebuy him like that. I'll put that to good use. If you don't care if he survives and you're just, you know, you resigned him to dying. Like I said, it's really hard to keep him alive at this point in the game. Uh, I wouldn't blame you. And you don't necessarily need him, so. That is a good point. Hey, what do you know? I'll put that to good use. Some fire res. I'll help him survive Act 3 a bit. There you go. No! So all that res gear, Elzix is really good at Hello. something good at res gear, by the way. I didn't already know. If I didn't already mention it, which I didn't, but... Didn't hear it. Alright, so actually, we're gonna lower our resistances a bit. Now that we're out of Act 2 and there's no more beetles, I'm actually gonna focus on just getting there? maximum magic fund. Hello. Oh, there's another decline. I mean, jeez. Softcore is, is like Declone City. Papa Dill! Greetings. You so much, man. For the Prime, we got a brand new member of Xeno's Attack Squad, the Ghost of the Machine, the Arcane Disciples, in the chat. So anyway, that's how you kill Duriel. You stack Cold Res, you have your Merc tank with Cold Res. And face tank him a bit as well and attack with it. Doesn't matter. With double swing, I think Duriel's a little easier. But honestly, it's still pretty painful. So make sure you get that res up. Make sure you put all your points into vitality. And uh, you'll be good to go. And that's just one of the many reasons why we want to make sure we have plenty of rejuvenation potions. And you're always picking them up and storing them. Thank you, Rose. See, now... I'm not... I don't even have any more juves, so that's not good. I have to make sure we keep picking up more, right? Okay, so we got this. Alright, Act 3. Now, at this point, you'd be using Double Swing. And you'd be clocking them over the head with Tau Runes for poison damage. In a three socket flail, or you'd be using steel or malice or a combination of some of those. And you would have farmed those flails from Faro. Interesting note though, starting in one level, it is possible to farm a staff of teleportation. So we're level 17 right now, so we can't do that yet. Once we confirm that from Armus, you might want to start looking for it. You don't have enough rejuvenation potions, by the way. You can always go back in the game to farm them. But that's obviously not ideal. Yeah, I know. Are they only on uh, hardcore or no? Diablo's in there. Okay, so you have Spider Forest there. If I had my Black Flails, there's a chance I could kill him with a Black Flail and a Malice. Now, we're gonna need to farm Flails at some point from Fara anyway. But I'm not going to worry about farming it yet, because I could just find it somewhere along the way. And I'm not playing that build right now. It's a choking gas potion, so there's a potion upgrade. I don't know if I found one in Act 2, if so I ignored it, but yeah, you definitely want to try to get one of those. If you find this in Act 2, you can use these to supplement your damage, as I mentioned earlier. I think in Act 3 you can get Rancid Gas Potions or something similar, though. That's the best Gas Potion. As you can see, though, Potions can help out quite a bit, so you can still use Potions if you want. I 
can use some. We can use some potions. Let's use some more AOE, right? <clears throat> the thing about double throw is it makes you feel like you have at least a little bit of AOE, even if you don't. It does pierce through some things, but that's about it. That's not what I wanted to do. <clears throat> Notice even with this basic throwing weapon, the damage is still rising somewhat. Let's see if we find a higher damage one somewhere. You can find them on the ground, you can gamble one. You can even imbue one using the imbue quest that we had. So. I think we're going to get another point in vitality and worry about more decks in a bit here. HP's kind of low. Only a lead packs you find. What a strange little statue. <laughs> what a strange little statue. It's got some attack rating on it, that's kinda cool. Notice the mana cost isn't very high for double throw, but still annoying to use mana on it sometimes. Keep this for later, I guess, if we need it, but attack rating can be nice once again. You do have your blessed aim mercenary, at least while he's alive, and you do have your points in a dexterity. But that attack rating would be especially important if you continue to level up through the game as double throw. But doing that past 30 becomes a little tougher, so don't need to do that. Alright, so in Act 3, we didn't really mention the maps in Act 3 much, but every jungle area, including the first area, the Spider Forest, has three grottos. One useless grotto that has nothing in it, one that has the waypoint, which is this one, and then one that has the quest area. Um, in Great Marsh, there's nothing useful in there, so you just want to pass through. But in Spider Forest and Player Jungle, that's how it works. Um, this one's the one with the quest area, the Spider Cavern. You need to find the freaking eye in here, get that eye. And that's it. <clears throat> Obarb should have Ricochet. That sounds like a, a D4, uh, a node or something. Like you could like specialize into a node called Ricochet. And then there'd be like a, I don't know, 20% chance increasing up to like 50% chance that your uh, thing is Ricochet. Definitely sounds like a Diablo 4 concept though. Diablo 4, there's always these cool nodes that you can modify your skills in various ways. Kind of a, it's one of those Diablo 4 things. Another F ring, I don't mind. That can be very useful. Very good. Alright, be very careful. This is another one of those extra strong curse dudes, kind of like Blood Witch the Wild. It does a ton of damage, so make sure to heal your mercenary and don't touch it. The minions also get the extra strong, but not the cursed. So those will also hit you really hard, so be very careful. Once again. Alright, so cool. Got the eye. I'm level 18. Life is looking pretty good just about. And we even got four decks. 
I'm just gonna drop this six poison res. <laughs> Small shroom, honestly. Or large shroom, that's not very good. I could rather just have dex and strength on here for now. It's not even very good late game, honestly. I'd rather have space. It's always a careful balance in Diablo 2 between charms and. Remember, if it's not an elite monster, you can just pass it up, and honestly, you should. Sometimes I like messing around, though. Alright, so now that you've cleared the spider cavern, the goal is to look for the flare jungle. And you should check all ends of the spider forest. West, east, and north. Wherever you can to see if you can find it. We also picked up the Jade Figurine already, which you can turn in for some extra health. Very nice. And just always throw, move backwards. Mercery does help you kite though quite a bit. Needs a choking gas potion a bit, I guess, as well. Okay. Nice. does take some mana. Okay, there's nothing over there. I was checking that to see if there is an exit there. There's not. There is an exit over here, though, so... Cracked and Rabbler head. That can have plus skills. Sell it for gold. Now keep in mind you will need white crystal swords for later or broad swords, but you can't get four socketed ones yet at this point in the game, so don't bother picking them up. Um, there's no way to make those four sockets. That is probably the useless grotto since we found the waypoint one and we found the quest one. Now if we go immediately, keep going to the right here, there's a chance this is flare jungle. But, there's also a chance this is just Great Marsh, and if it's Great Marsh, we might have to go through there. Okay, so that is Great Marsh indeed. Um, see if there's any other point where there could be a Flare Jungle. It doesn't look like it. So, there's nowhere else on the map. Check all ends of the map. If you've done everything and you only have a Great Marsh, you've even checked all the grottos. Sometimes they can have a direct route to the Flare Jungle. Then you'll have to go through the Great Marsh. And we might have to do that in this map. So this one's going to be a little bit of a tougher one. We got second weight Arcane though, so that's not too bad. Picking up Rejuvenation Potions. Looks like this is gonna, no, ah, totally useless grotto, as I said, there's nothing in here. But there could sometimes be like a path to the flare jungle, so keep that in mind. Whirlwind through. You guys do have a good imagination, that's a good thing. I will say though, that, that's the kind of stuff that's in D4, so that's good. You guys might like D4 if you haven't already tried it. Definitely some pretty cool uh, modifications you can make to things sometimes. Alright, um, we have a bunch of things with plus skills. I'm actually, well, we have space in the cube. Not for much longer. Okay, so... We need a lot of gold anyway, so this is good actually. So we need to we need to start generating gold. These are necker heads, don't worry about them. Seven lightning res. That is a really nice small charm, and actually our best charm to date. I'm not gonna worry about a little bit of attack rating. If I find a better one, I guess I'll keep it. I thought I was gonna keep it. I lied. And a lot of choking gas potions. 
Alright, so now that we're level 18, you can actually start shopping for a teleportation staff. And the way you know that it could have teleport is the staff. It's going to be a two-handed staff, either here or here. And it's going to have a red background because it will only be usable at level 24. And the reason why you want to shop it before 24 is because there won't be as many stats that can spawn. So you can definitely then max the types of stats that can spawn on it. And then you're also going to want to... Um, um, well, yeah, at 24, you won't be able to use it, so you can see it. Um, you can buy it with as little as, like, 37,000 gold or something, so we are at, like, the minimum, but it's not going to be good for a very expensive one. We can start checking for a really cheap one, though, if you want, here and there. Good day. But we already are going to need a lot more gold. Keep picking up runes, keep picking up chip gems. You're going to need them later. Don't worry about your stash being a huge... Uh, pigsty doesn't really matter too much you can throw out stuff you don't need anymore absolutely that you're never going to use again that's about it alright um alright so we actually have this too and we can turn that in we talk to Mishif I'm going to talk to Alcor it'll be good talk to Alcor again you get a potion Ocean will give us 20 life for free. It's a permanent 20 life added to your character. Pretty good deal, right? There's another... See, we have the Chain Lightning Staff. That is a level 24 skill. So you saw that sold for 15,000. Two to chain lightning, really good item there. And that one had hit recovery on an armor, so yeah, some really good cell value stuff. So now we have 64,000, so that actually puts us being able to afford some more types of teleport staves, and that's nice. I don't want to start looking for it though. It's got 20 free life. Alright, continue on. Buy all your potions. What kind of sucks is that Alcor is the only one that sells stamina potions and things like that. So if you end up needing them, you're going to have to go back to him. It's a good thing the Barb gets a lot of stamina, though. From Vitality, not just life. So you're not going to need stamina potions that often anymore at this point in the game, but you might still need them. What is the best merc for summon necro for normal? Bless aim. Um, thorns is nightmare, right? You can't get thorns in normal. If so, it, it would be bless aim, yeah. Bless aim or defiance. Your summons are dying a lot. Usually it's bless aim, though, because they do have hit ratings, so giving them more attack ratings is really good. Alright, so this is another one. I'm getting a lot of necromancer questions right now. <laughs> Looks like he wants to do a summon necro playthrough, which I talk about necromancer rags to riches, but um, I actually do the bone one. I do mention it though, it's uh it is a thing. Ooh, that's not a bad armor, actually. So all these Grottos and Great Marsh are typically not going to lead to the clear jungle. It's possible they can, but typically not. Ooh, a balance axe. Whoa. That's nice. Not enough okay, so... If you want a lot more damage at this point... This also gives cold damage. Now, this is a decently fast weapon, but it's not like as fast as this weapon. You can use this, and you can increase your damage at this point, and honestly, it's not a bad idea. 
Also, if you look at the qual quantity on this thing, you basically never run out of quantity, so. Especially with the throw mastery, so it's kind of nice. It also has one cold damage. Yeah, it's. Nice. You might notice that I'm throwing a little bit slower. That might be an acceptable loss, though, to you at this point, especially if you get. Like, literally, like, double your damage in your offhand weapon. The balance act is not too bad, so that's actually kind of... Let's find a rare balance axe. That's kind of cool. Notice how I'm finding a lot of rare items. That's just because I put on literally just a couple of items of magic fund. And this, uh, it really helps as you do any kind of playthrough throughout the game. Very early on, starting to stack that might be fun. In a Rags for Riches guide, nothing can be more important. Especially once you start farming things and making sure you at least have a little bit of magic fun. There's a three socket and crystal sword. I can't carry anymore. Believe it or not, that's not better than using a flail. Flail does more damage and it attacks faster. Even if you're doing the other approach. So somewhere in the Great Marsh you're gonna find some kind of offshoot, or at the end of it you're gonna find player jungle. See how much damage I just took there though? That's no accident. Those are the Infernos from the Flare Shamans, which are arguably the most dangerous monster in normal Act 3. They do a lot of damage. I am overburdened. Now, once I get one more level, which is in a second, I can actually help out my Fire Res here. And pretty much never die to those again, or even the Act 4 monsters. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Alright, we found the useless grotto and flares, so that kind of sucks. Keep in mind, grottos are typically found where the river splits, but that's not always the case. Um, sometimes they're, they're either in a corner or where the river splits. So you might have noticed there were like some split rivers here. Like that river is a split there, and that's where one of the grottos is. River split is nice. So you go over here. Asmund gold, huh? Wait, what? How did you find my channel through Asmund gold? Does he even know I exist? <laughs> that would surprise me greatly. That'd be awesome, but it would also surprise me. Hey, thank you, man. Asmund Gold? I kind of want to know how you found my channel now. Wait, what? Good day. Elaborate, sir. Mmm, I don't know. Is this hardcore? No. Uh, I don't make my Rags to Riches guides on Hardcore. Typically we'll die doing some of the tougher content anyway, just to show you guys how to farm things. Uh, hardcore, really the main difference is you have to go a little slower and you have to do even more farming. So, we talk about that, but it's not very useful for demonstrating it though. It's the last class that hasn't been done for a Rags to Riches playthrough. If you want to see the rest of my Rags to Riches guides, yeah, R2R our Sin, R2R Sork, R2R Paladin. These are guided playthroughs, by the way. So if you want to play any other class, you can. And uh, I give you a lot of information to even play it a different way than how I'm playing it. I usually give you the other um, primary approaches to playing it when I play it so you can understand all the different ways to play it. And we also even now have Druid. This is the last one. Um, I don't have a Barbarian Rags for Riches yet. People have been looking for this one. My YouTube and elsewhere and so it is that time it's time to make it if possible 
Alright, so put the Jews away if you can. Put the eye in the cube. Sell body armors. Sell things with plus skills. Still no red stage, so they can't have teleport on it or any other 24 skill. And then I go back to doing this. So it's going to take one, two, three points to get bad orders, which is interesting. Um, can also get battle cry towards the end, but it doesn't really matter. Probably just stick with battle orders. Or battle orders. So it's going to take a decent amount of points, and that's about it. Yeah, for now, though, I think we're going to wait till the first respect to even bother with that, though. Which is nice. Anyway. One thing that's kind of fun about Throw Barb is you literally can just find upgrades along the way. Just find some uh, rare weapons, and as long as you have at least a somewhat fast weapon in your left one, it's pretty good. I'm actually not sure if this is faster or the Palum is faster. Let me see. Same speed. Well, now we're at the same speed. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Oh, we found a grotto, actually. Uh, I didn't check it to see what it was. It's not the useless one, so... It's gotta be either waypoint... Oh, it's waypoint. Waypoints are nice. So on each back now, you can check Ormus for the teleport staff already if you want. If you don't end up getting it though, you might end up having to power farm it at some point, which means you're going to have to go reset the vendor over and over by entering another act of your waypoint. Alright, um... I think it might be further along here. Oh, we have level 19. Um, I can show you guys something real quick. Level 19. Believe it or not, you can actually make yourself very resistant to fire damage. As long as you have at least a Rao rune. So I have a Rao rune here. What you can do is you can take like a two socket at home, put a rowl in it, and then bam, fire is. I'm actually going to hold on to the other one in case I don't find one for something like Insight, which we're going to need later. Uh, but as you can see, oh, I guess I have the shrine on. Now my fire is, is at least decent. I have about 50 fire is, so I'm not going to instantly get wrecked by the shamans anymore. Or things like Venom Lords in the next act. What is this nonsense in my chat right now? I will be playing PD2 again during the new season and for testing for season 7. I will not be playing PD2 until then. Hopefully that doesn't disappoint you too much. Alright, here we go. One, two. Notice that the choking gas potion is quite useful, especially against the large groups of flares, and can help you level up as well. I think you can only get rain since starting in Act 4 now that I think about it, so I think we actually do have the potion we want. <clears throat> That's good. You can repair. I have to resell the potion to the vendor you need. That's okay. This holy blade does not belong in the hands of the Zakarin. So... We're pretty far from the waypoint in player jungle, so what we might want to do here is put down a TP. And then we might just want to go all the way up to the lower Kuros waypoint. We're pretty close to it at this point in the player jungle. And just go find 
uh, that or just cross bazaar. Uh, cross bazaar is a useful waypoint, so I'll probably be going for that one. Normal lure. Okay. No body armors, no class specific items that can have skills. Move on. Okay, here we go. Might just find the waypoint somewhere. Oh, we found the super chest by a stroke of luck, so I may as well hit those. They often have charms and things like that, so that can be nice. Believe it or not, at this point in normal mode, you can actually get some very useful red charms like this one. The 7 light res, light res small charm is still worth a lot on a brand new ladder, even all the way up until like 1 to 2 weeks. And I just found it like, literally just started playing the game. So that's actually a very uh, good teachable moment there, as I go through here. What's this? Ask for run walk? Oh, mind if I do. Um, one strength charm is not very good, honestly. Let's make some room for the faster run walk charm. Yeah, that's nice, actually. I can't carry All I did was click a super chest. So remember how I said that faster run walk and, uh, and uh, FHR can be nice? Well, they definitely can. They'll definitely speed up your playthrough. As you can see now, I, I'm visibly running a little bit faster. That's actually just kind of nice. Have the Gibdon. That gets us a free rare ring from Ormus, so that's a nice thing to do. Uh, that's next to the Flare Dungeon, and that's where we put the waypoint. What is this horn film? Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. We're just going to res at the moment. I didn't find any good barb helms for that. If we find any later, we'll, we'll use them. That looks like some kind of a... Okay. So there's another minion. Pick up some experience. It's also used killing really large groups of flares as well. You didn't really get like the best flare jungle spawn for that, but sometimes you get like a ton of flares and those are good. High density is a great thing to farm for experiencing items, not just elite packs. You need like really high density, and so like monster density. You need a lot of monsters. Just a lot. Okay, so we found the um found the quest area thing, but that's not what we want. We can do that later after we do the dungeon. We're just looking for a waypoint now in Crossed. Bingo. <clears throat> you could go all the way to uh, Travancle as well. Just fine. Let's see. All the way up there. I'm gonna keep some jewels here. I did not actually. Um, what is coming in the season seven? Have you seen all the senpai streams? Inform me so I don't have to check anything. You can just teach me while I'm playing this right now and teaching you guys how to play Barb on D2R. <clears throat> Pretty simple, right? <clears throat> all right, so we got a rare ring, and oh my god, that rare ring is so trash. Wow, that's actually sad. So many better rare rings you can get. Yikes. Well, <clears throat> that happens sometimes. It's okay. I could use a better ring, though. Like, I do have FCR rings, but I'm not playing a caster right now, so that's just kind of unfortunate. See, my best rings are actually my faster caster rings. <laughs> yeah. It's actually kind of funny. Anyway, we're going to go back through our portal now and go into the Flare Dungeon. If you leave it next to the Gibden or the Flare Dungeon, we'll be good to go.
Look how much damage it's still doing to me, and that's a 46 fire res now. Yeah, Inferno is no joke this early in the game. That's the skill they're using. Freaking hurts. I can't. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I have some of these. Whatever. Make sure to pick up the juice, though. I need more juice. Well, no, sometimes he drops like FCR rings at res. He drop r rings at like 20 res at this point already. Maybe some magic fun. That's okay, we all, we're, we're picking up all the jewelry at this point in the game anyway, and all the charms if you didn't already know. I didn't really make that clear earlier, it's definitely something you're doing at this point. I can't. It's not a huge deal. No! Lordy lordy luck who's 40. You. I think it's so much. 40 months? What? Hello. It's you and Mirage that are at 40, men. It's one of my longest running subscriptions. True Legions of Xana. See, look at this crude long staff. Still sells for 5,000 because it has plus skills. Um, level 12 plus skills, even. It's important to note that don't pick those up. Um, make sure to check for the plus skills. You get a lot of gold that way. At this point in the game, you always need gold. Constantly buying potions, as you can see, and you also want to make sure you can afford that teleport staff at the very least. Uh, isn't isn't throw barbs start fun? Alright, Flare Dungeon map, by the way, is a left map, just like Tower Cellar and most maps so far. Like I said, this is the most common type of map. Um, this whole area is pointing this way. You're looking for west or left facing compared to that way. So where my cursor is going here versus where it's going here. You're looking for left or west of that. So you're going to want to try to go do list. Since you're not going to have your teleport staff by this point in the game, you're going to have to run through the maze. Just how it has to be, I guess. Unluckiest or rags for which is good. Oh, we found some rare uh, throwing weapons, so I wouldn't say it was that unlucky so far. Alright, the brain is going to be somewhere in one of the corners here. Naked to rich? That's the idea. Not necessarily getting rich in this guide though. We don't actually get rich in these guides. We show you how to get rich from where the point is. So you can do it yourself. That would take a much longer thing than I think anybody cares to watch. At that point, you're just watching VODs of someone farming the game. Impossible. But, you know, some people are into that. I won't judge. Step one, follow grind. Step two, remember. grind. That's correct. You understand. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that what what comes after rags to riches is the grind. However, funny enough, typically we do find some actual riches in these guides. So, typically we find at least a, at least a few really good items starting out. Make sure to take care of my magic find and we just keep going on, you know. Oh yeah.
They already let you zoom the camera out. You mean more than it is already? I don't think they will. You know why? It's because of ultra wide screens. They want to make sure that the monsters will still attack them if they attack things at the very edge of an ultra wide screen. I know, but they're, they're trying, they're going for the ultra wide support, man. I already know what the problem is. Alright, um, here we go. No, it's only a solo cell found from rags to riches. Nothing from another character whatsoever. You can only use items found by this character. To show you that you don't need anything at all, and you can just make a brand new barb and do this if you want to. Um, it's definitely the least efficient way to get rich out of all the classes, however. At least if you're starting from nothing, and you don't have any party members can't get help. However, what's interesting is if you can get just a few items on a bar, you can very efficiently farm one of the most efficient areas in the game, which is Travancool. And you can get very rich off of Travancool. We'll talk more about that later, though. The barb is actually the most efficient Travancool farmer in the game. It's the problem with Hell Travancool, though, is that it's very difficult, very dangerous, very hard. And the monsters just in general are painful, but you can do it. Alright, so we're going to go in the Ruined Temple, which is the area that's facing towards Upper Kuros, and we're going to do this. Is this going on YouTube? Yeah, so it's going to likely be in multiple parts. This is part one. I don't see this being a part one -er like uh, Sorceress. And I don't even see it being a part two or really, if I want to show you guys some more stuff. It might be a part, th a three part series here. Um, so work is part one, the rest are part two except for Zahn, because something dumb happened that cut up my video in the middle, so it ended up being part three, three parts, but the other ones are all part two. This one might even be three parts intentionally. Alright, so anyway, we do that. At this point, you can go in the sewers, especially considering the waypoint is closest to Upper Cross, which is where we're going to walk anyway. And then we're going to go get the heart. Now, in the sewers, it's usually somewhere on the outside of the map, or it's in the middle, the very middle of the map somewhere. Alright, dolls are very dangerous in later difficulties. They can hurt a little bit in normal, but they're not super dangerous in normal, so you can face tank them quite a bit. Don't worry about them yet until you get to the next difficulty, and then they become very dangerous. Also, we just got a short spear. Now, this is very slow, which means that likely... Uh, I guess we'll keep the... Uh, Keep the cold damage, huh? Impossible. So this is actually just straight up an upgrade for the pillum here. And now we do way more damage, 44 to 116. And notice if I swap these, we're gonna attack really slow. Yeah. Don't wanna do that. Make sure your fastest weapon is in your left hand at all times. One thing that's kind of nice about the barb in here, though, is you don't have to worry about those little gulches. You can jump over them, so that's kind of nice. Alden doesn't have a solution for that until he gets a teleport staff, and so a lot of other characters are the same way. Those little, uh, those little uh, streams there. Those irrigation canals, whatever you want to call them. Here we go. Looking on the outside, still looking on the outside. I can't. Is this it? No, it is not. At one point, Leap really helps out quite a bit. Totally worth it. Mm. 
No, mercenary, no. What are you dying to? Alright, this is Icewing. He always spawns here. Be careful. He does a lot of damage. I can't. Ooh, a balance stack. That can be nice. More enhanced damage, typically the better, by the way, on throwing weapons if you find an enhanced damage stat. And obviously, you can check your damage here as well. Oh, look at that. That's not bad. See, look how many rare uh, throwing weapons they're finding, and that's not a coincidence. Um, damn, I guess we're not going to have the coal damage anymore because this one just has a lot more damage, and I'd rather use that. It has 47%. Heck, it even has some faster... Uh, I think that's... Yeah, I think that just made us throw faster a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Might have got a frame there. Maybe not. If not, it's okay. We'll get some more frames later. Um, okay, so we're level 20. At this point, you could really hold some points until you're a little bit further along. Honestly, you can save all your points if you want to at this point for level 24 skills. That is totally up to you, though. Um, actually, wait, no. Because we can get two points from Izzy still, so I guess we can get, like, one more. Okay. Yeah, we'll get, like, one more. We'll get one more to double through, and then I'll start saving points. Level 20, you can start saving points for sure. Um, at this point, I can get more vitality. I probably will, because I'm probably not going to find the throwing spears for a bit longer. Doesn't matter if I find one, I'll just level up one more time. Throwing spears have 65 dex requirement. Alright, so as you can see, all this, just this little amount of MF is paying off big time. Now I'm doing some serious damage. That's a lot of damage per hit there for throw. That's a lot of damage. And when you play like, play with it like this, double throw is very strong. But once again, you can totally go the double swing approach, and I talked about the weapons you would use and a lot of other stuff about it, but yeah, you can totally do that already. Yeah, see, that's, that's really nice. Also has more attack rating too, so this system, I have already have a thousand attack rating without the mercenary. So, you really don't have to worry about hitting the monsters. Yes. That's always good, right? Pretty uh, pretty positive thing there. Then we'll go over here. Oh, wait. Oh, that's the book. <laughs> Alright, so we got the book. We can turn that in for five free stat points. These tiles are annoying, yeah. Let's go check for that teleport staff. So notice here... This is a red staff, red background. This means it could have teleport, and it can have any other 24 level skill too. In this case, it has energy shield and it has teleport, but you're not looking for sorceress only teleport. You're looking for teleport charges. That's a very important distinction. If you waste your money buying a teleport staff, it says teleport, it doesn't have teleport charges. You're just gonna lose all your gold. And you're going to be sad. You're not going to be able to teleport when I'm 24. Alright, there's five more points. As you can see, almost have 400 life. That's pretty typical with a Barbarian already at this point in the game. And I still put a lot of points into decks and even put five into strength as well to prepare for some other items. Still doesn't matter. Or the possibility of them, I should say. What's this one? Oh, yeah. Uh, Tiger Strike has been viable. Yeah, it's just not as fast as, like, using traps, obviously. This is a really cool item, but... I'll probably keep it to the very end, but we're not going to be using it again. Also not going to be using these random javelins. Okay. Let's toss those. We have better weapons now. <gasps> Alright, so we'll do that. Not at maximum attack speed anymore, though, which is kind of sad. But... Or high attack speed, I should say. But you know, there's other ways to get attack speed on your build besides just having fast weapons in your left weapon slot. Believe it or not. Alright, so now the goal is to kill Travancool. 
Get the flail. Make the big flail. Smash the thingy-mabobber. And go into the Durance of Hate. That's just gonna be straight ahead. You're just gonna wanna go all the way up here. Ideally towards the center though. I can't carry anymore. All of my rags to riches guides are on YouTube, and we have every class already done besides Barb, so. You ever want another guided playthrough for your favorite class, or just you want to try a class you've never tried before, but you always get stuck, or you just don't know like how to advance at that point? Definitely check this out, for sure. Or you don't know how to farm stuff, you just feel like you can't find anything. I'll tell you all the good strats, and at that point it's up to you to grind. The only thing I can't do is grind for you, so... I am overburdened. It's a ring. I haven't seen a ring in a while. Ooh, that's nice. Here we go. 19 fire is... That's good, because that means that I don't need to put another row in here and I almost have uh, 60 fire is. That means you probably are going to have enough fire is to be fine here. So interestingly enough, you can actually leap through these little windows here. Mercenary gets totally destroyed by Hydra, so don't bother trying to keep him alive in here. Just gonna frustrate you. It's um, it's actually a bug that they still have never fixed. I guess they're gonna keep it in the game, where Hydras do ten times more damage to a mercenary or a pet. Kind of interesting. Anyway, you can also just sit down here if you want. You can like throw potions at him. You can just attack them and throw through the window. Of course you have to lead them to the window though. It's really easy to lead them to the window because you can jump through the window with leaps. So once again, another nice use of leap here. You're already not convinced that leap is worth your one point. It is. Fire enchant, so you can do a lot of damage. This guy has stone skin, which means he has physical resistance. So it's gonna take a little bit to kill if you don't have a lot of elemental damage charms at this point. Which we actually haven't found a single one, so we might have found a few by this point. Alright, amethyst, flail. Boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. Damage breastplate. Splint meal is nice. Okay, so that's a higher level of infantry. Toss that in there. Go get your mercenary again. Safe enough, I guess. Might die anyway, but it's okay. He's gonna die to Mephisto in a second, but we can get him. Alright, so now we're at the end of Act 3. Wasn't well, that bad, right? You know, for the very worst class to level up on, did this really feel that bad? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If this actually looks that bad. Some people think it looked, but you know, we haven't gone to the end of end of the game yet, so you can still reserve your judgment. But by this point in the game, you should probably be thinking. Eh, I don't know. Could be worse. Sure, it's not quite as fast or flashy as some of the other classes, but hey, he's not struggling too much. <clears throat> and I'm not even using the old meta, which is the uh, double swing, which I think is still the normal meta for the most part, at least at this point. Yeah, the old Diablo 2 actually had superior load times. There's actually a few things that the old Diablo 2 had that were a little better than D2R, unfortunately. I can't carry anymore. Went backwards in the load time scenario. But 
That's mostly because they decided that they absolutely needed to maintain legacy graphics in the remastered version of the game. So, you can blame them for that. Because every time you load an area, it's loading up the legacy graphics and it's loading up the D2R graphics at the same time in all places in the game. So, it's a little hard for sure on the, on the hardware. Even with insane hardware, it's the same thing, because then there's just, like, limitations to how fast that can happen, no matter what. That's a tower in. We're gonna want to pick that up. Come on, man. Dude, Leaf can get so buggy sometimes. Legacy does feel very smooth, yep. Yeah. All right, so Durance from Durance one, it's a left map again. But once you get to Durance two, it is left for the waypoint from Durance two entrance. So this entrance is pointing this way. So you're going to be looking somewhere to the west or to the left, or at least a left or west facing tile, even if it's behind it. And so normally you just want to go to the left first to find it fast, which we did. And then, of course, straight ahead, so facing the same direction as the entrance, you're going to want to try to go straight ahead in general to find Durance 3. And that is how it works even all the way up to Hell Mode. It's just Hell Mode Durance is much bigger. So if you don't know this in Hell, learn it in Normal, so you don't have that problem in Hell when the map is enormous. Okay. All right, mercenary might get wrecked here. Um, hopefully the chat's having a great time tonight. Okay, mercenary is gonna die anyway, so he can die right there. That's that's okay. He has zero point zero percent chance of surviving this so, at this point in the game. Unless you chug like 10 jukes and get lucky and he doesn't crit your mercenary. So if you didn't know, Prime Evils deal a huge damage bonus to mercenaries and pets. So, yeah. They die very fast. <clears throat> now, there's something a little concerning on our stats here for fighting Mephisto. If you're on hardcore right now, I might actually want to buff up my light res a bit. Maybe put on a light res ring or gloves or boots if I had it. Um, I'm okay at least at the moment. What I'm going to do, however, it's not just the lightning damage you have to worry about on a throw barb where you attack from afar. It's also the cold damage. And uh, yeah, it's very painful potentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to get... Oh, hi. Well, that's 10,000. We can sell that more in Act 3. Act 3 is up to 15,000 gold. Um, sell yourself short. Mostly went back to Act 1 because I just wanted to buy these potions a little quicker than walking to Alcor. Alcor can suck it! No, just kidding. It doesn't matter. Okay, anyway. Go there. Hello again, Alex. We'll have something for him to attack for a little bit, I guess. And what I just did was just drink a whole bunch of thawing potions, so I have 50 cold res for about three minutes. Alright, so this is a level 24 staff. It's got a red background, so is this one. Still no teleport. Before we hit level 24, for sure, we're going to want to look for a teleport staff. Um, we do have a decent amount of gold now, so it might be good after we finish Mephisto to farm one out. We didn't get lucky like in my last Rags to Riches run, where I think we found one like a couple of tries. That was really lucky, though. We got a little luckier than that one in general, but at least we're finding decent weapons. That's good. 
bit of ice. Throw, there's a lot of types of throwing weapons that can spawn that, so just having any MF at all just helps a ton. And then, what you do now here... My brothers have escaped you. <sighs> you can try to keep your mercenary alive, but... I guess I can boost some juice just to kill him a little bit faster. Some people might find that a waste, though. But as you'll see here, he does a lot of damage. You're scared of dying to any monster, by the way, and as long as you're playing a soft part, you can put up a portal. And if you die, you can just get your body and then retrieve it real fast. On hardcore, that won't help you. You will die, and that'll be the end of it. And one strat on Hardcore, if you're using this build, as you can probably tell. And make sure you don't get below 200 health against Mephisto here. He can kill you in one shot. Um, if I had a bit more light res, I could probably tank him a bit better with that, but it's okay. Let's kind of run around and hit him. And you have a lot more range than he does sometimes, so use your range. Maybe now. The world will have peace. Nice. Will the world have peace though? He dropped a lot of rare items, so that's nice. It's not too surprising given that we already have 40 MF. Even the first the first 50 MF is so huge. Just having like any amount of MF at all is just gonna make it so much easier. Just get a lot of rares, you can get a lot more gold that way. Better items, better boots and gloves even in the beginning. And the beginning is really the toughest for the Barbarian, so like, it's very important you heed this advice here. And another life leech one with even more damage. Sweet! Alright, the mercenary actually has a decent weapon now, but it's not going to save him because he's still 18. What do you need? Uh, we can maybe try resurrecting him again. Buying a new one. Alright, so this is 10 to 32 damage. It's pretty good. Oh, it's very fast attack speed, actually. Okay, maybe we want that then. Yeah, it also gives us just more damage straight up on that weapon. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be better. Um, those boots there are actually quite interesting. Those actually have a sizable amount of light res. So that's kind of cool. Like a really sizable amount. Okay. Um, definitely going to want to maybe use that for Diablo so we don't get uh, electrocuted. So we're going to want to keep that in handy. Keep any items with high res even if you don't feel like using them yet because you're stacking MF. Going to need them later. Almost guaranteed. Throwing mastery. Unfortunately, though, it has nothing else on it. It's ethereal. If it had a socket, maybe it'd waste a route rune, but probably not. Okay. So at this point, you can get greater healing potions and sell things for up to 20,000 gold. That's nice. What's up, Arfi? How you doing, man? I'm doing barbarian rags to riches. Okay, so... We're kind of, I don't want that teleport staff if we can get one. As you can see here, we have about 120,000 gold. And some of the most expensive teleport staves do cost around there. Um, if it costs anything like 400,000, you don't want to buy it. So don't worry about that. Never would want to spend that much anyway. We're gonna do those, we're gonna go in and out of this portal here, we're gonna reset his inventory, and we're gonna farm it for a bit. Good morning. We could wait till a little bit later to farm it, but there's not really much of a point. Having about 100,000 plus gold is a pretty good place to be to start farming for it seriously. You don't already have that, just make sure you get it before level 24. You can farm for some more items and Act 4 or whatever, and come back. Can't use it till 24 anyway, so. Hey, there you go, though. What do you know? 
Oh, <laughs> oops. Bought a really low cost staff. Good thing that wasn't a bad accident. There it is, worst staff of teleportation. Level one teleport. The only bad thing about this particular one is that it's an eight slot staff, so if you have to put it in your um, Uber or something, it can be annoying, but Great. I can't carry anymore. That's okay. That will do. That will totally work. That was actually only 17,000. That was like almost as cheap as you can get it. And that's because it's a eight slot staff, which is cheaper, so. There you go. Got a really cheap teleport staff. So it's got teleport charges, and you're gonna wanna use those on your swap starting at 24. Not gonna worry about that right now, though. We did. Continue on. Remember to get that between 18 and 23 if possible. Because once again, you won't be able to tell by a red background anymore if you hit 24. And there's going to be more types of stats that spawn in the spawn pool, which means it's going to be more rare to find it. So you have to check every staff and it's going to be more rare. Um, which is going to take a lot longer on average. Okay. Yeah, 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 you know, you can die, it's fun. So, Act 4, the game, in normal mode at least, gets exponentially tougher. And that's also kind of the case at every difficulty. What you can do is if you want to continue leveling up, you can definitely do so by continuing to kill elites. That's what I'm trying to do right here. I need but it's not working. Okay. But for the most part in Act 3, you don't really need to kill anything. Well, except for the quests. So what we're gonna do is I could kill some elites, <clears throat> but even for most classes, Act 4 Normal is actually really tough. And if you watch other Rags to Riches videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. Even the Sorceress has some problems in here. Sometimes you'll die and stuff because it just teleport is something really dangerous. But, you know, that happens. Sorceress probably still has the easiest time, though. Also, once you get to Act 4, if you're still in high player count, which you shouldn't be from Mephisto, but like, let's say you had high player count Act 3, you're leveling up, you could already be level 25 by now, and you'll be able to clear the experience penalty in Act 5 Normal, which we'll talk about in a moment. And, uh... That is the case. And I am good. But if that is the case, make sure you don't have players 8 in Act 4. That will make your uh, push through Act 4 very painful. Make sure you set it back to players 1. Especially before hitting Izuol. Izuol is so tanky. So in outer steps, we're going to find the Plains of Despair on one of the three outsides. It's not near. Not, not the. Uh, one of the three. Um, sorry, one of the three sides of the square that's not where the town is. So at first I looked over on that side because that's the closest one. And then sometimes it's in the middle one, in this case it was the middle one. And then it can be on the far left one as well. But we found it in the middle one. Isuol can be anywhere in the point of despair. This goes for all difficulties, of course. Now, Izuwal in normal is disproportionately strong. His HP compared to the difficulty is very high. So it's going to take a while to kill him, but you are going to want to kill him. His two extra skill points are very nice, and we can save them for when we hit level 24 later. It's going to help us level up. Now, if you notice here, I'm kiting him along the edge of the map. 
So I'm looking for, right now I'm looking for the entrance to City of the Damned. While I'm attacking. Look how useful it is having just one cold damage on my build. This is actually a good point. Is like if you can get any cold damage at all, like on a charm or on your weapon, um, it's actually really nice. So if you have a one to two gold damage small charm, you might be tempted to sell it to a vendor. That's actually something you'd want to keep on this build. The same would actually go even if you were doing double swing as well, just because it slows down the monsters, slows down their animations, makes them a lot weaker. Okay, so we ended up finding it. It's right over there. So we're gonna go... Uh, we can actually kite him up here if we wanted to, and then we can look for the, uh, the river. The flame as we kite is cool. I bet a lot of you guys didn't even know you could put his wall up here. You actually can't. It's kind of interesting. So, do this. And notice how I'm not really losing much time. Like, I could face tank him right now and pop flying potions for his cold damage. And it would take forever to kill him, and then I'd still have to find all this shit. <laughs> the bats. Him plus the bats. They might still kill me. Um, I pop some potions here. Gonna want some thawing potions for this, cause as you can see. Oh look, an eight life small term. That's a life small term. That's definitely a keeper. Hello. Okay. That's not a bad thing to have on you. Maybe I'll get this cheap ass mercenary and see if he can tank for me a little bit. Probably not though. Nah, he's just gonna die. Act 4 is usually too much for the mercenary. Let's play in the game. Alright, let's go over here. Come here, little doggy. This is so much HP. If he regened, it would actually be impossible for a lot of classes to kill at this point in the game. Just imagine. Of course, as you can see though, one of the problems here is that we're also dragging all these other monsters. And so, that's gonna hurt. Odd oh, bats everywhere. I think the bats die really fast, but it doesn't matter. Make sure to have Leap on hand. Make sure to put your potions back in your belt when you gain some distance. Still haven't found the waypoint, unfortunate. That's okay, because he's still not dead, so it almost doesn't matter. It would be easier just to focus on killing him, of course, though. Oh, there it is. So, City of the Dam can be anywhere. It can even be in the very beginning, but we got unlucky. It's somewhere towards the back corner. Alright, so we're going to finish him off now, pretty much. That's it. Between half freeze duration and thawing potions, though, he's not going to keep us frozen for very long. And then he's dead. So notice that we didn't actually waste too much time just sitting there and killing him because we killed him along the way and we're already to the river of flame. Good stuff. Yeah, 
fast left clicking potions and right clicking potions. Good skills to develop. What do you need? Might be tougher to do though in a controller, I will admit. So we wouldn't be able to get more into double throw anyway, so at this point we're actually going to hold skills. I'm actually going to get one into increased stamina and anticipation of increased speed. Um, it would have to get increased speed, but it will help a little bit here. Um, and then of course, I can also put one in anticipation of getting bad orders. And we're just going to wait on a lot of 24 skills here. It can you kite him into town? No, monsters can never go into town by any means. <laughs> that would be pretty funny if you could. Um, anyway, yeah, no, you cannot do that. Anyway, doesn't matter if that can't happen because it's pretty cool anyway. And yeah, this cold damage on the Viper Horn is kind of nice there. Very high enhanced damage too on this thing, so we actually have some decent damage numbers here. If we're doing like 100 damage per hit, and that's per hit, and I throw two of them. So we're already pretty much ready to beat normal. We'll probably find some other ones though along the way, maybe Diablo will drop one as well. <clears throat> okay, so... I do give a lot of hardcore tips, actually. So in Act 4, you usually want to... In, in hardcore, I mean, I talked about the fire res thing, but you really want your fire res to be higher. And against Diablo, you're also going to want some decent light res, most likely, as well. So you don't get vaporized while you're throwing by the, uh, the lightning hose. Um, we actually have a way to get a little bit more light res in our build currently, but there's always ways to get more. Get the City of the Damned waypoint, and into the river we go. Thanks. Okay. So at this point, in general, you just want to go straight ahead. If you go perfectly straight, you typically will find um, the River of Flame waypoint in the entrance of the Chaos Sanctuary, but this is where Diablo is. That's the whole point of the game. So we're going to be trying to get over there. Now, that's what they tell you, that's the whole point of the game. It's all a sack of lies, but it's okay. Now, you might notice that I didn't go straight ahead and actually veered off into one of the side branches here in the map. That's because in a side branch typically is where you're going to find or it's where you're always going to find Hephaesto. And that is going to give us a free rune and a bunch of free gems. Now in a speed run, you typically don't mess with this guy. You can mess with them if you want in Nightmare. Some speed runs mess with them now in Nightmare because you can get some insane runes. Um, but this is not a speed run. I actually recommend always in Rags to Riches going for him because free runes are usually very useful in a playthrough of any kind. And so I do recommend killing him. Notice he wasn't very hard to kill. And with our distance, we don't really have to worry about dying all that often unless we get trapped, as we've seen earlier. But I have the really weak weapons. Alright, what is the forge rune? It can be any rune between L and M. L, L, Tur, Nef, F, F. Tal, Raul, Orc, Fool, and Am are all possible from the normal forge. Let's see if chat can guess what rune is going to drop here. Now some of those runes are very nice. And Am it can be very big because that can help us make spirit. And when we go for war cry, uh, spirits are pretty huge. Not important right now, but that's okay. Of course, we're going to show you multiple ways to level up this character. Fun factoid about Double Throw, though. I actually did it on Hardcore once. Double Throw and only Double Throw throughout the entire playthrough. And beat Hell Bale with it. 
Um, that will take you, of course, constantly upgrading your weapons and the vendors and things of that nature, but you can 100% do it. And, um, yeah, it's not bad. At any rate, enough about that nonsense. We're going to get some more life here. Uh, uh, then we're going to start teching our points. We actually have Shout now. So if you wanted to, you could skill shout. Um, that's up to you, though. So shout will give you some extra defense. It'll also give your mercenary extra defense. But at level 1 and with no other points into anything else, it only gives you a duration of 30 seconds. So that's kind of weak. At any rate, though, you can maintain that for some extra defense. Kinda cool. Alright, what did we get? I'm gonna guess L because I hate myself. F! Well, you know, honestly, you might think that's a bad one, but more S's are actually quite good. And S's are surprisingly useful, but it's also not good. Also, mean we didn't get one of the better runes, though, which are the higher ones and closer to making spirit. Not getting a burr rune from any Hellforge. No one even guessed F, so... This chat loses this round, huh? Continue on. We had a bunch of guesses, too, but... No F runes, I don't believe so, unless I'm reading that wrong. We have an if guess, so we had some close guesses for sure. No one wins. Nope. See how useful a uh, leap can be? It's just very nice. There's a lot of like little tiny areas you can leap over which are really annoying otherwise. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of those. Well, I think those don't do a lot of damage. Mostly just drain your mana and they're super annoying. Spirit Shrine. <laughs> Why didn't we find any of those earlier? Well, it doesn't matter anyway, because these are just regular monsters, so killing these isn't really going to do anything for us. Not really, anyway. Okay. So, we found the River of Flame Waypoint that's generally straight ahead following the uh, beginning area of the river. And you got a Flawless Skull, that's really good for money. I'm going to sell that. Also have a perfect diamond and flawed rubies. So these I would actually keep for other things later. Um, skulls aren't super useful, honestly, but all of these gems are actually quite nice. Skulls can be useful, but typically just sell them. They're worth so much. You maybe use them for like leech on the mercenary weapon or something, but that's about it. <laughs> oh, no, it's Keck W. So in general, it's going to be prodding along level 21, so I didn't expect to just destroy this area straight up. I need mana. Uh, can we actually leave for this? No, too low of a level. Later on you can actually leap over the uh, See, the range radius is actually kind of cool, because then you can leap over bigger things. You need a higher level for that, though. I can't. It's impossible. It'll be fun to leap over those later, though.
What's up, Kex? How you doing? That perfect diamond is actually really nice. <laughs> As you can see, we're doing plenty of damage. The main problem at this point is going to be... Getting through all the way through here. Make sure to take care of your gold constantly and pick up things to replenish your gold. Luckily, we didn't lose all of our gold by buying that teleport staff, but... I don't even know why I'm killing things at this point. You don't need to kill anything as well. <clears throat> champions are cool if you want to kill champions and elites, but you don't have to. Doing good. So what I recommend you do is just go straight to the seals, which are on all three sides here. All you have to do is kill the, the bosses. You don't have to worry about leveling up really right now. There's a reason for that. Like I mentioned in the beginning of Act 4, you don't really have to kill anything. <clears throat> the old plate. Ethereal! We almost throw out our weapons. Okay, yeah, I guess so. Hail to you, champion. What do you need? It will be pineful, pineful, pineful. Lucky loot, baby. That was an F. <laughs> Stop it! <coughs> Mom, mercenary. <coughs> Won't make me quest your ass. <coughs> In general, you're gonna probably have to kill most things anyway here so you don't die. Recommend taking it nice and slow, back up when you have to. The mercenary is alive, you know, let him tank a little bit. You could rebuy the mercenary again though if you really wanted to min max the merc, but he's can't carry probably just gonna die anyway. Not He's always fire immune. We don't have to worry about that on a barb. There's a lot of other classes that do that. It's actually pretty easy to kill him. Putting a hit recovery though, unfortunately, they can just keep you there. Sometimes rare weapons can sell. Derail, thank you so much for the prime. Welcome to the cult of Xana, Drusay. You're now a member of Xana's attack squad, the ghost in the machine, the Arcane Disciples. A lot of good support here today, guys. Thank you guys. Glad you guys are enjoying Rags to Riches, Barbarian. You're watching it live, of course. Everyone else will have to watch it on YouTube in the future. Weapons aren't upgraded to this point. Once again, you can go back to vendors and you can actually uh, buy some of these throwing weapons with higher damage, by the way. In case you get really unlucky or you just weren't able to put any MF on your build. Hmm, that's kind of nice, a two socketer. Two socketed pull arm with an Amrin can do something, but we, we might use it, you never know. There's a lot of things you can buy that you just might use, but you probably won't use, and that's perfectly fine. 
You can never have, especially on the Barbarian, a shortage of uh, helping items, honestly. Backup resistances. Really, really <laughs> never have to view any of that. Uh, so yeah, that's an interesting point here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to Desace now. This is one of the tougher seals, but normal, it's pretty easy. We did the easiest one first. That one's free. Yeah, so remember the weapon vendor can indeed sell. better weapons if you're not getting better ones. And if you are indeed doing the throw bomb approach and haven't already farmed flails, flails from far off or double swing. I am overburdened. Okay, nice. A solo pull arm barb. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely do that, man. And believe it or not, that's actually a good strat later if you can make the Rune Word Obedience. Uh, Whirlwind, believe it or not, is not a terrible approach with certain items. But it's definitely not a good approach until you get those items. It's really bad. Uh, you're going to struggle a lot. That's your primary approach. Don't recommend that at all. There's a lot of things you could do, though, on a Barbarian. <laughs> In general, not recommended, at least until you get certain items. If you get a Bone Snap, you can double upgrade it as well. That's another solution besides obedience. Okay, so you really gotta watch it here. If your fire res is low, they can melt you in a second. What I recommend doing though is just kite backwards, let them hit you a bit. Factor is very fast. Always. Sace can be fast too, but he's always fast. Once we get frenzy, it's actually a lot easier to do the kiting thing as well. So, but we'll we'll show you guys how that looks, of course, before we respec into Warcry. You go into this as well. Oh, no, that's not it. <clears throat> All right, so anyway, we killed him. GG. Just press the last seal, and then Diablo will spawn. Don't ever bother getting the mercenary for this boss. He's just going to get smoked. And also, I'm going to try to see if I put on a little bit more light in res so I don't get destroyed. So I'm going to actually get on my light res gloves. And a little bit more light res on my boots, which means we are not going to have too much more magic find for this kill, but it's worth it because Diablo is a pain. You can do a ton of damage. If you're on hardcore and don't have at least 53 light res, you are in mortal danger. You don't have at least like 50 light res without. Uh, Pose. And even with 50 light res, you're gonna see how much it hits, how hard it hits. It's no joke. And it does a combination of physical and lightning damage. His hose can be blocked every frame, strangely enough, so if you have block, that can help. Typically at this point in the game, nothing has block, but may as well do it. Alright, so normal Diablo, arguably the hardest monster in normal, especially for hardcore players. To clear. Just gonna want to keep your distance and just use double for it. It's pretty simple, right? It's really the simplest thing ever. Hopefully your weapons have some damage on them. Uh, whether by finding them off the ground or vendoring them a little bit. Otherwise it'll take a little longer. 
Look at that. Look how useful the cold damage is. Any amount of cold damage will do that. All you need is one cold damage somewhere. Really nice. Um, can't emphasize it enough. If you're unlucky to not find any cold damage on anything, a weapon or a um, Or on a, like a small charm or a charm of some kind. That's just unfortunate. It's so good. Yeah, on hardcore, I'd go to Elzix and shop some res. You can you just reset them every time with some light res. But typically, you'll just find some along the way, like I did. Um, on a barb, you don't need to farm as much light res because you do have a health pool, but it is still very dangerous. You end up caught in place, especially in Battle.net, like a little bit of lag can get you killed there. It's a tiny bit of lag is all it takes um, to be very careful. And if you have any amount of ping at all, I, I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Because you will take a lot of damage. Look how fast my health went down. That's a 53 light rays. Not a joke. You will die. As you can see, though, we have some attack rating due to all those points you put into our skills. So we don't need blessed aim. But it's, our chance to hit Diablo is still pretty bad, right? It's like s less than 60%. This fight does take a while in the Barbarian. I think this is the longest Diablo fight in the game as a starting Barbarian. Understandable since he's just the hardest starter, period. Just gotta be persistent. Don't worry, he won't heal up as long as you don't remain in town for too long. I think he'll heal all the way up to full if you stay in town for like forever. Look at him just dodge me as he just walks back and forth. Totally trying to style him right now. You can also use shift click by the way if you wanna like, uh, oh damn. That hurt. If you want to just like try to anticipate where he's moving, you don't just have to like right click him. I can show you guys that a bit here. So if I use, I'm gonna just use shift, I'm just gonna use shift click here, and then left click to move. And then I'm just gonna, you know, taunt him a bit there. If on softcore, I'd normally put a portal on Diablo, because you never know. Believe it or not, speedrunners die to Diablo all the time, so... He's pretty dangerous. Gotta respect him. He is the name of the game, after all. It's a little easier in Hell difficulty though. Comparatively, he gets easier in the other difficulties because you can face tank him in his minimum range of his laser, but you can't do it in normal. It'll kill you if you try that. Eternal suffering would be too great for you. Hey, we actually got a Berserker's item. Check that out. That's kind of cool. It is a Barbarian set, of course. It's like impossible to get the full set, but you know, that's kind of neat. Hello. If you have any space for neat finds, we can just show different things we found here. So look, we got a... Oh, 32 life on the Mercenary. Interesting. Antlers. Probably will sell well. Indeed it will. It's even got all elemental skills on it. Sweet! I can't. Definitely try to sell the rares from the bosses if you can. And then... 
Onward. Onward, you wayward son. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can actually rebuy the uh, mercenary. It's a little frustrating here. Come back this way. No, 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 no. It's got more light rows anyway. But we're gonna want those. Maybe a slightly higher level mercenary. Might not help us honestly that much, but you never know. He'll just tank for us as we try to move through the game. I can't. All right, so here we go. Plate mail. Yeah, we'll put those away here in a second. Oh, what am I doing? I'll put that to good use. I'll put that to good use. Is Geed my best friend? Uh, he's not my lover, but he's, he's my best friend. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Alright, um, here we go. Is Geed your best friend? That's the real question. We found another nice res charm, too. Those res charms are nice already, to have like seven res charms already. Believe it or not, they're gonna do some work, and the Barbarian doesn't have insane res problems, even despite sometimes using two weapons, because he's got natural resistance, <clears throat> which is uh, basically a skill that cheats and gives you all res. It's actually uh, one of the only really good things about starting a Barb is that finding resistances isn't typically super difficult. Um, you'll get a decent amount of res no matter what. You won't have to fear that. Okay, so we're gonna go to Act 5. So we're only at level 21, which means we can't get experience in Normal Act 5. The second you hit Normal Act 5, you'll need at least 25. If you're doing a single player playthrough and have been using higher player count, especially all the way through Normal Act 3, this won't be an issue. As a matter of fact, you should already be 25, 26, and you could even be 27 at this point. However, since What's the new best are, best year these days? Since we always do rags to riches in the most extreme circumstances possible, and also like to show what you can do solo on Battle.net in case you just want to get to the end game and start farming yourself, not have to rely on anyone else or anything else, this is how you do it. So on Battle.net, you don't have the option, of course, of modifying your player count, so we're only 21. So what does that mean? That means that it's not really used to killing monsters outside of quests, and that you might even want to wait on your on your quest because there's no point to going through all those monsters to do it until you hit 25. So you need to be at least 25. So you might be asking, Dark Humility, why don't I go backwards in the game to farm to 25? Because that's not as effective as going forwards in the game to farm to 25. That's because if we kill Bale, the time has come we can get access to the secret cow level. Which is a town, town portal in the words leg we picked up earlier, all the way in the beginning of the game in Tristram. We can do it, and we can just keep getting words legs and farming cows. Cows is an effective farm from level 20 to 25. You can even get level 30 in there. So as you can see. I'm not particularly concerned at all. But what it does mean is that most monsters I'm probably going to skip. I might hit some of the super uniques so and maybe I'll get lucky on an item or something. Let's see. Get two items off this guy, Dakron. Ow. There you go. So you got an amulet. Maybe that's good. I never know. Ah, it kind of is actually. Magic. Sweet. But since we're not killing many monsters, it really doesn't matter all that much. But I also don't need much res, so we're actually going to put our magic fine gear back on that we had before we were fighting Diablo. Because why the heck not? Actually, I might put on my faster run want boots here. No way, no, I want half restoration. Yeah, no, that. <laughs> It's really magic painful, game. actually, to do that. So magic, man, magic find's not bad. We'll put on some magic find. Like I said, magic find's good. 
That first 50 magic fun give you a lot. Typically, we'll find at least some basic magic fight items throughout the game, especially once you start farming an area like cows. It's going. As you can see, we're at the end of normal. And we're just going to want to go run all the way to the end of Act 5 for the most part and then kill Bale so we can get access to the secret cow level. That's really what we want to stay focused on here. Remember, we're not high enough level to get experience. This again. However, one thing that is nice to kill is this. You may as well get this quest out of the way. No! Yeah, mercenary can die, that's fine. This won't give us any experience, but it'll give us access to the socket bus. Sometimes the drops get to this table. explanatory narration yep that's what the whole video is about so you can listen to it and you can follow along it's a guided playthrough so it's not a guide where you watch it and then do it it's like a guide where you listen to it or have it on the other screen and it's extremely long so but there's multiple parts so once again this is not this is just part one let's keep that in mind Oh, we got a rare plume there. That could be good. Probably not, though, because it's like a lower tier item at this point. Let's see. Oh, wow, actually. 19 maximum damage? 1 to 4 cool damage. 19 mouse. Anna, yeah, so the maximum damage is sick on this thing. Um... It really doesn't matter which one we place so much. I kind of like the fact that this one's actually giving me a sizable amount of a... Uh... Let's see here. I don't want to keep this one for uh, the other one for like Bale or something that has more attack rating. Yeah. I like this one though because it's got some like poison res on it too. And it's a faster weapon which means it can attack faster. I also just got one to all masteries as well. So you'll see we actually just got another level of Growing mastery for free. That's kind of cool. Deed will give us more damage. So right there, my damage is increased. Always pick up throwing weapons, especially rare throwing weapons, as you play through the game. Yeah, if you're doing the throw approach, you should still be using your tal 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 flails, or flail and your steel uh, flail if you're still doing double swing, um, and if you've already like farmed up flails for that. But if you're doing it like this, always pick up the throwing weapons because later in the game they get better stats. It's really that simple. Better stats from vendors later in the game, better stats from monsters later in the game. Doesn't matter. And if you don't know what the throwing weapons are called, you're probably going to just want to check all of them. Anything that kind of looks like it throws though, probably does. <clears throat> yeah. So that's cool. We just got a damage upgrade there as well. You can also maintain fast attack speed in the other hand. And we have a decent number of spare juves, but we're going to want more throughout the game. And we got the waypoint, I think, right? Yes. We killed Eldritch because he does drop good things like that, so even though we didn't get experience from him, he does typically. Alright, so this part of the game, the literal goal is just to pretty much run to the end of Act 5. To do this quickly, you're just going to want to stay on the edges here like this. 
good thing is his physical damage is very effective against barricades and things like that. So. You know, Barb has some advantages, but not many. His big advantage, though, once he gets farming, is his find item skill, which will make it, which makes it possible to find double the items from monsters. Which is pretty insane. That's his, that's his ace in the hole when it comes to actually getting rich. Thanks. Well, he died. Okay, that's fine. So another thing is every time you hit a barricade, you can look for, um... You can save the barbarians if you want. I guess we can go look for the barbarians now. You can you can do it later if you want. But you're gonna want those runes for sure. It's pretty big stuff early on. Yeah, he said thanks and then died. It's, that is a pretty good thing, I will admit. He's a very polite mercenary. Despite dying. Alright. Save all three pins of mercenaries, which are somewhere in these three ramparts, and you're good. And then you can talk to Qualcook and you can even get an Act 5 mercenary now if you want. I found better pull arms than I've found rare swords, so I think I'm gonna stick to the Act 2 mercenary. But honestly, an Act 5 mercenary is quite nice. Not like blessed aim for the attack rating, it's more for the, uh. It's like battle cry and things like that for lowering defense, so an Act 5 Burke can actually be a pretty good solution early on on a barbarian. Alright, so what we're gonna do now. This guy's a super unique. You can kill him if you want. This is a reminder though, no experience. Look how common throwing weapons are. See, this is why killing all those monsters is very nice. I would have had a weaker throwing weapon in my offhand still. I didn't use this. <clears throat> Now, I've been upgrading my weapons just as I've been playing the game, which is perfectly normal typically on this build. You really don't have to do much things that are special, especially if you have any amount of magic find. It's just... Okay, this one has no enhanced damage, and it's just a balance knife, so that's very low damage. That's going to be no good to us at this point when we have weapons that hit that hard. You got a weapon with 11 to 53 damage now. We don't need that. Almost doing 200 damage with just one hit on one of them. Okay, so area plateau, you literally just one through to the end, and there's no quest to do at all. If you want, you can kill this monster here at the end, thrust socket. He can be a pretty good farm in hell mode, but normal, he's. Just an impediment. Typically a pretty high monster level though, so you can drop something maybe. And you can drop things for you to sell for gold. I like him, he drops something. Also dropped a ruby. Alright, so now we're in the Crystalline Passage. We're not going to do on it, we're going to do that later. So what we're going to do is get the waypoint. <clears throat> and the waypoint is going to be immediately east or to the right. So you're actually going to go to the right. And to the left, of course, like in most maps of Diablo 2. Or to the west-facing tile of the entrance area, which is pointing this way. You're going to want to go that way to go to the exit. And the cave typically is straight ahead. So it's a tile facing about the same direction as 
that one. So as you can see, as you found the waypoint, I can't. that's going to prove useful later on. <clears throat> We're not going to do that yet because killing all those I monsters and pushing all the way through the river, which is a little difficult, I can't carry may as well do it when we can actually get experience from it. Don't need the resistances right now. We're going to need those for Nightmare for sure, though. Um, definitely going to need resistances. Name of the game is usually resistances, and crossing those Nightmare and Hell thresholds, resistances becomes this important stat because you lose 40 resistances and 70 resistances in Hell, 40 in Nightmare, 70 in Hell, and so it's really rough. <clears throat> You're going to want to make sure that you're able to keep up with those negative resistance stats so you don't get destroyed in one shot constantly, which will be very difficult to progress. <sighs> um, yeah, I'm making a YouTube video right now. This is a guided playthrough. Sorry, man. Um, I do reply to the chat, and I did say I do reply to questions, but I'm not constantly reading it. Kind of focusing on doing a good job for the video, but also like you know, making sure I'm not constantly responding to the chat because that would be a little weird. You should do it, man. Yeah, if you watch the YouTube video, Lone Wolf, uh, and you play along with it while you play the Barbarian, this uh, will be a great guided playthrough for you to do it. Whether you decide to do double swing or throw bar, we go over both approaches. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, sorry man for that. I, I do apologize. Um, I'm not always reading chat when I do things like this, but it's okay. Eh, I don't do any editing for the video anyway, man. I, I do a one take. That's how I do my videos. Same way Asmund Gold used to do it before he got someone to edit it for him and he became big enough just to hire an editor. Impossible. One take videos. That's all you get. No screwing off. Alright, here we go. I do some pretty good one take videos though, I think, if I might seem so myself. Oh my god. Okay, that's very scary right there. Um, yeah, don't. Don't engage. Don't engage. Don't engage. Alright, we found it. The left facing tile. We're out. Dang, extra fast Moon Lords. So, Moon Lords are probably going to be your most dangerous monster in Act 5. Be very careful. Those things will eat you up in a second. This is hardcore. That'd be a. Heart beating fast moment right there. You're gonna get some cardio. Or you're sitting down in your gaming chair. Or office chair, you know, whatever you prefer. Right here you go. Office chair versus gaming chair. The ultimate debate. Yeah, okay, so. Here we go. La -la 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 -la. So notice. And we found this west-facing area, left-facing area, and this entrance is pointing this way, so we're looking for west or left relative to that. Just follow my cursor here, here. So I found it very fast, and we're already in the frozen tundra. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that we are ready to finish Act 5 pretty soon here. The only thing we want to do is get access to the secret cow level so that we can power level to 25. Once we hit 25, we have some other options for leveling, including um, terror zones, bale, or just more cows, or eldritch, or pindle, eldritch and pindle. Actually, a lot of options for leveling, but I'll do a little bit of all of them, you know, to show you how it works. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> oh, 
Hopefully we're able to put to bed all the uh, nonsense that I can't play a barbarian. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know, probably not. So you can get the waypoint in here if you want. It's a pretty long crawl back if you happen to die to something like Ancients. So I guess I'll do that here. Just to show you guys. I'm gonna go east once again, just like how it all- The ice caves are all the same, so... All of the ice cave areas. This is straight ahead, does that mean we're hitting icy cellar? Maybe, this might not be where we want to go. See, we can kill these things, but there's like six of them running at us. Um, I don't know about that. We're also only level 21, so the game expects you to be about 25 now. So we're under leveled. One thing to note is that if you don't want to do this approach, it's also perfectly valid to uh, keep running Chaos Sanctuary over and over and Flare Jungle and the Traven Pool. And then if you're on single player, you can run Battle Maid Serena. And if you get a Battle Maid Serena next to the Waypoint Cross Bazaar, you can also get close to 25 doing that as well. And then you don't have to torture yourself and potentially be under level while you have to fight or deal with monsters in Act 5. But remember, for the most part, you're not fighting them. You're just passing them up. We got the waypoint though. Wasn't too hard. <clears throat> Good evening. The other advantage of doing that is that you can actually get your teleport staff. So this is what a speedrun would look like on a barb. Typically you'd get to about 23 and a half from uh, Battle Maid Serena in single player, uh, leveling up off of her at high player count, like players eight. And then you would kill Chaos. I can already and tell that I'll be your best friend in this And then what you would do camp. is once you hit 24, you would go, you would get the teleport staff, which would give you access to just teleport through act five. And then you can kill ancients for 25. And then you can continue on from there. However, this isn't single player. This is the most extreme environment possible, solo battle net. Because I do realize a lot of the people that want to know how to play a character solo are going to be doing it in battle net. Because a lot of people don't see any point to playing single player. Maybe you want to get items to trade, you know? Maybe you want to trade them, and you want to get rich. So that's the whole point here, right? It's not quite the same as a single player run through. I'm gonna kill one moon lord. I'm gonna enter the area summit. Why? I don't know. The guardians of Mount Ariad await. All right, so mercenary is somehow still alive, as you can see though. Thanks. Here's the ancients. Ancients do a lot of damage, um, and they get harder the farther you go through the game. At this point in the game, I'm gonna get more potions just in case. But I think our weapon damage will carry us pretty hard here. As it typically does on a throw bar by this point. Uh, fun fact, if you don't have a throw weapon by now, as you can see, you can buy a 16 to 29 weapon, which really isn't that much weaker than this weapon. Or, it's actually in some ways stronger than this. But this is our fast weapon for a left weapon slot, so that we can continue to attack quickly. So... Keep in mind, you can always buy better throw weapons at the vendor. I said it earlier, but I just want to show you guys. Um, in case for some reason you have no magic find on your gear, you just didn't find any from vendoring or off the ground. Um, Evening. From jewelry, like rings or amulets or anything. And, uh, yeah. So, it's good stuff. Now, no matter what, though, the mercenary is going to die here. You can kind of just sit here and attack him. You can keep the mercenary alive if you want. It is a it is an idea. As long as your mercenary has some kind of gear. I'm actually kind of surprised it's staying alive though. But you can heal him instead of yourself though, which is nice. 
Or you can just do this. And kite them out like this. As long as you have your stealth on, maybe some extra fast room lock on your boots. Or maybe a fast room lock GC like I have. And go faster. I don't know if I have enough potions, actually. Well, you we can get some AoE from this. Choking Gas Potion can kind of help you kill them as well. Also, like run away from them and just attack one of them at a time. So you can go like all the way over here. Then you have to like leap away from them. Problem is they're really together right now though, so it's probably not gonna happen. But if you kite them out most of the time, it's pretty good. Barb. Ancients is definitely a little bit of a struggle. Nothing crazy, but yeah. I'll just keep kiting them out. They don't heal, so you don't have to worry about that. They will eventually die. There's one. Already the throwing guy is gone, which means that I'm not going to take a lot of damage as long as I keep uh, kiting them out. Which probably means that I do have enough potions. <laughs> Maddox is gone! Yeah, what's up Nick Blame? How you doing? This is Barbarian Rags to Riches. Just like everything, it's gonna take a bit. It's... But also like most bosses, this is definitely where a double throw would have a little bit of an advantage. For sure. Oh my god. <laughs> Desync, nice. Well, that's why we have Jews, just in case. <clears throat> Talic is a pain in the ass, man. Oh, that's right. We're gonna run out of a. Uh... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Uh oh. That's right, we need to keep backup weapons. I forgot about that. Uh, I might have to do this fight again. I forgot about that on a throw barb. <laughs> we can't go back to town here! Well, professional streamer is professional, right? GG. Notice how long, though, it took to run out of some quantity. This weapon still has plenty of quantity, it's this one that's gonna run out, maybe. Let's see if I can, uh, create them out effectively, though. Need to hit him, bro. <laughs> We're gonna run out of 
Yeah. Probably. Maybe I can kill him with, like, Bash or something. If I can kill one of them, it's possible. I mean, I have another weapon. I just forgot to have the spare for that lower durability weapon. Because the high durability weapon will never run out. Wait, am I actually regenerating the quantity on my potion? Wait, what? I am. Hey, throw mastery is like giving me potion through mastery too. I didn't even know that. Hmm. Can we just like finish off Korlik or is that not a thing? Maybe we could just throw potions and kill them then. <sighs> yeah, look at that. It's replenishing my, uh... <laughs> you kill Korlik with a choking gas potion. Well, well, not anymore. Well, I can still kill him with the potions. And then maybe we can kill Talik with, like, Bash or something? If I don't die to him somehow. He's gonna kill me first, though. That's the problem. Wait, does this mean that I can also just, like, infinitely kill him like this? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I'm getting, like, a billion of potions to, like, chuck at him. <laughs> well, because of my mistake, I think I'm gonna try to kill him like this. This might work. So I run out of the potions. Yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> this is cute. <laughs> he forgot his gas mask. Feels bad, man. <laughs> uh. mm, let's see. Mm, do I have any attack rating at all with Bash? Oof. I'm gonna die. Having no weapons really sucks. We can do this. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Might just have enough materials. Can potion? Can a gas potion crit actually? Yeah, the throwing potions are also recharging based on the throw mastery. 
Because it's a throwing weapon. It's actually a very interesting mechanics lesson here. Yeah, see, but at some point though, we're gonna run out. Hmm. I think we can get like two ticks of the po poison if it like bring him back around. Yeah, there we go. Mm. Now, right now, I don't know what I feel like, but <laughs> this is really dumb. This is really dumb. <laughs> I think it would have been a shorter amount of time for me just to redo the fight at this point. Uh, feels bad, man. He's dying very slowly. Potions do damage, though. I'm kind of just continuing this, because I'm kind of curious to see if I can actually do this. Is this actually a thing I can do? No. There's no way, right? <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Tell them that you a fight with throwing potions. <laughs> it's actually really funny. <laughs> no. All right, we're gonna die. Ed. Yeah, there's no way we survive this. Yeah, we're gonna die. Oh, well, that kind of sucked, but that's okay. It was a very, uh, it was very instrumental. Good learning, uh, good learning lesson there. Learning lesson. Learning something. Okay. Uh, more like just remember that if you don't have a ton of quantity on your weapons, remember to keep some backups that have like high quantities so you can at least fire the other weapon. Cause if not, is shit gonna hurt? Shit's gonna hurt. All right, so now we have backups. Now it should be easy. But you know what sucks if you don't have a potion anymore. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken. So as you can see, at level twenty-one, it can be somewhat difficult to do this. Good afternoon. Also, especially if you don't keep the mercenary on hand, but the mercenary wouldn't have mattered. He got his ass handed to him a long time ago. That's alright, though. Alright. Also, we had a bit of a problem with potions, too. That's okay, though. <clears throat> See, this is one of the advantages to doing single player and then just power leveling like to a uh, level 25 and then doing this. It would be a lot easier. How may I be but that's okay. That's not a big deal. <clears throat> Dang, that's really... I got really close to just killing Korlik and Talik with just throwing potions. I can't believe that. It's actually really sick. It's sick, and yet... It's also sickening. Gas is probably like, you know... Gas is used only by the people like Joker. <laughs> I 
Only the only 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 villains use gas. That's that's just a that's just a really good afternoon. Really depraved way of killing the ancients, and you're trying to prove your <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, I'm pretty sure only the Nazis and uh, the Joker from Batman use uh, use gas. That's a that's a low blow, man. That's a low blow. <laughs> it's a low blow, man. Very low. All right. Anyway, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Hmm. I think we're fine now. Thanks. Mercenary, come over here, bro. Stop taking tons of damage. Is we're hitting them a lot more frequently when I have a uh, blessed aim, so it might be worth actually having blessed aim here. almost dead already though. Keeping the mercenary alive can be quite good as you can see there. Uh. Come on man. jumping so he doesn't get hit. Talok is actually more likely to die at this point. I've also noticed that he seems to have less physical resistance here. Yeah, this is all we had to do the first time. And now it's literally impossible to run out of quantity. Keep spare weapons for quantity. It takes so much longer without the mercenary, though. So much longer. <laughs> that was funny, though. Almost just killed him with the gas potion because of the replenishing quantity from throwing mastery. That's a. Uh, that's actually really funny. It's a cool thing to have in the video though. People might be like, what? You telling me I can kill ancients with a gas potion? Well, I mean, I guess if you had enough gas potions, I guess you could. Wow. You just need like four gas potions and then... It's actually pretty... Uh... Ow. Pretty balls. 
Yeah, one thing you can also do if you don't want this to be super painful is you can kind of check your damage on them. If it doesn't look like they're taking much damage per hit, it might have a lot of damage reduction. And that might be a sign that you should maybe reroll them. That also goes for later uh, difficulties as well. Of course, for later difficulties though, we have a different strat. So. And of course, with double swing, it would also still be somewhat painful here. But, like I said, there are strats. Yeah, strats I can that we can one. use. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, man. What the hell, dude? I can't wait till Talik is dead. This time it's Korlik with the resistance. I don't mind dealing with Korlik. Just sit here and attack Korlik. I'm not even gonna need the spare weapons this time. Jesus. Or the gas potion. Yeah, she should've just reloaded that guy said. Well, whatever. I guess there's multiple ways to do it. I was being stubborn because I wanted to try something. <laughs> Even I like to try to see if I can really push the boundaries of the game all the time. Even when I make a guide, I suppose. There you go. Long ass Ancients fight. Doesn't have to be that painful though. And now, you're ready to kill Bale and get to the cow level. Which has been our whole goal this whole time. Uh, yeah, we could do this. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Is throw a barb the best way to level a barb? Um, I really like it. It feels better than to uh, better to me than doing a lot of other approaches personally, but you can definitely do um, definitely do double swing, and that would be the other very prominent approach as well. So you can also do double swing. Faster for what? Bosses? Yes. Everything else? Not really. But yeah. I actually think that it's easier and you're less likely to die doing a double throw throughout most of the content. Double swing is not faster after the buffs is throw? Yeah. If you're looking at my stream time and you're saying that's slow, that's because this is a guided playthrough and I've just been giving a lot of guided commentary as I play through the game. Leap attack is also totally viable, yes. You know what else is viable? Warcry. Warcry is definitely still the meta though, once you hit like level 32, which we will be doing. Level 30, 32, something like that. Definitely over level a little bit normal. The hardest part of the game for the Barbarian by far is normal mode. Playing solo. <clears throat> You're just not super strong yet, you know. There's just not a lot going for you. Thanks. It, the Ancients fight, honestly, was the only thing that really seemed like it was at least somewhat tough until this point, so... Keep in mind that eh, it's not that bad. Yeah, Ancients will be a little bit of a struggle. So by the way, if you don't know, Worldstone is the same as Catacombs, so in Worldstone 2, if you want to find the waypoint, it's always going to be to the left, or a west-facing tile. Um, I can show you guys real quick. 
It's the same as the Catacombs 2 situation, so... It's always gonna be east or right on the Catacombs 2 waypoint. And then it's gonna be vice versa for the waypoint from the uh, World Stone 3. Only World Stone and Catacombs have that kind of a relationship from the waypoint. Catacombs 2 or World Stone 2. I should say. Um, first hardcore sork. Should I avoid an Oculus if I find one? Uh, I could use one on your offhand for finishing up bosses. Using one on your main hand until you get like comfortable with using energy shield, where you have max block, it can be dangerous. Yes. You don't have max block, and you don't have energy shield. And before you probably get some items, it's definitely a, Let's say that's like the first thing you find, I wouldn't use it. Okay, so... Mercenary down, not a big deal. is really, really, really sucks for this. All we have to do is kill Bale. I'm starting to wonder if on the barb though, maybe I should have shown the leveling to 25 approach in Chaos, because that might have been a little less painful, but it's okay. See, uh, on the single player, you really do have the luxury of getting to 25 pretty easy. Morning. But it's good for you to see some of the struggle, too, because... See, this class definitely is not the strongest starting out. Of course, once you get that fine item, it's a different story, but for that, definitely be a little rough. As a matter of fact, I might want to get some extra points into attack rating just so I can, like... The monsters are so much higher level than me, so it's not really an attack rating problem. It's more of a monster level problem, and so... Hitting things with either double swing or double throw at this point in the game at level 22 is really tough. Sweet. Huh. There you go. Our goal is to get War Cry as fast as possible to make this playthrough faster. You definitely could play through all the way of just throwing weapons or whatever else you want to do, like I did on my hardcore playthrough once. The faster you get things like, uh... Like, well, the faster you get some uh, AoE, and then some crushing blow a bit later on, we will actually be doing a lot better against bosses, but for now, it's kind of just how it is. Oh god, uh... I should have watched out for that. It's quite in his range, though. Oh. Death Lords. We're gonna have to kill these anyway, so that we can put some of the other waves outside. 
Maybe we'll kill wave four, I don't know. Come on. Go. Yeah, that hardcore throw bar playthrough took a lot longer than what I want to do for a guided bar playthrough, though. That was... That was brutal. Spawn them. Now, Act 4 and Act 5, you can kind of lead outside if you want. Um, Act 4, you could kill if you want. It's kind of up to you. As you can see, I can kill them kind of like I was doing with Infector in Act 4. I think I'm going to kill them, and then I'm going to lead Act 5 back here. Buddy. So if you guys don't know, Bale will laugh and spawn a new wave if ever there are zero monsters in the throne room. So all you need to do to get rid of the monsters in the throne room, you're good. It can be easier said than done though. Since I don't already have a teleport staff though and I'm still level 22 and can't teleport over the wall, I think the better approach is going to be to kill wave four. Afternoon. What's up, Zigzag? How you doing? And then we're gonna, of course, lead them out. Good afternoon. Gonna kill wave four. <clears throat> this level twenty-two barb here. Kill the elite there. Get him in like in a choke point, that's actually kind of nice. Yeah, it's going pretty good, Zigzog. How you doing, man? Alright, so as you can see, pretty easy stuff. Now all we gotta do is lead them out. There's probably still some Act 4 monsters back here, but I think we can handle it now. These dudes would be really hard to kill if they level 22. Um, I don't know of any run of any kind, speedrun or not, that actually kills us with the barb at this point in the game. I want some real torture. Yeah, try to try to face those head on. You'll do it. It might take a long time though. Okay, so after you do that, it's just time to kill Bill. Now, mercenary, we could get these for Bill if we want. Thanks. I think he's just gonna die anyway. Thanks. There's a lot of coal damage, and I am pretty sure I still have very little coal rosia. And we're gonna also want some just to unfreeze ourselves here and there. Do you have half freeze duration though? Okay, we're good. Mmm, kidoki. Bale's a lot of fun. No, he's not actually. It actually takes forever to kill him. I do have mana reach on one of my weapons, so that's kind of neat. I don't have to worry about mana that much anymore. 
half freeze duration is gonna save my ass here for sure. Hit a little chance to hit 42%. And he has block. Cows are so close, I know. Uh, so close, and yet. So far away. I just have to stay here and attack him. It's honestly the best approach. Ideally, you'd get a situation like this where you can kind of attack him and he doesn't do much to you. But he just cloned himself, which is bad, so. I want to speed up the fight a little bit. And cause him to unclone. Random crushing glow would have been nice. Yeah. And you could actually achieve that to some extent. Yes, warrior. But I don't even have the rune to make one of those, so yeah. I don't have an am rune, so. If I had an am tier, I could, uh. No, I don't, the Murk can't even wear that, never mind. See, we're only level 20 killing normal males, so keep that in mind. This is gonna be worse, maybe, than it would be on single player. You're definitely watching the worst case scenario here. Oh yeah, that's yeah. You're yeah. That's that's fun. So I have to kill Bill. Can't craft it, man. I don't have. But we're not that far in the game yet. <laughs> That's what I mean by the barb early on, like especially if you want to just push through and level in cows. Not easy. You could spend a lot of extra time farming out four. It's definitely something you can do. And then you'd be level 25, and that would be a lot better than 22 for sure. We are level 22 though, so it's not the, as bad as it could be. If you at least get to 24, you have battle orders and some things like that, so it's like a little bit easier. Those things matter for sure. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, right? So we're trying to, uh, we're trying to get those things, you know. That's what we're trying to do here. It, it's this part of the game, though, where if you're playing solo on Battle.net and you have to level to 25, it's really rough. This is why I definitely recommend if you're on Battle.net, like. Just join a cow run or something, join tomb runs if you don't want to torture yourself. But what I'm trying to do with Rags for Riches is show you that you don't have to depend on anything. And you can just do it yourself, and that's what I do. I mean, everyone knows there's tomb runs and trist runs and things like that. That it's possible to do that. But honestly, barb is painful. Especially on Battle.net, we're going to be a lower level by the time you get to all this content by the end of that month. And he cloned himself again. It's a lot safer. Honestly, double strike is like the same crap for the most part. If anything, I'm actually doing more damage than a double striker at the moment, for the most part. It's about the same. I have talked about double strike though throughout the run, and it's definitely a viable. It seems like a lot of barb players, uh, there, there's a, there's a, the barb community seems pretty split in my chats. Like some people like throw, and then some people would like prefer like double swing. So I mean, it, it goes either way. It's really bad. I mean, my hit rating is a thousand, 
But I have a 42% chance to hit him because I'm super under leveled compared to Bale. Problem is we need cows, because cows are actually like monsters that I can level up off of. Like I said, single player also makes it it's just it's so much easier just to power level with a high player account. At this point you at least have battle orders and things like that, and that really helps a lot. <clears throat> but this is how you do it, man. This is how this is how the barb works if you wanna if you wanna do solo B net, man. This is a much as good as it gets. Hello. Dude, throw is so good though. It's so good. My brothers will not have died in vain. Is that Bill on the other side now? I did say double swing, I believe, is slightly better though against bosses. It's not as much better as you might think, but it, it's better, for sure. Because the you don't have to hit them as often, and you have more poison damage on the Tau 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 Flail. You would particularly want to use a Tau 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 Flail, and you would want to um, have your other weapon most likely be uh, steel for the attack speed. And then you can do that as well. That would definitely be the other approach to what we're doing right now. Jumping over the ice cone, yep. Well, I also need to stack more cold res because this is taking forever. Of course it always does. Even on double swing it takes forever, but you know, one way or the other, we'll get it done. Yeah, the, the, the poison damage is a little more reliable, especially against bosses. So, believe it or not, we actually ran into that issue, but only on Ancients, because I forgot to get a spare weapon. Metallic was stone skin. I almost just gassed the I almost gassed the ancients <laughs> because of the stupid uh, throwing mastery. It replenishes my my gas potions as well. <laughs> and then I ended up just redoing it. Oh, it always gets better in nightmare once I get. We just need our we just need levels. This early part of the game here is like ugh. so painful. Doesn't matter what you do though. This is definitely something that would be slightly easier on double throw though for sure. That is not a that's not disputable. Cause like I said, 150 poison damage is more reliable because you just have to hit them once. Whereas 188 damage, yeah, sure, I can hit that hard. And I can hit him really fast multiple times. But the problem is that... He's like... <laughs> super hard to hit, though. The hit rate is so bad. That pillar, I think, is bugging me out. <laughs> um, we've been sitting completely still and just going over a lot of aspects of the game, so it's taken a while. My brothers will not have died in vain. This is not a this is not like a speedrun playthrough or something. This is a guided playthrough, so we're doing a uh, 
I like standing still and showing you guys maps and things like that constantly and kind of just like stopping and whatnot. But even if I didn't do all that, it's taken a little bit. It's like three to four hours or something. Probably just like playing the game. Alright, here we go. Oh wow. I didn't even know he had a clone out. Oh, whatever. My brothers will not you just sit you perfectly me. still and stop cloning yourself, please? Like, one second! Okay, I need more thawing potions. Down to seven cold res again, which means he's gonna freeze me for longer. So, fun fact. If you didn't already know... Thawing potions are... Give you 50 cold res. And it also influences how long you're cold for as well. So it's not just how much damage you take from cold. It's how long you're frozen. The same goes, by the way, for poison res, which also reduces your poison length. Fire and light damage are much more straightforward. Come on, baby! Get a normal bail at level 22. Come on. So that's nice. Alright, um, there you go. Bail is down. Some really tough fights there at the end, but... You can definitely do it like this. Without too many issues, just gonna have to do a lot of kiting. Have to know what waves to take out. Remember though, you can always overlevel in Act 4 and Act 3. And, and if you can change the player count, it's a lot simpler. Because then you can overlevel to like 25, even to 27 before you take on Act 5. And you can even level off of the monsters in Act 5. So, if that looks a little too tough for you, you can definitely do that approach as well. The pain, it's all gone. It's not true. The pain has just begun. So you have another ore rune here too, which is nice. Alright, so... <clears throat> it's not bad at all. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go farm the cows. It's the only thing we can level up off of unless you want to continue leveling up in Act 4 or Act 3 again, but then there's no point to doing what we just did. But those couple of levels in Players 1, just like that extra like three levels or uh, two and a half levels or whatever, that you could get in Act 4 and Act 3 take forever. So I think it even takes longer than that. But like I said, you know, you can try either way. There's a lot of ways to do things on the bar, but either way, it's going to be slow going. No matter what, if you're doing it solo anyway. So this is just par for the course. Like, even killing bosses in Nightmare and Hell will be slow. However, there's at least a more effective way to do it by the time you get to those bosses in Nightmare and Hell. So... Yeah, it's not quite as bad. Put it that way. Alright, so cows. You 
can actually kill cows like 10 times easier as you can see. That's just normal. If your plan is to farm cows, by the way, double throw performs a lot better than double swing. Double swing, you're just going to take a lot of damage. Typically, this is definitely a, a lot easier of an approach. And you can see, even with just my base attack rating off of my skills, we have... <clears throat> Pretty good amount here, and yeah, we'll be good. Look at that bar go! I know. Not only that, but double throw pierces through monsters. Overall, it's just a much better experience <clears throat> than what we just experienced for a moment there. Oh yeah, that's just painful stuff. But you know how it goes. Okay, so we're going to be farming cows for a while, this will come no surprise. We need at least 25 before we farm anything else in Act 5. Otherwise, we're not going to get any experience from that, and that's going to be slow. But cows are always good, because cows drop a lot of bases. They drop a lot of items that can generate gold, because they have plus skills. They generate a lot of jewelry and charms, or even upgrading your gear slightly. And they even generate a lot of runes. Runes that can help make our next tier of rune words that we're going to want fairly soon in Nightmare. My goodness. Uh, yeah, we're just going to sit on that point there. Still not going to be insanely fast cow farm. Um, a lot of other classes will farm this way faster, but at least by the time you get to here, you're like, oh man, okay. Now we can actually kill things somewhat. You're not going to get totally destroyed doing it. It's definitely like that sometimes. A three-socketed barb helm. Interesting. Okay, I might want to keep that for later. Three-socketed helms are good in general. The other thing we're going to want to look for in here are white swords, like broad swords or crystal swords. Possibly even white pole arms, because then we can do that in Nightmare. So we're going to want to look for some of those, because Larza can give them four sockets. That's really something we absolutely have to find in here. At least one white sword before we move on from cows. Even if we already hit 25. <clears throat> so right there is a white pull axe, which is all good and fine, but... Yeah, so you can put topazes in this? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Sure, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Normally, you don't want to sell an Act 1 normally. You want to sell an Act 5 or Act 4 because the money limit for selling a single item is increased. 20 to 25,000. Oops, that was an oops. I'm going to keep that white poleaxe in case we don't find anything better by the end of Nightmare. It's kind of a fail safe. But usually you'll find a four-socketed poleaxe somewhere in Nightmare. You can't actually find four-socketed bases of any kind in normal cows, but I can't. You can get them four sockets off of Larzuk as long as they have no sockets. And pretty much any base here that can get four sockets is guaranteed four sockets if you use the Larzuk quest on the base. It's kind of how normal cows works. <clears throat> Click those clickables, always good. Nice! Sick. Okay, so we are... Well, I guess we are going to need strength at some point, but I wouldn't worry about that yet. 
Let's see, you can respec into Warcry if you want. And then you can worry about that. Then. Or no, I can just keep putting points into Vitality. Notice that just by leveling up, my chance to hit the cow is increased by 2%. That's how important character level is. Character level is even more important than attack rating, especially early in the game for hitting monsters, because the monster level will be dropped relative to you. It's very important to note it when you are playing the Barbarian early in the game. It's more important than a lot of other classes. I mean, it might be something important to note for things later in the game, like Hickson against Ubers, but uh, for the most part, it's very important to maintain awareness of that. And so now we just gained a lot of power against the cows already, and we didn't do anything. If I put one point to increase speed to, I'll get faster. Next level, we're going to get a lot of power. And then at level 25, we'll get even more powerful. And then we'll hit the rest of it. Hopefully you guys are learning plenty of interesting tricks. If you're wondering if we're ever going to do double swing, you'd be right in, in thinking that we will at some point. However, when we show it off, we're going to show it off in a bit of a different context. So yeah, the cows are going to be a little slow going, but we are leveling. We already gained almost a whole level. Definitely not a fissure tool though, right? Definitely not. <clears throat> White pull arm can be good for later. I'd also want to find a force uh, a bow that can get four sockets, maybe. Except I wouldn't do that. I would never use the um, quest on that. Look at that. We get cold damage charms. There you go. Cold damage charms and attack rating might, which. You know, since we have Mana Leech right now, I think I'm just going to get attack rating on a ring. It's the first, like, attack rating ring I've found, so I'm going to use it. And that will actually increase our hit chance by 1%. And that's... Every 1% matters on this build, man. This is painfully slow. Oh, yeah. It's very, very slow. <laughs> so... Once we hit 25, some of the other farming options actually become quite a bit better. But if we're going to want our Crystal Sword for Spirit, we're going to have to stick it out to at least get a... Maybe not a Crystal Sword, but at least a Broadsword. Not going to be super... Uh... Oh my god! Wow, typical cow portal. Completely stacked with enemies. For Edge? Um, no, it should be three sockets. I was thinking four sockets for harmony. You might find a f uh, four socketed bow along the way. Something similar. I think I just sold items in Act 1 again. Well, whatever. That's a level zero skill. That's not going to sell for a lot. So at this point, you can be a little more discriminatory in what you pick up and keep for selling. Maybe only like more higher level metallic body armors, ones that sell for higher. You can kind of learn as you go along like which ones sell for more, which ones are exceptional versions which will sell for more automatically than normal versions of items, blah blah blah. Oh yeah, Lawbringer is really good. But the thing is, is Lawbringer might be possible in this run. We did get that in the Druid run, which is really sick. I don't know if we'll get it here, but yeah. 
It's possible. By the way, even a low quality crystal sword or a broadsword will work. Even a long sword would probably be okay for the bard because you have to put points in the decks anyway. Kind of explain why, but. Yeah, you kind of have to anyway. At this point, though, the only real goal is to be hitting that. Now, see, that's just a white glaive. No! What is an explosion? We don't want to stay in cows forever because it is a little slow to farm cows, but oh wow, um, that can be useful actually later on. That can be useful, it slows target, it's kind of nice. Um, later on when we fight bosses with concentrate and whatnot, that can actually be very nice. Cool, I found a uh, Kleglos. That's pretty neat actually. Dang, this belt's sick, but there's a problem. It only is a two-slot belt, we have a three-slot belt. Um, we can potentially upgrade that with runes later if we still have this crappy belt. So I'm actually going to keep it. You can actually upgrade, upgrade it using a pretty basic recipe, so that's a nice belt, though. It's got FHR, life, and a lot of Colras, and a decent amount of life. That's pretty good. You can farm bells that are similar in Act uh, 5 Nightmare, but... No, it is not hardcore. We already died to baby maggots, so... I think that was our only death, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, ba the baby maggots got us, don't ask. That was a blooper for sure. Okay, here we go. Bloopers do happen in these videos sometimes. It is natural. Once we hit 24, we're gonna get a power spike. I want a power spike! I do, I do, I do. Alright, so the most important things to get at 24, if you didn't save enough points or otherwise, are gonna be Frenzy and Battle Orders. You can also get increased speed. Don't think I saved the right amount of points, just barely. Um, actually, no, we might have saved the right amount of points, okay. Uh, but until then, though, it's a it's a slog. Oh, that's a grim wand. We can have uh, necro skills. Oh yeah, that's really good. Let's make sure to sell that in Act Five. Gold. Gold is good. Now we don't do our guides on uh, hardcore. This is a uh, guided playthrough. This is barbarian rags to riches. Uh, if you haven't seen my Rags for Witches series on YouTube, I highly recommend it. We already have all six other classes done. You can learn how to go from nothing to rich on any class. What? A wither string? Naughty. That's pretty useless. That is useless, but it's funny that we found that. <laughs> Unlike the Clegglaw's Blows, which is actually useful. Wow! Picking up those chip gems, they can come in handy later. I think as painful as this is, it's not nearly as painful as a pacifist run, so... It can be a lot worse. Yeah, we don't want knockback, um, not at the moment. Clegwa's gloves is not useful right now. It will be useful later, though. It's actually really cool to get an item that slows target. That's, a uh, not many of those. There's, you know, there's 
couple of mercenary weapons too that are good for that, which you might find. If you don't, there's the white crystal sword. Hallelujah. Alright, so that means we can get out of here once we hit 25. And then we're going to use the other methods to level up. Let's see what the terror zone is actually. Probably trash. Our best shot at leveling up will actually be doing Eldritch and Shank Impossible. once we hit 25, and I, I did mention that already, but just giving you guys a heads up. That's typically how this goes. Once you pick up enough items to sell, though, you can definitely do that. Alright, so one white crystal sword is very good. Um, finding a second one is also not bad. Because uh, then we can get double spirit war cry, which is actually pretty nice. Afternoon. Something that only the barb can do, at least the way that he can do it. You can also get double spirit on a um, paladin, which you may have seen from paladin rags to riches. You know that's a pretty common... Uh, common approach there okay so got a lot of gold off of that it's pretty sick area plateau right now so. salutations see we could level up by doing terror zones it is something we could do if we wanted to strangely enough Yes, Strangely enough, Terror Zones, which now are also on single player, wouldn't be that bad in a lot of Barb things, because Barb doesn't necessarily, like, tear through this density crazy fast on any version of any build. So, like, getting just a bunch of elites that are higher level, that keep up with your level, aren't bad. So even, like, normal Terror Zones wouldn't be terrible, I don't think. Only on this class, though. I'd probably- I'd, I wouldn't do it on any other class. Here's a solo playthrough. It's already 11 o'clock, seriously? Damn. Playing the bar, man. Time flies. Maybe it's the bar that stands still. Watching the time fly. Is the time revolve around me? Trident! Okay, so. That is one Karen. As you can see, slow. Very slow. It was a long time. This is a guided playthrough, so I do a lot of stopping and explaining and just taking it slow just to explain things. But yeah. <clears throat> Are we 24 yet, by the way? No! Not quite. Yeah, I think some people might think this is like a speedrun or something. It's not. Do you see a timer? Where's the timer? There's a reason why I don't have a timer for this, because it's not... The timer would serve no purpose for the guided playthrough we're putting on YouTube. It's meant to be for players of all um, calibers just trying to learn the game. So, yeah, a, a timer would serve absolutely no purpose here. Time flies and you're having fun. Oh, it's true. No speedruns. Um, I think Bill was like seven minutes, yeah. You know? It was a little slow. Understandably, of course. You can also get your three socketed bow, by the way. And normal cows. Normal cows drops a lot of good bases. Like I said, is it the barb? Is it is it time flying or the barb standing still? I don't know. Good 
Let's see. How many minutes are we into the video already? Uh, Not in town. Yeah, that's about right. So this is about normally when um, a lot of classes... Somewhere between this time and an hour from now is when classes are ready to go to Nightmare, typically. And as you can see, we are <laughs> not even 25 yet. And we want higher than that to go to Nightmare. So, already you can see the slowness at work here. And just got two more percent chance to hit the cows, we got a rancid gas potion, which is actually insane. I think this might actually help us a bit. So we've been looking for this. This is the next upgrade of a gas potion. I know gas potions, the only time you ever care about gas potions <laughs> pretty much is on a solo barb. <laughs> I wish I was joking, but it's true. Let's see, how much damage do I do? Uh, yeah, gives you some AoE. Might be use, worth using the gas potions here, especially with throw mastery. There we go. Like I said, massive power spike at 24. But I didn't expect to find the rancid gas potion though. That's good. So, gas potion, as you can see, is very useful. Very useful here. Brace your inner joker. Put on the gas mask and watch the cows. Not have a good time. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's pretty much the only class, like I said, you even care about gas potions at all. Well, you're gonna care about gas potions until you get more AOE in the form of a, a war cry for sure. That's not good. You check all the throwing weapons still, of course. But... Alright, so now we can get battle orders, increased speed, which is kind of big. Also, we have that one to masteries, so that's making us go faster. And a big one, which is frenzy. And you might be thinking, what? Frenzy? On a throw barb? What does frenzy do for a throw barb? Well. Don't worry. I have to show you. So. As you can see there, it's actually increasing our attack speed. So it's making us stronger. So we can charge up with Frenzy and attack the monsters. Also, it just makes us run faster in general. Once we uh, start doing Nightmare, I'll use the Teleport Staff. Right now, I'd rather have the Rancid Gas Potion, though. Zoomies, indeed. And now, it's finally kind of worth it to have bad orders. And as you can see, my health is actually quite nice now. I have some more mana. Why not? Oh, you know, I didn't regenerate the potion properly. I'm supposed to sell it to the vendor. F. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Notice, though, we've only lost three potions so far. Oh, God. I almost died. That's a mistake. Gas potions, OP. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's not lose that on accident there. That'd be bad. It's actually uh, speeding us up quite a bit here. So, throw barb actually buffs throwing potions as well, so using this approach is very sensible in this. 
But even if you're still using the other approach, you'd probably still use them as well, so it wouldn't matter. Does a lot of damage! At this point in the game. What is going on? Well... Let's see... Okay. Uh, S, D, Z, the most for you. Forgot about Leap, my man. potions are insane. Damn. It's a pretty cruel way to kill cows, but unfortunately I don't have much of a choice if I want to go remotely fast here. Do they have a starter class for D4? I'm not certain yet, man. Gotta see what I'm even doing, honestly. I'll worry about D4 when it gets closer to D4. There's a lot of other stuff going on before D4. It's not the only thing going on in the next, you know, two plus months, so. There's a lot of fun things. I like Sorkin Rogue quite a bit, though. Wait, Nightbot? Nightbot enforces that? What? No. 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 I'm sorry, Omer, it's enforcer, I don't know. That's weird. Is that like something people typically use in those contexts? I guess so, maybe. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're just talking about the rancid gas potions, Jesus. <laughs> uh, it's actually an enforcement action. Interesting. Man, you can allow it. It's not. No one's talking about that. <laughs> Jesus. Alright, anyway. Boy! <laughs> That's okay, I know what you're saying. It's because of 11 year olds that we can't have nice things, you know? I'm sure people spam it in Call of Duty all the time. You're just talking about a type of gas, I guess. And, well, you know, there's like historical shit there, and sometimes people will like, you know, I don't have to explain it anymore. But sometimes people use it in a bad context, but that's not what he's talking about. Anyway, apparently, uh, they have a lot of uh, they have a lot of trigger words apparently. We'll go on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of turns. Like, a lot of turns. That's good, because I don't have any nephrons, so maybe we, uh... Use this to make the nephrons. Rancid health push? Uh, rancid potion, the new blizzard spark. Not quite, but, you know, it's, uh... I guess I can have a backup there. It's good enough, though. I 
I mean, to be fair, with throw mastery, I'll never run out pretty much. Only have to regenerate it once a run. Okay, here we go. Another crystal sword. Awesome. Okay, uh, that's good. We'll, we'll we'll keep that on hand. Okay, we're almost 25, which means at this point, if we wanted to, we can use faster methods of leveling. And ideally, that would probably be Eldritch Pendle at the moment for this character, so that's what we're gonna do. Put on all your magic find and do Eldritch and Pendle. So we're almost 25, fun stuff. We have 35 second bow. <laughs> and this is how we live our life, like this. <laughs> Rancid Potion Barbarian. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been talking about potions since the beginning of this playthrough. Another Kleglaz? What? Come on, at least give us a chance for now. Are you kidding me? Well, you can't use two of them, so we're not going to pick that one up, but that is interesting. Also, as you might find, uh, sets down sell very well. A flail. Um, that can save us some time farming some flails later. And that's why I didn't farm them, because you can find them on the ground. Slam it. Yeah, I'm gonna slam it, alright. I'm gonna slam it in the ground. I don't have any, uh. I don't have any of those, man. Feels extra bad, man. Mm, this is some interesting stuff, I would say for sure. Uh, yep. Oh, that's disgusting. You get really good magic fine amulets at this point. Uh, we'll save that in case you run out, but as you, look at our quantities, we still have 23. That's how OP this is. Shit, never runs out, man. It never runs out. Alright, let's go to later act so we can... And we are 25 now, which means... Pretty much have everything you could possibly want. You can even get Iron Skin if you want, but I wouldn't do that. You could get Battle Orders for slightly longer bow. I don't actually know what we want to do at this point. We might get slightly longer bow, actually. Maybe put a point into... Well, actually, maybe we can skill Battle Cry at this point. That might be worth it here. It might be worth it. <clears throat> so, Battle Cry. You might be wondering, why would Battle Cry be worth it? Well, it reduces enemy defense. <clears throat> Just makes it even easier for us to hit them. I'm trying to think of what will be worth it until we get War Cry. I mean, that'll be worth it. You, you can, of course, put more points in a throw mastery and things like that, but. Not gonna get, <clears throat> like, insane returns on that. Not really. Not really. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. Oh no. <coughs> okay. Here we go. Selling him an act four is fun. Gold! We need that gold later, so keep stocking it up.
I'm trying to go for uh, magic armors and things like that. <laughs> Yeah, so little that a lot of people know, but rancid gas potions or gas potions are good pretty much all the way up to normal if you can get the rancid one. But we won't need them after that anyway, because we're going to do something that's a lot more effective. We don't even really need gas potions, but like, they're pretty useful, let's be honest. Especially the throw bar, because you just get infinite use. <clears throat> I mean, we almost killed Ancients with a choking gas potion. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, nice. <clears throat> Talok was really tanky. That, that Talok was really tanky. After this Kauron, um, yeah, I'll, I'll get some water real quick and I'll be right back. socketed flail there you go already been spared a little bit of farming just by finding one never had to farm for those ever time is farming far from those for those can be painful just one of those impossible advantages of going through we mentioned a few already though also you know mentioned some of the disadvantages mostly bosses Boss fights would be the disadvantages. Alright, so. We have our minimum bases. Looking pretty good on that front. I think we're, uh. Looking pretty good to go here. All right, and so then we're gonna want some other things. No. So cows, we could continue to do cows, but cows is kind of slow in this character. We might go back to it. Now that we're 25 though, we can actually level up and we can actually get experience in Act 5. So our options have broadened a bit. And remember, you can also do this by farming normal Act 4 and Act 3, but that takes a really long time. So it's really up to you if you want to do that. At least on a barb it takes, I mean, it already takes a long time on most classes, but it would take a long time on this class for sure. <clears throat> okay, anyway. See, we can go do Eldritch and Shank, and that's going to be pretty much our home for the while here. They are more poison resistant than the cows, though. So you're pretty much just going to have to kill them with brute force, which we can do. I recommend because of slower loads into the game on D2R. Kind of recommend killing both Endel and Eldritch because it'll be a little faster to do that on average. Not a lot, but a little bit. I'll put that to good use. Sure, I'll use that for now. Town. It's got DR. So now that we're 25, though. You can just power farm Eldritch right there. And I actually forgot for a second that we actually need to do something else first. Because Nilothok is still in town and that's a... That's a no-no. It's very bad. Let me see if I can actually uh, somewhat increase our hit rating against those monsters as well. Okay, so... Honestly, once you hit 25, I just recommend if you're doing it the way I'm doing it... 
leveling up at the, like this to go do Anya. Now, I shouldn't be using my potion right now. I should be putting that away. And this is after the first time to actually uh, break out the teleport stuff. You're going to want to keep on teleport. Now, keep in mind, teleporting is very expensive using charges. Don't just teleport willy-nilly. You can abuse it a little bit, but you want to be careful how much you abuse it. Teleporting out of thick situations is good. Remember, you can also use Frenzy to kind of charge up for a bit. <clears throat> Trying to find the straight, of straight ahead here. Alright, found the frozen river. Found the area that is right of the waypoint, or east of the waypoint, and straight ahead from the entrance of Crystalline Passage. Once you hit 25, we can do this a bit easier, because we can actually get experience in here, so that's kind of nice. You don't have to wait that long to do this, but... <clears throat> kind of recommend it, though. Healing the mercenary over and over. Use of that shift post and click, it's gonna be very useful. Alright, so you teleported all the way down, you just kinda have to follow the river all the way down. But I skipped some uh, stages by using the teleport staff over the wall. Over walls is definitely the most useful part of the teleport staff. Okay, mercenary is gonna take some hits for us, because we're a little higher of a level. And we're getting some good experience off of Frozen Stone. One of the reasons why I wanted to wait to do this. And it's not super slow experience either. You can even get I can't carry a flawless emerald there, which is nice. Well, if we end up, end up trapped now, I can just use the teleport stuff. Notice though, those charges don't replenish, unlike uh, our throw charges. So, you're gonna have to sink a lot of gold in to make use of those. Okay. And now we can save Anya, finally. <clears throat> One of those nightmare prep things that you definitely are gonna have to do. So this plant we're trying to farm to a higher level, maybe get more items and prepare for nightmare. So there I just straight up repaired the staff. Using Oort runes and chip gems later on, you can also repair charges in the staff, so so every Oort rune, I mean every rune you find at this point you should be picking up, but um, every Oort rune is pretty big. So, Nullifock. I am overburdened. Do this. Ready to increase stamina, that's kind of cool. Yes. I could use this instead of the fire is, but I do need fire is, so I think it's fine. Free stamina is also not very useful. These guys are pretty resistant to poison damage, so I don't think using the rancid gas potion will really help here. Good try though. Okay. If you're going double throw, by the way, I don't recommend farming Pendleskin uh, because he'll knock you back and it's actually going to be significantly harder. But if you're doing this approach, it's not bad. <clears throat> I'm actually going to put the staff away for now because we don't need it. 
And we'll use the potion. Okay. Um, okay, so we're 25. Can I help you? Takes a pretty long time, but as you can see, we can do both Eldritch and Pindle. Uh, we have our socket quest, which we are almost certainly going to use on one of the crystal swords to make it four sockets. You can get it from normal cows or from a normal monster in, like, river. You can definitely check uh, the socket resources and know exactly what monsters will drop a sword that will get four sockets but not six sockets from Larzak. And that's the challenge, is that a lot of monsters, even in normal later on, uh, will only give you a six socket crystal sword if you Larzak socket it. So you gotta make sure you really, um, you're very careful with that, or you can end up wasting a very important quest that will uh, make it quite a bit tougher to move on. So, at any rate, though, as you can see, it's pretty much it. So now, it's a few more farms and some other things that we have to do. Hello. As you can see our res is quite a bit higher now. <clears throat> Eat the res scroll, that's good. Gonna need even more res though, and we will get it, so that's not much of a problem in that regard. So you see throwing spears here. Throwing spears have a lot of damage. Um, so much damage, in fact. They're pretty nice. I think... You could sacrifice maybe some of the attack speed here again. This is pretty fast. It's not insanely fast though. Just to get something that's a bit stronger. So here's an example where I'm just gonna straight up buy a enhanced damage spear from the vendors to show you guys that you don't have to get lucky on your spawns at all. And if you want, you can just use one of these. By the time you get to Act 5, Anya has some pretty nice choices. Putting those throwing spears, so. There you go. Eldritch is pretty easy to kill, and easy stuff. Killing it about as fast as you would with double throw, or double swing, maybe a little faster. Use the potion. Go a little faster than that. Coward's hiding place. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything against Spindle Skin. That's what I thought. We're into gas potions. Booty against. No. Be sure to pick up all those flawless gems and to keep them for the most part. You're gonna want them. So, as you can see, just doing Eldritch and Pendle over and over will actually level you pretty fast. If you are doing um, single player, continue to level elsewhere. It might be easier with higher player count. You can even do Terror Zones. Maybe I'll do one Terror Zone on this character. I've never done a Terror Zone on Rax Riches. What's the Terror Zone right now? Is it even any good? What the? Not really needed to do, but let's say I wanted to level. I think I might do it once I hit 30. I can't carry because my level relative to Eldritch will drop a little bit. But Eldritch is still a very high level, so. Because I will want a couple. I think I'm gonna want 32 Cowards or so. Kinda of just how it is. You're gonna want like a, you're gonna want a few levels before. Yeah, yeah, come on, guys. Yeah, I think I was right to buy that. See, this throwing a spear is a pretty fast weapon, and that's what I was thinking of when I was putting all those points into decks. So you can see it's 65 dex requirement. I was already kind of preempting that though. Oh, look at that, res and res. So we're already. Getting a little bit more resistance, preparing for later stages of the game. That's good. It's a lot better than nine fire is, that's for sure. What do you need? So any kind of resistance we're gonna keep. Um, and I guess we'll just rebuy the gas potion. 
Why not? <sighs> All right, so as you can see, leveling pretty fast at the moment. <clears throat> Maybe we'll do Terra Zones once we hit 30 or something. Might be better for solo gameplay, because I don't have a player account, so... Might want to do that. I don't want the player account for this. Gotta show what to do in most extreme circumstances, otherwise... A lot of people ain't gonna know what to do. Another crystal sword, but see, that one was a trap one, most likely. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe that one's fine. Uh, a coward's hiding place. Really? How much higher level are they? Jesus. Yeah, they're only 66% chance. Yeah, see, that's another reason why you can't farm them too early on, because you just won't be able to hit them. It's straight up painful. It is just straight painful. Alright, let's continue. So there's our barbarian here. Mm, I can sell that. So yeah, this part's going to be a little slow in the guide here. It's going to require some leveling up. It's one of those farms that you need to do. Kind of like cows and kind of like countess. Any other farms you can potentially do before it. Barb is very slow and normal. I am hmm, another one. A mall? From Larzuk? Three sockets and normal? Oh, a helm. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I believe you need to be a nightmare, though, and you need to be a higher level. Mercenary's damage is quite useful for this farm, actually. I can't care more. I wonder if the Terra Zone is actually, uh, let's see. Ugh, oh, a coward's hiding place. Do that. I can check terrorized, I guess. I will check terrorize. So unfortunately making progress through the game is going to be very slow right now because not only do we have to do all this stuff to prepare for Nightmare, but then we also have to farm Countess and Nightmare a lot. And that's just one of the uh, one of the things that the Barbarian you just can't avoid. Um, 
can maybe somewhat avoid it with some other classes, but it's really hard to avoid with this. No, he wasn't saying Charcy, he's saying Larzak. Larzak sells through soccer and crimes. I can't carry you. Silly, silly. Defense. Old fine. That sucks. I have as much magic find as I can have at the moment, though. Don't have that much. I have a little bit on an amulet, and then I also have a bit more here. Hello. I think on the druid rags for riches run, you're definitely way more lucky with uh, magic find items. So. Afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Level twenty seven, I believe. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I'm just gonna keep putting stats into like Dex and Vitality, it's gonna try to help my hit rating a tiny bit. I make it a little bit faster. Ah, this will make it faster though for sure. That's a good one. Um, once we hit 28, I guess we can start holding points though for 30 if you want. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. We can get a little more bad orders if you want. Not like it will matter here though. Coward's hiding place. One thing to note is that you could be buffing constantly if you want. Their yeah, chance to hit them is improving. Them. But normal Pendle is a very high level monster. He's resistant to dying like this. Um, rags to riches solo players one sorceress start guided playthrough Good afternoon. so you can what are you trying to do get rich as fast as possible sorceress is always the fastest right because she has teleport so your service. um i would re I either watch mine or listen to it while you're playing a sorceress to get better at playing the game or you can also look at the Maxwell Sorceress leveling guide, yeah. Uh, mine's a video though, so it's a guided playthrough. I personally would find a guided playthrough a little more helpful for leveling, but... I don't know. Like, written guides are insanely good for, like, maxing out those flaking builds and knowing how to build a character properly so that you can use it correctly. They're also really good for a lot of resources and a lot of detailed information. Trying to understand more about the game, like to know like what uniques and sets are valuable, how valuable are they, you know, things like that are important. Or you know, magic items, stuff like that. When it comes to like a, a leveling guide, I personally would say video is just more helpful in general. But it's not like the Maxwell leveling guides are bad; they're fine. They're all made by Teo, professional D2 speedrunner. They'll get you where you want to go. Hey, look at that. A throwing spear. That could be nice. Um, yeah, so you can do either way. Yeah, you can just do either way. How about you look at both of them and then you can see. Oh, we're in Blood Moor Den of Evil. Are you serious? Well. This has no ED. Man, that's so disappointing. If this had enhanced damage, this would be better than that. Afternoon. Yeah, so strangely enough, blue items can sometimes be better than rare items, and that's something I mentioned earlier. Uh, I had to check those damage values. 
dead of evil. Hit him. I am overburdened. Not that hard to hit, I know. Something like a blue balance knife is with uh, normal ED isn't gonna cut it. This totally reminds me of when I did throw barb on the hardcore run though. I was I was pretty sick. fight was so funny though. <laughs> Dude, Talok was like stone skin, like what the heck? Should have just re-rolled him. I was trying to be stubborn uh, though. A coward's I don't know if you guys watch like Macro Bioboy do the Ancients fight on this passive, but it's the same thing. He's being stubborn with the stats. That's that that can happen if you're stubborn. Makes it a lot harder to do things. A battle axe! What is this? Oh wow. <laughs> Time to spec whirlwind Kappa. Does some damage. Wouldn't get you very far though. I don't know if you can, can get up for a socket at uh maybe? It's a pretty high level area. Uh, Chieftain Battle Axe drop, though. Uh. So one of the advantages of doing Eldritch and Shank over cows, besides just the fact that it's going to level this character faster, is that you're also more likely to get magic, rare, uh, set, and unique items. Whereas the cows are more likely to get things like charm upgrades. And things of that nature. Um, cool. All we need is a 20 FCR wand, at least temporarily. Don't have that yet. What are my optimism levels for D4? Looking solid, man. Like a pretty good game. Mark has 700 defensive shout. A coward's hiding place. This might make it go a little faster, actually. You know what's sad is that the Blizzard Sork already by now would just be blizzarding them to death and they would just die instantly. I can't carry anymore. But that is the truth of the can't carry anymore. solo starting bar versus sorceress or something. Melee is supposed to be tankier, but it's supposed to do a lot less damage. That was their idea of the class fantasy here, so there you go. I can't use that yet. Um, that's not bad actually. It has life, it has Nova, it has FHR, it has Dulras. I want to keep that for a temp. 
Mercenary could use that. Afternoon. All right, we're gonna hit level twenty-eight here soon. Sound better than it was. I like how the TZ right now is so bad. You know, honestly, though, as a normal TZ, that might be fun. Just have to kill some monsters. Already. <laughs> what the fuck? This is so slow. Already, he says. Hmm, that is actually kind of nice. Uh, I think we're good on like the one, two dexterity things. Yeah. How about we go? That mana is going to be nice later too, but it even has one maximum damage right now. That's going to be really good for Warcry actually. That's really what you need, is you need mana. From other sources. It's super painful. That's what a battle is plus like a mana charm. It's actually pretty big. Work right. And then you go use that. Okay. It's really about making use of everything. That's that's really the key. Yeah, we almost have 700 health. That's the absurdity of the barbarian. Sure. You know we don't do much damage, but. <clears throat> I will never die from anything in normal mode ever. I'm only 28. Uh, so, you know, Barbarian playthrough on hardcore is really not that painful. I can't care anymore. Well, see, here's the problem. Okay, you can't grind a 30 on Eldritch unless you grind a 25 in Act 4 and Act 3. That's that's the problem. No, I actually did. I almost killed him with potions, but I had more. Remember, throw mastery though, Mirage. Throw mastery is OP, so you can actually do ancients just fine. Okay. Okay, let's set the, let's set the record straight. But I didn't run out the first time though because I forgot to get my backup gems. Using backups is definitely advised there. I can't carry. Yeah, see, I have to grind to 25, and remember, this is solo B net mirage, so I can't like change the player count. So grinding to 25 in Act Four and Act Three, now that's painful. That is so painful, man. That takes so long. Kinda wanted to show people in the video how to do a push if they wanted to, you know. Not saying that that's gonna work for everyone, or if everyone's gonna like that, but... I am overburdened. I wanted to show how to get through it a little faster than that, jeez. 
Barb is always a always a fun class though before you uh Salutations. start getting some AoE and other stuff. But potions potions have been a savior. Potions been destroying the cows and whatnot, so I like how you mentioned that though, because it actually happened. I ran out of potions the first time I tried to uh, not potions, I ran out of uh, javelins. Which made me run out of potions. First time I did Ancients. I want a lot of potions though. Yeah, yeah there's too much poison for this for it to matter, honestly. Seven. Cold res. Being honest, I will never use that. <clears throat> it's too low. It's almost twenty eight and a half. Coward's hiding place. So once you hit a minimum of thirty, you can respec if you want. But you can also get two more levels so that you can ensure you can get all the level 30 skills that you want. That's also not a bad idea. What do you, what do you want on Mosaic Strike? Uh, if you're mostly using Phoenix Strike, Phoenix Strike. If you're using another one, you want Claws of Thunder. Um, you might also want Weapon Block, though. Kick W, kick W. Bro, oh, save me. Save me from this endless barbarian doom. Yeah, it could be worse, I guess. I even put a lot of points in a deck still, and I still have so much. Am I doing a? F uh, it's not one for each difficulty per se. It's just like Coward's hiding place. probably gonna be a three parter no matter what. Then we're gonna just max out the video size pretty much. <laughs> for Why not? Okay. There's a rare mall. You know? Something. <clears throat> Afternoon. <laughs> Apologize for being that guy. By the way, exclamation uh, D4 thoughts if you want to see them. I honestly don't know, man. I gotta try more of the late game. Once we try the totality of D4, or at least a lot of D4, I think we can make a, you know, a more honest and sound judgment, you know. But so far the game has a solid foundation, and I see it doing some big things. Afternoon. Can't believe I got my mercenary killed, Jesus. What is this world coming to? Ugh, a coward's hiding. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, a circlet and a ring. Yeah, that's that could be good actually. Impossible. Maybe we'll get some magic flying and I can stack more in that for a bit. Maybe not though. No, I wonder if I should use one of my two socketers. Get more magic fun. Probably not though. Hey, there's some res. It's not bad. Not great, but not bad. As far as level 33 by then. Take it. Woo! 
Ooh, hello. Damn. All right. Um, yeah, I'll use that when I hit 31. That's nice. So what you see here is a quadres circlet. DR, MDR, and life. That's not bad. I'll take it. So even if I don't want to use it, that'd be really nice on a mercenary for now. That's a good find. Way better than anything I have for the mercenary, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, but I'm gonna be war cry by the time I use that ring for poison damage. I don't even know if I'll use that ring. That ring's kind of disappointing. We yeah, got like a GG fast recast rate ring. That's a different story. That's a crazy circlet for normal. Yeah, it is. And that's coward's hiding place. All power spikes. Once again, one of the advantages of farming Pendle and Eldritch is that you're likely to farm. No, we farm cows a throw and rain said gas potions and Mirage gets a 25. Because I didn't want to stomach doing like, I don't know, 15 painfully slow chaos runs or whatever it would have taken. Maybe not that many, but at least 10. Uh, that would have been silly. But you can do that too. If you don't if you don't even want to fight Bill like that and stuff, you can do it this way. But if you do everything I do here, you can do it this way too. You know, it's not a, it's not like you have to do it one way or the other. There's uh there's options, and that's why in all of my videos I give you guys options. I talk about the other options, even if I don't play them. Are Cinder Charms worth more than High Runes on Sockdor? Because of botting? That wouldn't surprise me much. Hey, that's pretty sick actually. That's some real weapon damage on the Merc. But he's too low of a level to use it. It's not bad. Uh... I use that. Ooh, I just keep a lot of things that we could use, maybe use, you never know, right? I think I'm gonna want this once I get to Nightmare anyway. Some of this other crap is trash. No, oh, how it is, though. Ah, at this point, that's garbage. I'll we'll put some uh, weapons on the ground. I gotta, 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 gotta clean the stash a little bit here and there. Too many item possibilities. Alright, level 29. That is getting closer. Which means that we can get that. And we'll get Battle Command and Natural Resistance next level. Not gonna respec into War Cry yet. But we will. Is something that will happen soon. Um, if you get a good potion, but you need to find a, a rancid gas potion in Act 5 and then go back and kill the flares. Which isn't gonna work if you, uh,. If you're leveling in Act 3 and Act 4 to level 25. I found Rancid Gas Potion and Cows, and then the, I found a bunch of them, and then I used one to kill the cows. Potion Strat actually works with Throw pretty well. It's too bad you came a little too late to see that. Probably not going back to Cows. Because at this point I have my bases and I have... Uh, cows is a little slow at the 
for leveling. It's not, there's, there are no elites really. It's a little so. Howard's hiding place. Was it worth? Let's hold a 3 maximum damage, 16 attack rating, and 17. Some small charm for the jaw. Sounds about right to me, honestly. It's a really good charm. He knocked off, man. I didn't actually, and no one's told me what they are yet, a million. I don't know, you want to give me like a summary or something of like what updates you've seen? Hello. I'm gonna play it most likely, but you know. I haven't not played it yet, so I mean, there, there's always a chance it could take a season off of that, but people really like my PD2 content. The strong community with that game. I don't see myself not doing it. What the heck, man? What the heck? This is also a great time, by the way, to farm up all of these jews and stuff. Keep picking up rare armors, items that can have plus skills. I've been doing that this whole time. Don't stop doing it. It's not ingrained into your skull by now. Well, it should be. Can I help you? Wait, they made an Act 4 mercenary? They actually did one. What the heck? That's crazy. They actually made an Act 4 mercenary. <laughs> Holy crap. Hey, what? What is that second part? I don't understand it. Huh? They actually made an Act 4 mercenary on uh, PD2, that's interesting. Oh nice, yeah that's cool, so it's like in the image of Tyrael, that kind of makes sense. It's like a little mini angel mercenary. Okay, okay. So what's this whole business with Rathma and D-clone with Hirons? He didn't really go, and that's very big, I, I don't really understand that at all. That is interesting, though. Oh, that's really cool, actually. I think that's. I think those are some cool approaches. Wait, you can just straight up get Sanctuary War now from a mercenary? What? Damn, that's gonna make magic builds even stronger for starting out. Jeez, they already were strong. Highest difficulty? Wait, so you can put it. You can sacrifice Hirons to make the fight even harder? I am overburdened. Does that mean it's gonna make it easier for the people not doing that? <laughs> That's what I would do. If you have two difficulties, make it a little easier for everyone else then. Or just make it depending on the Hirons, it gets tougher, you know? It's actually a pretty cool system that there's like now some kind of a sliding skill for the difficulty of a D-clone. I think that's a good system actually for Project Diablo 2. For those that are watching this guide and wondering what we're talking about, we're talking about a Diablo 2 mod and not a D2R. So don't worry about <laughs> all this random stuff, but uh, it's not funny though. can't get exclusive items if you don't use a Vex. Okay. Okay, fair enough. 
But he is making it more accessible, though. Oh man, this is what you would want, but we need a need an ED, man. Need ED. Oh, two mana. Two mana. It's a joke. So, Sir is the current difficulty of it, of how difficult the current is, basically. Okay. Let's see. And so, he made it even tougher than it already is for people that put in a Zod. <laughs> oh man, that's a. Uh, that's rough. Yeah, that's the thing, is like, it would have to be a lot higher than 1 out of 100 if they're gonna make it even higher. I feel like they're doing that only for like literally a couple people at this point. <laughs> but whatever. Coward's hiding place. At least, there, at least there's a way to make it less difficult for most of them. Okay. That is, that's, you know, that's not a bad solution, though. I'm being real. I am that's not a bad solution. It's a, it, it definitely helps a little bit. But, I don't know. I burned my character on Rathma. Oh no. Mm, I don't know, but there might be even fewer people that can do it at that difficulty though. The only problem though is that's really going to bottleneck what builds people even do it on because think about it. The people that want the most value from the fight and that are really good at doing the fight, what do you think they're going to do, chat? What do you think they're going to do for the declon fight on Project Diablo 2? Oh. see if chat can kind of figure it out. What, 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 what do you think is going to happen in terms of the uh, diversity of builds? that are used for Declone and Rathma, given that there's now a difficulty sliding skill and there's a massively increased chance to get those items. People just won't do it, no? No, they'll do it, because they'll do it at the easier difficulty. How may I be no, no, the good part about this is more people will do the fights at some difficulty. Right. The bad thing, though, is if they do it like this. What are all the top killers going to do? So the people that are really serious about making the max amount of profit off of like Defund or Rathma, what are they gonna do? I am overburdened. Because they'll do it. They they'll use the Zodrin 100 percent They'll they'll look for Zodrin specifically to do this. The price of Zod will probably go up as a result. No, no, they'll still get an Annie. They just won't be able to get the special items. No, 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 no. I am overburdened. April? Okay, so that's still about a, like a, a month or so away. Alright. Did anyone prank anyone for April Fools, by the way? Alright, so I'm level 30. So at this point, I get some free stats into some cool things that we can do here and we get some res okay sweet so however i actually kind of want to try out terror zone normal here let's see can i actually get decent experience doing this or is this gonna suck 
Terrorize 32. I already see my experience going up. Okay, that's a good sign, actually. But the problem is this terror zone is so booty. No one has still said what's going to happen now. No, no one's told me yet what's going to happen when when they do this, when there's like a Zod required to make the boss even harder but to drop like loot at a much higher uh, rate. What's going to happen? There's no elites in normal blood more? Oh, that's right. Oh man, are you kidding me? Wow, this TZ is even worse than I thought. <laughs> oh wow, I forgot about that. I was like, I was like, you know, I had my like hell brain, you know, installed a bit here. Oh god. <sighs> ah, all right, you know, the best use of the experience shrine then would be just to do Eldritch and Shane Eldritch again. Because there aren't any, because it's normal mode. Have you ever seen an elite monster in normal Bloodmore? No. What a joke. Well, we can wait six minutes then. Fine. TZ's gonna change. And it can't be that, so automatically it has to be viable. Hopefully it's a little further in the game. And uh, normal TZ's can kind of be bad though, because it's really hard to... Yeah, the experience shrine is nice. I'll take this for sure. <laughs> I mean, it is going. It's going pretty well, honestly, but... Hey, you know, bloopers are good. It's gonna keep people entertained all the way to the end. This is, this is a nice one take, though, I will say. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> You think that, uh, Senpai, you know, Senpai did announce all that on April Fool's, so maybe it's not actually happening. I can't care anymore. Of course I'm human. Especially when I'm playing, uh, doing a playthrough that I don't do everything. <laughs> I mean, I know how to do everything in this playthrough, that's not the point. And I know all my options, but sometimes it's like... I don't know, some things just service. try to do shit and it don't work. It's good to know I'm human sometimes though. And they can feel like, you know, hey I can do this too. If this guy's making all these silly mistakes, it's not a, it's not that big of a deal. Right. Yeah, that's that's what it is, man. It's meant to be the tutorial quest, yeah. No. Anyway, I'll tell you guys my thoughts on what that's gonna do. It's gonna make it to basically where only one build Afternoon. becomes the meta for doing D clone and Rafna. Like no joke, one build. Afternoon. Because at, at its current difficulty, it's already highly restricted the number of builds. It's gonna be like one build. Unless people want those top three, I guess, in each class, but that's about it. It's gonna be one build. There's gonna be one build that can do it at the highest difficulty consistently. Uh, on softcore, maybe. Not on hardcore. Maybe I'm just thinking about hardcore. Yeah, well. Now you're right on softcore, actually. See, my, my brain is stuck in hardcore. That's the problem. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. It'll probably be like group play. will probably be the meta. Maybe. Maybe not, though. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Big... Boy, damage increases. Well, uh, there we go. And it's got attack speed. 
So that's actually kind of like a weapon you'd actually be looking for if you're going pure throw into a nightmare. We're only going throw for like two more levels though. Oh man. Run through the game faster. Yeah, that's pretty much it, Mirage. There's gonna be some kind of formula. It's gonna become super formulaic at the highest tier. Mm, formulaic, that's a good word. I haven't said that in a long time. Formulaic. I like the word formulaic. Pulls off the tongue really nice. Yeah, it's gonna become super formulaic. <clears throat> so there's gonna be like a, a formula that's just like highly reified for it. It's gonna be super... True, but it wouldn't matter. On software you can test as much as you want and die. Oh, you know what I forgot? I actually have another skill, too. There we go. It's gonna be formulaic, man. Super formulaic. Ugh, a coward's hiding place. Mm, sure, but... All you need to do is theory crafting. All it takes is a little bit of theory crafting and a few tests, and you're good. That's it. I can't carry. Don't worry. There, there will be a, there will be a formula within like the first week. Mark my words. First week or a week and a half. <clears throat> there will be a formula. Absolutely. For something that's that difficult. Most builds can't handle it already at the current difficulty. And you can't buff them or they're gonna be too strong in maps. Trust me when I say this. Right, exactly. And so if he mostly just increases the damage of the monster boss, then you're just gonna want more health. So anything that has enough health to survive that will be fun. So that's gonna put even more pressure on HP. Well, anyway, it doesn't really matter. All right, well, we've been composting these monsters for quite some time. Great Marsh? Are you kidding me? I can't even test that one because I don't even have a waypoint. Dude, this 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 will be bad. Watch watch this. I can already tell you. <clears throat> no, like I said, they can't test that. In, well, if it's a group thing, they can't test it in single player. I think they'll just use like Fury Druid, honestly, though. Nothing else can survive it, so why, why, why bother? Alright, Great Mars should be somewhere around here, maybe? Yep. Yeah, it's pretty good experience, but let's be real. Okay, that's not bad. Is this viable at this level? Probably not though, because that was just that was just an elite pack, and there's not a lot of elite packs in normal. I think it's even silly they included them in normal and nightmare anyway. Love my Maxwell guides. Hey, thank you, Pernilia. Hope you enjoy. YouTube ones as well. Like this one. 
Yeah, we definitely worked hard on those Maxwell guides. I know I did. I'm sure they are super solid so that you can uh, have the best strats available. I like how Max is trying to remind me of that. I'm, I do have to be reminded of Bo because for a while I was kind of used to this. This is a yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna charge up with frenzy. Like I'm gonna do a nightmare. This is what we're gonna do a night. Well, no, we're not. Not gonna do this. This will get one point into frenzy, maybe. Maybe not though. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's already getting a little bit. Not super late though. All right, so we're getting close to the level where it's actually time to push nightmare. However. We can save the imbue quest for later. We're not going to worry about that until we try to transition to hell. But the truth about the barbarian is that... Yeah, I, I don't know about this being viable, honestly. It's pretty bad. Elders and Shank are just going to be better no matter what. Not Elders and Shank, sorry. Pendle and Shank. Shank's not that good. It is interesting to note, though, that I can get experience elsewhere, so if Eldritch bores you to death, you can definitely do this, so. Dude, Bale, there's a couple of really good terror zones, I think, on normal, but that's about it. You have to get, like, uh, Bale Diablo or something. Tunes might cut it, I don't know. You'd have to get one of the normally really good ones, the ordinarily good ones. <sighs> if the bow constantly, because Tyner is so. Well, you know. Yeah, it's true too. I need those super units on those bail waves though. Yeah, I do bail TZ. There's like a couple of TZs I would do. See, normally doing bail is too slow to level up as a bar, but bail TZ might be good if you're trying to level up even faster. Or you want to go to 40 or something. So you're like afraid of hardcore or something, you can go to 40. Lots of health and leech. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of it, honestly. But I mean, it's not like it negatively impacts the game, Mirage. So, like I said, most TZs are never going to be viable in lower difficulties anyway. It's not like it does much. That was interesting. I just wanted to try that out. <sighs> Bow lasts about a minute right now. Let's see. Yeah, it lasts exactly a minute, actually. Exactly a minute. But notice how. A TZ like that will never work in normal. I mean, that will work in hell just fine. High levels, but... Hiding place. I guess Nightmare TZs will be a little better. There's, a more, there's more viable Nightmare TZs, and obviously Hell TZs are all viable, potentially. 
But it's just like weird. Increase speed. I am overburdened. Alright, so we are now one level away from the respec. So we got a respec we're gonna do. Hello. Um I do have to farm a 20 FCR wand, which I haven't done yet. I could do that real quick if I wanted to, actually. Now we do have to farm a 20 F Zero wand. This is a pretty sick uh, throwing weapon that we found at the end here. See, this is... It's kind of nice. Got like all the good stats on it. Not gonna matter though. Gotta get high level. Uh, a coward's hiding place. Higher level leap will actually be faster when just using our feet as well. Shank isn't worth it. No. The, the dudes around Shank aren't minions, for one. And then two, he just blows everything up. Good afternoon. Not really for you. If you're trying to get experience, you can do Shank. It's not like you can't. I, I don't consider it to be better than this approach, what I'm doing here, though. And if you watch my other Rags to Riches guides, it's pretty much the same shit. Of course there's reasons to play part of Diablo 2. It's a different version of Diablo 2. If you happen to like that version of Diablo 2, play it. Um, they're improving it a little bit, Black Underground, but yeah, yeah, I know. It's not... I mean, it's just old graphics, man. can't stand old D2 graphics at this point. Now that we have D2R, it's just... can't do it, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna get one more level. Then... It's just Bastard Sword. Eh, not really. Yeah, you don't play it for the graphics. You play it for the mapping, end game, harder uber bosses, and new builds. Yeah, yeah exactly. And new items, is like that. See, the thing is, there's a lot of people who lose their immersion though. Like if there's not good graphics, you know. I mean, think about it. You're constantly bombarded with high quality graphics all the time. On the TV and everywhere else, you know, and all of a sudden playing this game that looks like that. A lot of people can't handle that, you know? It's like jarring. I'm not one of those people that can't handle it. I can handle it, but, you know. Yeah, no, I get it. I totally One year and half dark and shun I dark and shun off flash dark and shun I dark and shun off flash dark and shun I dark and shun off flash dark and shun I dark and shun off flash dark and shun I dark and shun off flash dark and shun I dark and shun off flash dark and shun I dark and shun off flash dark and shun So throw I would consider to be part of the meta. But I wouldn't consider it to be the meta for barb leveling. But you know what is the meta, or only the only meta at this point? Once we hit 32, or once we hit at least 30, is that what you're trying to do? Ruin the video? Sweet. And thank you so much for 18 months as a member of Zane's Attack Squad, the Ghost of the Machine, the Arcane Disciples. I haven't missed a beat. True adherent of Zane's army. Now, you know what You know what really is meta? War Cry. So, that's what we're going to be doing. Why? Because 
rags to riches, you want to, in general, show you the least painful approaches or the more meta approaches. Starting out, there's a lot of different things you can do. And, you know, the Tau 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 Flail and the Steel Flails and whatnot are still part of the meta. Um, I wouldn't consider them the be-all end-all. And as you saw throughout some of my playthrough, Throw can kill things insanely fast. And it is safer in a lot of cases and more effective in some cases and less in others. So you can do throw or you can do double swing, but once you get to 30, third to 32, you definitely want to switch to war cry. That's really the only approach on the barbarian that won't be super painful and won't take forever on your journey from rags to riches on a barbarian. And so we will be doing that very soon. But I think a lot of people might find it interesting just how effective throw is. I think a lot of people might um, not even consider that a possible... I don't think a lot of people even know throw is even somewhat part of the meta, even if it's even really good in general. So I think it's actually good to show this. Um, double swing. We, we've described the other approach many times throughout this video. If you want to do that, based on what I have said in this video, you can totally do that. You won't have problems, and it's way better against bosses, so you do have an advantage there. However, it's also a lot more dangerous, so if you're playing hardcore, for instance, doing double swing... This is a video. It is a video! Anyway. What's up, monster? No, no, you're not major Masuda. But then again, sometimes listening to people's suggestions is bad. So it's a catch twenty two. <laughs> I am overburdened. But yeah, anyway. Um Yeah, so like I would consider double swing like ten times more dangerous against oh, yeah. let, let's say you're fighting Diablo. Imagine doing that with double swing, right? That's definitely expert that mode if you're playing hardcore for sure. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do double throw here as well, because I wanted to show how you can be safe and powerful and not have too much of an issue with it. Yeah, Bale's a bit of a pain, especially at a low level. Yeah, Ancients are a little bit of a pain. But <clears throat> they're totally doable. <laughs> so. Alright, we're about to hit the next level though, which means that Everything's about to change for our Barbarian here. I still need to get my 20 FCR wand or whatever, and then... We'll be ready to move on to the next phase. Of Rags to Riches. Some of the Riches are actually located in Nightmare, so you want to make sure to at least get to Nightmare on our Rags to Riches bar. Otherwise, how can we say we actually got to the Riches, right? But of course, we'll be going all the way to the end farming zones because otherwise, I can't show you the truth. This has been a video the whole time. Yeah, of course it is. It's a one take. Rarian rags to riches. Oh dear. Ah, did you see that, chat? What the heck? Oh no! <laughs> Are we gonna be dead? <laughs> we might be dead. See, this is another reason why you don't do it in a hardcore. Look at that. How did that happen, right? Let's see, are we dead? Oh no, we're fine. Ah, but the mercenary is dead. Ah, okay. Let's see. Well, mercenary doesn't play hardcore, so. It's fine. I mean, I do have a ton of health. I don't know how they'd get through it that quickly. I am a barbarian, after all. Uh, that's one of my key strengths. Yeah, that was interesting. The server just crapped out there. I haven't seen a crap out like that in a while. Hmm, alright. I mean, I just got to 99 yesterday, so I would think... Well, to identify this, but no. Guess not. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go work right now. 
It's gonna get some more points in the coward's hiding place. I could put some more points in the throw. Maybe I should. I just don't like my boat going out. It's more work. I am overburdened. Also, keep in mind that double swing is also a lot tougher to pull off against Pendle. You know, there's just a lot of things about it. Like, throw is really nice. Um, I encourage you to try both approaches, though, if you're uh, a barbarian enthusiast and seeing which one you prefer. There you go. I also encourage you to try the leveling to uh, 25 before you get to Act 5 approach as well. Either way, it's going to result in a somewhat different experience. Whether you consider it better or worse, though, is up to you. I think there's pros and cons to all those approaches, though. And at this point in the game, I'm willing to do them all. 17 to mana. Hmm. That's interesting. Probably useless, though. Alright, about to level up right now, which means we're actually about to take a very small break. And then after this uh, small intermission here, we will continue with Barbarian Rags for Riches. And we'll finally start getting to Nightmare, where some of those riches are actually possible for them. But in the beginning of Nightmare, our journey has just begun. There's a lot of preparation that is needed to make a Barbarian capable of farming riches. So, this is definitely for the troopers. Here we go. Uh, my goal by the end of part one is to get all of the major preparation done. We'll see if we can do that. So, you know, all of the runes, all of the stuff that's really going to make a big difference. Uh, um, so, we're going to want at least that, if not more. Um, which will mean that you might see some of those initial areas, but you're really going to see a lot of the uh, more interesting fights and battles a little bit later. Tried Frenzy from the beginning, it's hard. So yeah, that's the other approach is Double Swing. You wouldn't do Frenzy, you just put one point Frenzy, but yeah, I know what you mean. Um, definitely. Okay, anyway. Hey, any rate, it doesn't matter, because now we're about to transform. So the key here... Is we are gonna want our FCR rings. We did find FCR. That's really good, actually. It's not guaranteed at all. I wouldn't consider it guaranteed anyway. Um, gonna retire the throwing weapons, which is fine. Rip throwing weapons, but that's okay. Tire them over here. Oh yeah, look at that. Dang. Okay then. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. That is insanely strong. I can't use that yet. Oh. Yeah. Impossible. Alright, so there's a bunch of things we're going to do here, um, and then I'm going to take a brief intermission. So, I'm going to rebuy the mercenary. Yeah, so, um, you know about thawing potions, right? Just Memdrick or half freeze duration on your gear. It's something I actually went over in this Barb Rags to Riches guide. Maybe you can watch this guide when I put it on YouTube and try to do the Barb again. I think you'll enjoy it a lot more. Sounds like you had the typical problems most people do with the bard, is that there's just a lot of things you need to know, <laughs> to be perfectly frank, to make the bard good, or even somewhat good. There's a lot of things you need to know. Um, I'll put that to good use. There's a lot of game knowledge you need. I'll put that to good use. Ask and, learn. and they don't tell you this stuff anywhere. <clears throat> 
There's just so much shit you have to do to make a barb work when you start out, compared to like a sork. A sork you can pretty much do whatever you want, as long as you get teleported at level 18. That's a... That, that's the sorceress experience right there. Barb is a little, uh... <laughs> Barb's a little different. Barb is a little special. He's a... He's, he's special. Alright, anyway, for now, we're actually gonna go Ancient's Pledge, Rao or Tell. This is gonna make Ancient's Pledge, which is gonna give us decent res and nightmare. Um, and then we have this that we found, just uh, farming Eldritch and Pendle. We got some of this MF gear still, which is fine. I'm going to keep most of the MF gear on, as that's really going to help us in Nightmare, especially. Uh, we really want to find some things that are going to make a difference if possible. Maybe not. And then we just need a wand, so that's really what we're missing here. And then once we get a 20 S here wand, we'll hit the 63 faster cast rate breakpoint for Warcry. And that will allow us to push through Nightmare. Using stealth, two 10 FCR sources, it can be an amulet as well, we just only found rings, so we don't have an amulet. And, yep, there it is right there, there's the FCR ring, sweet. 20 FCR ring, so, I mean, sorry, not ring, uh, wand. Here you have it, 20 FCR wand. Boom bada boom, bada bada boom, bada boom bada boom bada boom. We have a teleport staff on swap. Looks like we're ready to go. Let's see, mercenaries got some res, sort of, kind of, maybe, and some damage. He's gonna struggle a bit in Nightmare, though. Uh, we did rebuy him, though, so at least he's level 31. Might survive some things. Warcry does stun, so the mercenary might be fine. Uh, one thing to note about Warcry is it's an incredibly safe ability for the most part. Unless you stun beetles in hell and then put them in half pass rate recovery. But if you avoid that, you'll be fun. Um, as there is a bug regarding those bugs and stun. So, yeah. Here we go. Anyway, though, lots and lots of gold, so it's really good. We're looking at about 300... 50,000, somewhere sort of between 340,000 uh, 400,000 is good as you push through normal uh, Nightmare. Uh, this is still a really good belt, but what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to upgrade it maybe at some point or just buy a belt from Nightmare. Don't worry about anything too much here. I can't uh, use that yet. Personally, can't even use a potential upgrade because this costs too much strength. That's cute. All right. Um, doesn't matter. Probably use Insight at some point soon. Anyway, um, since we don't have the runes in, I'm not going to bother socketing these because we could find a four socketed sword straight up. Uh, we can. Um, we definitely can. At any point, we can find a broad sword as well. So, we got these in normal cows in case we don't find any of these four socketed bases later on, but if we don't, we are covered. And uh, that's going to be the key. So we can at least ensure that at the very least we can only get like Devil Spirit and um, let's pull Axe going here, no problem. Uh, is Blood Crescent the only unique you found in Normal? Uh, no, I also found Wither String. You know that unique Hunter's Bow? It's pretty bad. Anyway, yeah, I found that as well. Alright, Rancid Gas Potion. I don't even know why I'm keeping it. Now we have a lot more space though, because we threw out a lot of hot garbage. Do you have some res rings? Uh, attack rating will definitely come into play later, so keeping any attack rating gear, yeah, you will want to keep it for later on. We're going to th throw out this cold damage stuff though. You're only going to want things that kind of give us some like mana or res or life or faster unlock, things like that. Uh, dex is fine as well, because you will need enough dex and strain to wear a flail. Okay, sounds pretty good. We do have that three socket flail that I found earlier. Yep, I put it right there for some reason. That's kind of a bad spot for it, but whatever. Okay, so we got a lot of bases. We're going to need runes. 
The main way to get those is Nightmare Countess. So now we go to Nightmare. Um, these are pretty solid items. Honestly, this is not something you typically expect to have at this point. Um, <laughs> but I'll take it. Uh, you might have like a Rao Rao helmet or just a Rao helmet or, you know, Rao Tao helmet. I don't know. Maybe a Rao uh, Tur helmet so you can have mana per kill with a uh, Warcry. I don't know. There's a lot of things you can potentially have. But at any rate. Barbarian is ready to go. Good day. It's got a lot of health. And Nightmare, we have pretty good resistances. And you might be wondering, why is that? Well, we haven't respect yet, but even before we respect, you'll notice that we have natural resistance. Remember I told you we have a cheating skill that gives us a lot of resistance? Yeah, so this is one of the reasons why Barb, even though it's slow, you can usually do it very safely on hardcore. I mean, I just died because I was too lazy to go back to town after getting poisoned, and then I was leaping around like a silly person, and then, like, the... I guess the blood maggots came out of an egg randomly and killed me. But, you know. I didn't die. Besides that, I didn't die, so, like, you know, it's, it's, it's not that bad. Besides, besides that silly death, no deaths at all. Alright, so, how do we respec into Warcry? Um... You will see here right after this intermission, and then we will go straight to Nightmare. And then we are ready for Nightmare now. Mercenary's got some decent res gear. Nothing too crazy yet, but for the beginning of Nightmare, it's fun. Um, we have all the basics and everything else. But yeah, I'll show you guys how to spec this barb here for uh, to make sure he's ready for Warcry. And with Warcry, you'll be able to push yourself pretty much through the rest of the game. However, once you get some other types of items, you're definitely going to want to use them ASAP. And you're going to want to switch out of it. Also, you won't only be using Warcry, so that is something that's very important to note here. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely go over that in a bit as well. Uh, I don't think we'll be specking into some of the other stuff yet, but you will definitely see it. You'll see that Warcry is definitely not the only focus. So Warcry is key. It's not the only focus, though. Um, you're definitely, Warcry is really bad against bosses, so you can't use Warcry against bosses, and you're going to need another approach. But anyway, I'll be right back, and we'll go over that stuff in a moment.
All right. So now we are back. More barbarian rags to riches, and we are a nightmare. And boy, was it a nightmare getting here. <laughs> but once you're a nightmare, and once you get at least a little bit past 30, you have a solid, solid basis at level 32 to make a barbarian that won't be quite as painful. And it takes a while to get to this point, for sure. Um, you could do it faster, of course, without all of the... Uh, fanfare but it's still very tough no matter what you do so of course we're gonna want to prepare for enough strength to wear the crystal swords so we will be getting that now matter of fact i just want 45 for safety um dexterity we're going to need i don't know how much dex we have items let's see Five maybe. I don't know. I have stealth. Mm, well, that's okay. Uh, we'll get we'll get more later. We'll get more dexterity later. We do need a minimum of thirty five for now though. It's going to be very important. Yeah, forty five for streamer luck, mage fist. Exactly. Well, yeah, I'm tr I'm thinking of various items that require 45 strength that I could get and I'm like yeah that's pretty good and then of course uh, uh, we'll put the rest of our points into vitality remember putting points in energy is very inefficient on a barbarian so you almost never want to do that never 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 okay so there you go so we have a lot of HP which is nice. Beware, foul demons and beasts. Now, we're only focused on leveling, so don't worry about fine item yet. Um, that will come into play later on in Rags to Riches, but you don't have to worry about that now. And that's definitely something that's more of a, something to focus after you level up your Barbarian. It's going to be tough to get there otherwise. You're going to want to max out Warcry, of course. And as you can see, Battlecry is one of the key, um, it's one of the key, uh, synergies. And believe it or not, Battlecry being a synergy is very, very good. Because that means that we can also use this against bosses, and we can attack with things like Concentrate if we wanted to. That is what we're going to want to do to kill bosses, and we're going to need Crushing Blow. Crushing Blow stat, something that I mentioned quite a bit on Sin Rags to Riches in regards to Uber, same thing with Paladin, is really what's going to make killing bosses bearable on this build. Um, it's really the only way to do it. So, that all being said, Crushing Blow, there are some very good sources of it. Um, some you could get lucky to find, but the main one that's really going to be big is black and black flails in general. They're definitely going to want to use those. Okay, so besides that though, you definitely get your one point increased speed just to make things a little bit faster. Uh, you can get your natural resistance. Heck, you could even put another point into natural resistance if you want. But as you can see, my resistances are fine without it, as long as I'm bowed. So that's, that's a pretty good sign there that we kind of don't need it, unless you wanted some extra fire res. But you have stun anyway, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Believe it or not, you're not going to worry about the masteries too much, but you are going to put one point to mace mastery. Um, mace mastery is going to be kind of key to you can even put more than one point into it that's going to be kind of key to making sure uh that you can actually hit the monsters with the flail when you attack so you're going to want one point into there this is a kind of an everything build so this build's going to be capable of doing all of it all of it all the time so you can also go leaf attack as well. 
Not insanely necessary, but you can. Leaf attack, like I mentioned earlier. Of course, if you get a really high damage two-handed weapon, that can actually be pretty strong. There's also some other situations where that is strong as well. But for the most part, you're actually going to put one point into Concentrate, strangely enough. And that is going to be your skill you can attack with using your flail. So that's going to be key with that and battle cry. Are really going to be important. You're going to want to leap. Now all this double throw frenzy stuff, not really important anymore. However, at a later level, if you wanted to, you can get frenzy to increase your speed of killing bosses. And we'll kind of talk about and hopefully show how to do that as well. It's a lot of complicated crap when it comes to the barbarian. And that's just how it is. But after you get Warcry, you're definitely going to want to invest a lot into the synergies. That's really going to be your key here. And having a really high level battle cry is also going to be key. Um, you can put some extra points into battle orders if you want. It's not going to help Warcry though. But if you don't like its duration, for instance, like I think the duration is really bad. Um, you can definitely put like an extra point into bow, and that's not a terrible idea. Just to have some kind of duration on it. And then you can just put additional points into how as well. And how is nice, believe it or not, because um, much later in the game, that's actually going to prove to be kind of important in trying to clear areas like chaos. So, but of course, probably won't work anyway because it'll be too low level. Hopefully we can show it against monsters that are high enough. Well, anyway. Yeah, so how only works against monsters your level or below, so... <laughs> Maybe we can show it in there? I don't know. Probably not. I don't think we're getting to that level in this guide. That would be pretty... Uh, that'd be pretty wild. Pretty wild, I think. Um, so we get Battle Cry there. Okay, so as you can see... <laughs> Yeah, we do damage. That's all we need to do. Remember the to keep your bow up. As you can see, we have like no mana. <laughs> so this 21 mana charm is actually uh, really good. Hopefully, we'll get some more mana soon, though. And then we also have our teleport staff on swap too. Anyway, it's that simple. Uh, target elite packs, and once again, we're going to do the Den of Evil exactly the same way we did in normal. Let's see here. Yeah, let me put the TP up. Yeah, see, at least I have a little 60 battle orders. Yeah, 60 second battle orders. So that's. That's something. There is some preference, level of preference here, where you exactly put your points, but I'd, I'd say, uh, like, you can put, like, another point to natural res, you know, there's definitely some things you can do. At this point, though, it's probably fine. Our battle cry is very good. We're not going to need that, really, until we face Indariel, so... And here comes the Song of the Barbarian. It sounds so sweet, right? It's the song of his people. And man, it's a uh, strong. It is strong. From here on out, we're pretty much just putting every point into War Cry, so that's why I prepped all the other skills so that we have everything else ready to go. But from here on out, we'll just put all the points into War Cry, and we'll be good to go. Yeah, this you don't even need to put some of those points like into uh, you don't even need to put like the Mace Mastery point in yet if you don't want to. 
but I need mana. Or even like the concentrate points. So you can like put those four points into Warcry synergies if you want. But I'm just showing you guys what it's gonna look like. So that we don't have to put our points into complicated places later. At this point, we're just gonna put everything into Warcry. As you can see, one respec. This will allow us to kill everything. But don't worry. Two socketed Eth Crystal Sword. Yeah, you can definitely leave those points for later. You're probably thinking, well, why do I need those points now? I'm not killing a Dardo right now. It's true or not. You want to prepare yourself for it, though. <clears throat> it's not like the synergies are really going to make a huge difference. They're not. <clears throat> okay, so exceptional items will sell a bit better. In general, though, armors and skill are very good. Impossible. Yeah, the biggest difference will definitely be plus skills here. It's really where the uh, the big money is. But yeah, we'll put another point to how taunt is not taunt isn't really that worth it. Um, you can use one point taunt for some things just to uh, enrage monsters and to pull monsters away. This is one way to get monsters out of the throne, for instance. So it's actually kind of a useful tool, and it might become more useful later on in Hell, but. Um, honestly, not super insanely good. I could, I could put most of my points into taunt, though, to prepare for, like, using it like that, so I take less damage. I don't know. I like how too, though. Then again, most of the time, are we going to be high enough level to use it? Mm. I just want to put most of our points into taunt. But... I think what I'll do is I'll get max out War Cry, max out Battle Cry, and then I might just put the rest of the points in a taunt. A few points in a howl doesn't hurt though. But yeah, there's a few ways to do it. Keep in mind that taunt isn't bad, but typically you don't want to use it. You're not using it all the time. It's kind of like howl though, you're also not using it all the time, so. But later on in hell, like let's say you wanted to push bail, like taunt would actually be pretty nice. Getting that reduction of uh, enemy damage. I can already well. tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. So there's definitely some interesting uh, things to do here. Notice how we have a thousand HP though. The gem shrine. Do we have any gems? I paid for VLC media player. Thank you so much for the follower. What was Xanadu say? Um, dang, we don't have a lot of those, honestly. Guess I can just get this real quick, so I don't have to deal with it later. I can maybe get a chromatic amulet if we still don't have one, anymore. or don't have an amulet. It's better. All right. At any rate. can see our damage is pretty solid and another one of those advantages of war cry is you don't need attack rating just like every caster ability in diablo 2 you don't need attack rating it does drain your mana but you don't need attack rating it always hits it's good aoe I need mana. and boom it's pretty easy to use Try to time your uh, mana potion to when like it gets towards the bottom. And try to use it as much as possible for the potion uh, for the uh, orb fills up to maximize the use of your mana potions. Uh, this is definitely one of those very mana hungry skills, but it is worth it. <laughs> Not enough mana. <laughs> Goodness! I'm 
Is this uh, Blood Raven? Yeah, because it, it's, it's right next to the wall. Once again, you know, if you don't remember from our Act 1 map tutorial, the, the maps are the same in every difficulty. If you don't remember, it's never going to be next to the wall, though. You're always going to want to go outside there. Hmm. That could definitely be worth something. Uh, Low-level paladins can definitely use that very well. I don't know if it's uh, like worth a ton necessarily, but... I think we're gonna want to get less damage if we're getting back, but I'll do that later. Song of our people. Pick up all the pole axes. This one looks like it's this way because it's a thrill though. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's no good. We need five sockets. We're in nightmare now. Monsters are gonna get. I mean, uh, Lorzik socketing something will get five sockets pretty much every time. Whatever the max socket is on the particular item. Hey look, we got Stony Field. Thanks. That means we can very easily do Tristram again. And this time we get a free rare ring if we did it, so that's kinda nice. See how much easier that was than normal? Look how much easier that was. So a free half freeze duration, of course, though, and we have max cold res, which means our cold is really not going to last that long, which means we don't need billions of thawing potions. Remember, freeze length is a function of whether you have half freeze duration or cannot be frozen, which in that case only uh, holy freeze would freeze you, and it's a function of your cold resistance. So the higher your cold res, will reduce your freezing length. So should I make a single player character so I can remember the maps? Yeah, so I've talked about single player quite a bit throughout this guide, but in general, you know, whenever you're leveling up, you want to use higher player count. And the advantage of single player is that you can farm certain monsters. So you always know the location of like Battle Made Serena, Beetleverse, not just Eldritch, which you will know, know that on single player or multiplayer. Um, doesn't matter. Can really take advantage of that. All right, so we just leveled up. <clears throat> right, here we're giving us some experience, as you might expect. There's definitely characters that can just start doing nightmare at like 25, like the sorceress 24. Obviously, it'd have to be 25 to at least get experience in nightmare. But once you hit 25, you can do it. Barbarian is a little tougher. You're gonna need some more levels for sure. I want to make sure you have two rows of mana potions if you don't have them already for this uh, particular build. That's a pretty big deal. And so you don't have to constantly go back to town, you can just pick up the potions. Allows you to go a bit faster. Remember, you do have a teleport staff too, but I wouldn't abuse it too much early on. I used it there so I could get to the end. Notice though that this area is pointing in the same general direction. This, this area is pointing in this direction, it's pointing in this direction. So we had to go to the left, but it was facing the same direction. That's still the same. That's exactly how the map works as well in normal. We already went over that though. Nothing changes in higher difficulties in, ter in terms of how the maps work, so the map generation will be exactly the same. Would Tur gear be viable? I actually just mentioned that um, about what was it ten minutes ago, where I talked about how you could put like a Rowl and a Tur in a helmet. Yeah, so mana per kill wouldn't be bad. Right? The only problem though is that a lot of the time you're not even killing things, so. 
It might not be as good as you think it would be. It helped out a little bit, though. It's not like I'm one-shotting monsters, though, right? Like, if I was one-shotting all the monsters with this ability, and the problem was that it used a lot of mana, then I would say a Tururune is a good option, but... It's actually not really the case here. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Adobo Addict. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the Cult of Xanadu, say. Fushina can't make insight. Insight is only pull arms and bows. Typically, on this character, I would advise getting uh, an Act 2 Mercenary. You're gonna need that attack rating at the least, or the defensive power, but mostly just the attack rating. Okay. Um, War Cry. Yep, there you go. Believe it or not, every little bit of damage you get on War Cry is pretty impactful because you see that I War Cry quite a bit. Most monsters take a lot of hits anyway. So every little bit of damage will add up. The order welcomes you. You end up killing monsters a lot faster than you would think ordinarily. Um, what are you looking for in a blue jewel? Uh, in the end game, attack speed uh, forty ed. Attack speed, all res, all res in general, enhanced damage, and another stat in general. Um, believe it or not, I'm about to, uh, so there's, I'm actually creating a couple of new posts for max roll. That might be very helpful for some people. A lot of people don't realize what to look, look for, like in a rare item, or a blue item, or whatever it is. Um, is actually the post I'm about to finish is called Valuable Magic Items. And if you see here under value, um, this is a, sorry, um, what is it called again? Uh, maybe it's just called riches. Yeah. I'm going to call it like value probably, but anyway. Um, right there is the guide for valuable, unique, and set items. But uh, we're actually going to create, I'm going to create some new guides for you guys so that you guys, um, using max roll. So you guys can understand, uh, like, what would be good jewels, things like that. Um, and it's going to be a pretty big post, but thankfully there's a table of contents. <laughs> so you can go to whichever section, whether it be charms, jewels, jewelry, shields, whatever you want to see. Um, but a lot of people are always curious, like, what are you looking for in certain types of items, and... Uh, I think that post would be very helpful. So we're gonna get some of those posts out there if we can. <laughs> That's a question I get all the time, and I think it'd be nice to actually have like full length guides on that on Max Roll. So I'm gonna I'm working on them. I'm working on them. I am working on them. Um, yeah, I have one for unique and set items. So that, that's a. And we already have that guide, but. There's so many other types of Dia items in Diablo 2 that are arguably more important than the items. <laughs> so, um, yes, sir. Man here is dead and lifeless. Help! Yeah, we'll, we'll get some we'll get some upgrades for you guys. For some of my final guides on Max here, I want to make a hardcore resource. So people can maybe go somewhere. I can send people somewhere if they want to start hardcore. And I want to make a I want to make a valuable item resource for every type of item. 
They also... There's a couple silly build guides I want to do, but... That's about it. No, it's not hardcore. This is a guide, so we're making a, a guide for players to learn how to level up and how to get rich on a barbarian from scratch. No items or experience necessary. That's the idea. You can take my knowledge and you can apply it. That is very nice. Unfortunately, it has no FCR, and I need FCR at the moment. Unless I get it on the amulet. But if I do get it on the amulet, that would be nice. That's really good, actually. It's half freeze duration, really high light and res. It's got mana. It's even got a meth. Oh, I'd love to use that, but then my FCR, I won't hit my FCR breakpoint. I'll probably be able to use it very soon, though. I'll probably be able to use it when, uh... At least for a little bit. Okay, so we saved Kane, killed some monsters, continue. So just like throughout the rest of the game, you're just going to be targeting elite packs and you're just going to be pushing through the game. This is going to go a lot faster than uh, normal though because Nightmare I consider to be the easiest difficulty in Diablo 2. And that's because as long as you know how to make some basic rune words, get some basic resistances on gear, and your build is at least somewhat solid, uh, the monsters are typically weaker compared to how they were in normal compared to your power level. Once you get to hell, it all changes, but... This is a four-socketed crystal sword. Hey, that's huge, actually. That is really big. That is really big. You know what that means? It means if we get two spirit sets, I only have to socket one of my swords, and I can get two spirit swords and do use Warcry with that. And that's big, because once you get two spirit swords, you have so much mana. You have four skills. You have five skills with lore. And so, while it looks like we're kind of just barely getting by right now, we'll see once we get some massive power spikes in a bit. It's going to be a bit better than this, for sure. <clears throat> The key is Nightmare Countess, which is the first Rags to Riches farm in Diablo 2. In the beginning of a ladder, souls, ams, shales, lums. Yeah, I'm going to make a hardcore resource that you can access through Maxwell, and of course it'll be under resources on Maxwell as well. Yeah, because there's hardcore specific things that I think people people are very intimidated by hardcore, but you don't have to be if you know, you know, what to do. And even if you die, even using all of that information, you'll get a lot farther than you probably would have otherwise. And you'll get a lot better a lot faster. And your mistakes might just be purely mechanical at that point. Because there's so many other mistakes that have nothing to do with mechanics in hardcore. A lot of people assume that you need to be some kind of mechanical god. Play hardcore? It's not true. Um, I'm not even that mechanical. Not even that much of a mechanical god, honestly. And I die in hardcore only to bugs and glitches. So, but I can show you how to do it. I mean, I'm pretty decent at some characters, right? Like sorceress, but like just people that are better than me. For sure. The real key lies in the game knowledge. The game knowledge is so much more important than the mechanics. But it is true that if you don't know things, you will die. So yeah. The little enemy resists to 95. Removing. Yeah, I'm going to make a hardcore resource as well. I don't have too many more new guides planned for Maxwell, and then at that point I'm just going to be updating the guides pretty much. Um, I doubt there will be anything new to do at that point anyway, because everything that can be done pretty much will be done. Despite how many changes they make, it won't matter at that point. Why can I not find the tower? So we found the waypoint, that's good. Then we found the tower. We're actually going to go get the uh, Timo Highland too. Alright, so we use that teleport staff there, and you just have to use weapon swap, teleport, weapon swap back. That is how you do that. 
that's very useful. Alright, so we're gonna wanna farm Countess until our eyes bleed. So, unfortunately, with a Barbarian, you need to do even more Countess farming than you need to do in most classes. And that's because, unlike the Necromancer, which even needs an Io rune, which is the highest rune that Nor Nightmare Countess can drop from her rune table, uh, she can drop a Lum um, from her standard table, but it's unlikely. Because even if you get that one Aya rune, you need that Aya rune for black, but on top of that, you also need one or two spirits preferably. You want maybe even more Aya runes so you can make a smoke later, which would be really nice in hell. Uh, you want. Maybe even potentially things like death, potentially. I mean, that's an idea. You want lore, you want insight. There's so many rumors that you're gonna wanna make. Farming Nightmare Countess is the easiest way to find these rooms, period. So it's gonna be a very major gateway to uh, barb power that's gonna carry you to actually being able to farm those riches on a barb. There's really no shortcuts, unfortunately. If you try to farm in Dariel now and try to push through the game, you won't have your Aya rune for black and you won't be able to kill in Dariel, except it'll take like a billion years. And that's just the first boss. Imagine how hard it would be to kill the next boss. And then imagine how hard it would be to kill Nightmare Ancients. You're not going anywhere without farming Nightmare Countess and a Barbarian. Impossible. I like to be, I like to emphasize that because there's a lot of classes where you can get away with a lot. And you can just like skip some of these farms, come back to them later. You kind of need it, but you kind of don't. No, you, you really need it on the Barbarian. Otherwise, you're gonna be, oh man, you're gonna be. It's gonna be a. <laughs> it's gonna be a. I don't know, what's the best way to say? It's gonna be like a 180 degree climb. It's gonna be a 90 degree climb. Yeah, there we go. Without gear, that is, of course. You know, if your friend ever wants to gift you some gear on the Barbarian, you probably won't say no, but... Hey, there you go, that's not bad. Fortunately, though, Paladin skills! Oh, I would totally use that if it was. Okay, well, anyway, we at least got one of each res, which means if we're lacking any of those res, um, it's actually really good. We can rely on that later. We'll actually keep all of those for now. You'll never know what other types of resistances you'll get throughout the game, so if you ever see any high resistance of anything, you should use it. Damn, too many no barbarian skills. Barbarian skills are big here. Okay, anyway, uh, Warcry. Keep putting the points in a war cry. That's all you gotta do now that you you already prepped for boss killing and everything on this build. You already prepped for it. I can. So a low quality circuit can actually be used for the view quest. We could get that actually. Uh, get white circlets are nice for imbues. Circlets are really good for imbues. Also, cows are really good at dropping them, but, you know. We're also going to want to get experience, so leveling up here is fine. Thank god. What the heck? Did I use the wrong potion or something? Yeah, I did. I know! Okay, so this is Countess. So at minimum we can do this to Countess. Luckily Countess is not a real boss, because she actually dies pretty fast in the Warcry, which is nice. <clears throat> Dude, without bow I'm like... totally... dead in the water, but I already know that. It's not my first rodeo doing this. So here we go. Uh, 
I mean, at that point, Max will basically have everything <laughs> after I do, like, some of these last guides here that I have planned. At least for D2, and then... Yeah, you guys will have the best tier list, the best just informational resources, the best guides. Can't really ask for that at that point. This masterpiece of a game deserves at least that, right? L rune? What? So I couldn't get an L from normal Countess, but I get one. Oh wow, I get one from Nightmare Countess. That's insanely rare actually from Nightmare Countess. Wow, an L rune. Now that's not the most useful start. However, that does mean that with just like one more I think I can actually make I get an if, which I'll, I'll definitely find an if. I can make a Malice, which could be useful for, like, D-Clone in case you're up against D-Clone. There's, there's possible things you can do if you're up against something like that. And Malice is one of them, so... You, 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 it's not totally worthless. Uh, L is required in the Malice recipe. When I, yes. I believe so, anyway, if I remember right. Isn't it... Isn't it if... LF or something like that. Pretty sure. Alright, so anyway. Make sure you have your black marsh waypoint. We're gonna actually, uh... We're gonna push a little bit farther here, just to the, um... To Mo Highlands, uh... Sorry, not to Mo Highlands. To the outer cloister waypoint. Yeah, that's an L. That's what I thought, yeah. So, we can make Malice now. That's, that's not the worst thing in the world. Okay. We didn't have an L rune still, so, you know. It's one of the reasons why I was like, okay, I'm definitely going double through. Kind of was waiting to see what Countess did, but Countess wasn't giving me any of the... Double swing stuff, really, so I was like, okay, whatever. Double throw works just well. It works. It's not the only thing that decides that, but. Yeah. But I don't know if I'm cast. Bad orders feels bad. So, one thing to note about um, Nightmares, you gotta be very wary of fire enchants. And if you have fire enchant plus conviction, it can be very dangerous. All right, so we have the cross, but it doesn't matter. That means that the barracks would be straight ahead. We're not going to the barracks though, because we need a ton of runes. This farm is gonna take hours. However, in Barbarian Rags for Bitches, I will give you an accurate appraisal of what you're up against. And I'm going to do this farm in its entirety. <clears throat> so you guys can see the real strength of a janky barbarian who doesn't need nothing. Which is actually surprisingly not bad. We use malice on yourself. That's okay. You don't need to worry about the train life. Let's use potions and stuff. That's fire enchantment, dude. We're not we're not right next to it. I am overburdened. I am overburdened. Also beware with Warcry. I can definitely stun beetles and get lots of electrocution, so. Light Riz is actually quite nice on a Warcry Barbarian. Keep that in mind if you don't know already. Anyway though. The truth is this. This farm is gonna be hard. There's nothing that's gonna make it easier. You just have to keep farming Countess. Just like how I taught you guys in normal. Now you'll notice with the Countess maps that they are bigger. But it's the same logic that they follow. 
you want, we can kind of go over the maps a little bit as we do a couple of these. Just to show you guys how this works. <clears throat> I mean, it's just a small dream lifestyle. It's like... You could use Malice for, like, D-Clone. You need, like, uh, open wounds and stuff. Like, if I was doing D-Clone, I'd go Malice Black. Of course, I'd have my one-point double swing and frenzy. And he would die eventually. If I used Battle Cry as well. See, that's actually something that the Assassin doesn't have, is Battle Cry. This uh, really allows you to uh, cheat the AR system a bit. Enemy defense reduced by 80% it was uh, no joke. So we're gonna go here. Keep finding charms, but lately they've all been misses though. They have some good charms for more though. These charms are hellproof already. But we can get more charms. Getting a couple of other really good charms, I wouldn't mind that. So if you look at this map here, it's pointing this way, so we're gonna want to go to the left if you follow my cursor, or to the west of where the entrance is pointing, and typically you're gonna find it. See, it's the same thing as normal. So currently we're going this way, the entrance is pointing this way. Not timing my potions very well. Kind of playing a bit lazy here. <clears throat> it's gonna get a lot easier once you get some items though. Problem is, the road to these items, the solo barb, is not easy. You can see it takes a lot of time. But if you want to go to Rags for Riches with any reasonable degree, this stuff is pretty much a good amount. Like I said, cutting corners in the Barbarian, not easy to do. Cutting corners in something like a Sorceress, a lot easier to do. And be like, ah, man, Countess isn't dropping my ammo, I still don't have any ammo. You can just push with your 20 F zero wand and you'll probably be fine. It's not really gonna matter. Yeah, I'll make you a tiny bit weaker, but that's about it. Spirit is nice quality of life though. Alright, another Countess kill. Let's hope for some good runes. Honestly, you're probably gonna get like level 40 plus because we have so many runes to farm. From Countess, wouldn't it surprise me. That's not a bad thing though. Because then, we're gonna have a higher level as we push through the game. Ah, that's really good actually. That's really good. Okay. That's a very tough rune to get there. Nice. Just got an Io rune. That's her highest rune. Arguably one of her very toughest rune there. You also got Neff, and that can also be useful here. So, the rune word for black is Stool Io Neff. I also need a Neff for smoke probably later on as well. So, just having a Neff on hand is good already. Means that we're not gonna have to worry about that rune. I have had that rune cause issues before. So the Aya rune means we can already make black. That's pretty big. Black automatically means that we can get past Act 1 Nightmare <laughs> without um, insane pain. So that already guarantees that we can uh, we can do that. However, that's really just the beginning. You want a solid barb for farming those riches, it's gonna take more than that. 
The speedrun, you might just have to make do with what you got and probably fail because your items suck. And Countess uh, decided to, to chuck you in the ditch. But see, here's the thing though. Oh no, we need Black Rose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bulwark and coming. <laughs> Uh, Bulwark is, if we happen to get lucky and find a whole bunch of iron runes before, yeah, find any of those really key runes first. No, black is a necessity. One black at minimum. Two blacks if you can get it. Definitely gonna want black. Two blacks actually gives you some other pretty interesting options, at least later on. Wouldn't be a necessity now though, for sure, at this point. Definitely not only moving on once we have two blacks, but... I mean, I have a problem, we're gonna have other runes that are an issue if we already have the Ira rune. And those runes are a bit more common. That's a good thing though, because if we get a bunch of Iowa rings, means we can make another black, we can make smoke maybe. Well, unless you just find a lump straight up. We can make bulwark, yeah. A lot of things you can do with Iowa rune. Which is why, theoretically, your barbed nightmare farm is only done when you think it is. Chaos. There's just so many things you can farm. Countess can drop up to Aya Rune in her standard rune table. And she can drop Soul and Am and Sashale and all these good runes. So. Yep. Good stuff. I don't know how interesting this part of the guide is, but as a guided playthrough, it's just a nece it's just necessary. So, um, Barb is a lot of farming, a lot of farming early game. So much more required farming, or at least semi-required farming. Once we get to a high enough level, I'll stop killing the elite packs, and we'll just kill Countess over and over for faster kills. But currently, still getting really good experience in here, so obviously we're gonna keep doing this. Let's farm ever higher levels. Get one mana per level. Uh, is that another four socket crystal sword? If so, we can just straight up make the insight. Oh my goodness, dude, that luck is really good. What? What? Oh man, we already have the four socket crystal swords, both of them. That means I don't even have to waste a socket quest on that. It means I can make the insight immediately. Hello. Once I hit soul, that's really good. That's really good RNG right there. Like I said, you can find the four socketed sword straight up in Nightmare, but it's actually happening. I'm just gonna drop the ones from the cow level then. Good thing we didn't over farm cows for no reason. That is... Wow, that's really good actually. You're not always gonna encounter that for sure. But that does make it a lot sooner we can get to certain breakpoints. Okay, so Orch Shale, that's not bad. Um, 
Um, shale runes are good, and you can make a rhyme with the shale too. And uh, rhyme is going to be really key to the single black build. So you're definitely going to want at least one shale. That's good. <sighs> I've seen shale be the problem before, and that was. That's always tragic when shale's the problem. Rhyme is really good, it gives you cannot be frozen. And, uh, that <laughs> That makes uh, physically attacking so much less painful. Yes. By a long shot. You can keep some more flawless gems if you want, but that's okay. Wow, I can't believe that. Two four socketed crystal swords. Damn. Well, if only we had the runes, right? If we had the runes, I'd already make at least one of them. This is the part of the game where I just start making rumors, you know. Rumors are definitely the fastest gateway to power on any character, but for a barbarian, nothing, nothing more could be the truth. Alright, looks like we have three teleports left on the staff. Since I know I have to go left because it's facing this way, I'm just going to jump over the wall. And go over here. So, one good thing is that with stun and 1,150 health and really good resistances, you're really not worrying about dying too much. Like, normally you would. Like, look how much damage these archers do. You know, you think a sorceress has that much health at this point in the game? Heck no. The thing about the sorceress, though, is that she can, like, one-shot the monsters. So. Does she need to survive it? Not if she attacks first. That's part of the problem here. Once again, it's a, uh, it's one of those things. Right, we're going left. We're going left. Left of where the entrance is pointing. And bam, there you go. See, it, it works every time. There's a reason why I know how to fast find stuff. Download that map pack into your brain. Watch at least one Rags to Riches video, and you will uh, you'll know how to do this. Never be able to optimize your gameplay, farm things quickly. It's gonna help with health farming too. I don't think it's gonna matter for health farming. Think again. On Mephisto. Nef if fool. Hmm, I do need pool. Pool's actually a rune we need a lot of, so that's that's a good rune. Take it. I need I think three fools. At minimum. Yeah, because we need one for black, which is Stool Ionef. So now we can make black for sure. And we also need two more for spirit. Okay, so that's good. Continue. This is just going to be a long grind. Really no replacement for it. I get to a slightly higher level, I can uh, maybe see if Geet or something has slightly better gear, because some of the crap I'm wearing right now is pretty bad. Good news though is that Nightmare doesn't really matter. This monastery yeah. with evil and you want to upgrade your gear as much as possible before you enter hell for sure. Um, unless you're on the soft core, then you can yellow it, but like, hardcore you're definitely going to do that. I wouldn't worry about it too much right now though. <clears throat> Is Fury Druid a legit leveling option? You can do it, but as a hardcore leveling option, that is a challenge character you're, you're making, my man. That is a challenge character. If you feel like you need some extra challenge in the game, that's not a bad idea. 
If you're, uh, and by a little, I mean a lot. If you're feeling like you're just trying to get a druid to a high level to do things. Um... That's very slow. I don't even show that approach in Druid Rex for Witches for a reason. It's, uh, that's if you want to challenge yourself, my man. And you know, honestly, Diablo 2 challenging yourself is a lot of the fun of it, but... <clears throat> Good day. Okay, so you have to repair the teleport staff. Notice how expensive that is. 70 plus thousand gold. Good thing we farmed up all that gold. You're gonna want to continue to pick up items like that to sell though. Otherwise you're gonna be out of gold faster than you can say gold. That's just how it goes. The teleport staff. You're also not going to use Ort runes yet, for sure. You're not at the point in the game where you're drowning in Ort runes, so... Not yet. We need we need those Ort runes at the moment, so you're not going to be using the Ort Chip Gym Repair Recipe on the weapon, either. That Haraja Cube Recipe is not possible. He leaps, he looks. I don't have any amruns yet, nope. If I had an amrun, I would make spirit. Because I that's all I need to know. Just need one amrun. For a crap ton of fool runes. Nope, no amrun yet, unfortunately. But you're gonna have runes like that. The troll rune it might be different depending on, uh, because you need so many runes, you can get troll on any of them, honestly. The key is that, you know, usually you get trolled on something like Io, I mean, that's a, that's a tough one, right? You just don't get enough Io runes. There we go. Remember, this is a three-part Barbarian Rags for Riches guy, most likely. I, I highly doubt we're going to be able to show everything in two parts. Um, we're already... We're already on nine hours here, and we... In many ways, just started Kiana's farming, so... Yeah, that's not going to happen. There's a lot of stuff to go over in this guide, for sure. <clears throat> Unfortunately, though... Is what it is. It's just a very tough character. Uh, let's see. Lucky? Not lucky. Okay, fine. Alright, so we're just looking for the exits. I'm not looking for elite packs because I'll just kill them along the way if I find them. Not at this point in the game. And more vitality. Both is truly the strength of this class in this particular build, especially. Alright, so one more point to Warcry, just doing more damage. Warcry will just make everything faster. F, F, oh, that's not good. That doesn't really help us at all there. But that does. <coughs> Whoa! That's exactly what I needed. <clears throat> 29 fire is, 12 light is. Oh. That helps for sure. Now, all of our res are max in Nightmare. That's the only res we needed, actually, so there you go. Alright, so now we're even tankier. Not like we really need it too much, but you know, you can see though. Those four, those, four vi those four life points per vitality point are pretty huge. <clears throat> Alright, so what we're going to do now... Let's continue this. <laughs> the only thing we can do is continue it. Sometimes our teleport key gets unbound. I'm not sure why that happens. 
Um, maybe someone knows how to make it stop. I don't think so, though. I remember in bug fixes, they kept trying to make that not happen, and I don't think they've succeeded. Notice, though, with a combination of increased speed, stealth, and a faster unlock charm, we don't even really need faster unlock on boost at this point, but it wouldn't hurt. Of course, if you kept going double throw and you just kept uh, upgrading your weapons, which would be a slower approach, but if you did it, um, you can, at least at this point in the game, right? If you did do it though, you can, uh, you can get that one. Yeah, that, that one. <laughs> you can get Frenzy. Frenzy is a skill, right? So if you get Frenzy, and you use Frenzy. Use Frenzy with your throw weapons. Just like we did at the end of normal. Chat, chats, chats like uh, chats on the edge of the seats, trying to see what are they gonna be the next runes. Gurkies were. Oh, oh, Rose is talking about Gurks, Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Like, wait, there's a Gurks? I mean, uh, I don't know if I could use that, but that's pretty sick. That's riches right there if you find it. Or a socket or death volge. Um, wow. So, technically, I don't even have to use any socket quests yet if I use that. Alright, well, there you have it, chat. No socket quests ne uh, necessary. Don't have to use any socket quests, and I probably won't now. So, what that means is that there's other things you can use socket quests on. Like rares. Like this thing, for instance. Let's try to find some nice items. Who knows? <clears throat> well, socket quests are not required, and that's why we didn't put any socket quests in. That's exactly why we didn't do it, because like I said, you can just find them. And this is a really long farm. Um, the Nightmare Count is fun for them, so... It's, uh... It's, uh, you have a chance to find things on this long farm, you really do. Yeah, I wrote the Windruid guide if you want a direct link, exclamation D2R Windruid. Yeah, I have, uh, I'm the, I'm the guide writer for that one as well. I wrote, like, I have 25 build guides on max roll, so... I didn't write them all. Like, I don't have the Hammered In or the Fist of the Heavens or Blizzard Sword and things like that. But I have a ton of them. I have Javazon. Got a lot of these things. At any rate... Yeah, you can check them out. <clears throat> got Poison Nova Necromancer. Yeah, we got some big ones. But not that one. We also have Berserk Barbarian too, which is pretty huge. We're gonna need the other one though. Got the other ones. So we have a lot of that. We have a lot of guides. Oh come on, really? Yeah, you're gonna get trolled a lot by Countess as well, unfortunately. That's kind of just par for the course, though. Unfortunately, uh, Countess and Nightmare isn't... She's not mandated to drop, like, Nightmare runes. In a lot of cases, she'll just drop normal runes and fall the day. Time to start cubing up? Oh, yeah. Keep all those runes, because you might need them. <laughs> Let's see, what level are we? 36? Okay, yeah, we're fine. This monastery reeks with <clears throat> corruption. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. 
We could find one of the runes with one of the clickables in the tower, or also the ghosts. But we're only really going to focus elite packs, because like focusing an individual ghost or something isn't efficient. It is an interesting thing to note, though. We have 100 mana. That's, that's, that's a good milestone, but unfortunately... Uh, yeah, it's not very good yet. Thank goodness for these really good potions you get later in the game. Right? Otherwise... This is tough. Alright, how many teleports do you have on the staff at the moment? Okay. Um, not enough. Looks like we're gonna be bleeding gold overall. It's fine for now, but... <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep up that gold <laughs> Teleport over walls. Does make some things faster though. Another fool, that's good. Very nice. I guess I'll pick up the Eth. I might need Eths for an Ithra, and I still haven't seen an Ithra. That's kind of nuts, actually. There's only one Eth I'd have to use at this point, but I haven't seen a single one, so. Keeping up an Eth is possible with Ethrings. Really a nightmare? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I'm at, right? I'm almost at 50. Like, 50 to 100 is really kind of what you want, Dr. Sizey. Yeah, exactly. Um, I did emphasize it already a lot in this guide, but if you ever see any items in Magic Find, you pretty much just want to wear them, especially all the way through Nightmare. Because the game's not going to challenge you to where you need your power gear. Mostly just looking to want to be gear. Don't go for pure power in Nightmare. Go for pure power in Hell when you actually need it. And then you can swap to MF gear to finish things off. Rocking 50, and that's a little better than me at the moment. Which is good. Because every MF in the first 100 matters quite a bit. I can't say quite the same for the second 100. By the time we get to the fourth or fifth 100, it matters a little bit. But not as much as you might think. <laughs> so. There's some really insane items you can find at this point in the game, but you don't need to find them, so don't worry about that. <clears throat> like, you could find a Viper Manager, right? And that would be a pretty baller for Warcry, at least initially. You could find a Malrune, and then we could farm a base and make an Oath, and then all of a sudden we have a real Burger in. See, there, there, there are things you can farm, but it's going to take a bit longer. Rags for riches, we don't have any guarantee of finding items like that, because we're just trying to show you how to get rags for riches, not necessarily. Um, getting the riches, especially things like a mountain. It's going to take a while sometimes. Chill hell. Hell rune isn't bad. Um, it's not one of the runes you absolutely need. But one thing to consider is that it only takes three hell runes to make an IO rune. So if you get more than one hell rune, you can use that to make additional blacks or work towards that lum rune. What you need? <clears throat> so it's not the worst thing in the world. Let's see. Are there cube recipes in classic? Not in town. Uh, I believe so. Yes, there are. Um, there are cube recipes in classic. Weeks with evil However, there's not as many. 
one of the ones you would actually only use in classic, which is the one that requires a stone of Jordan to put a socket in the item. And that's because there's no Larzac quest, so... You actually need a stone of Jordan to put a socket in an item in classic. Funny enough, sub chills. Yeah. You would never use that one in You 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 would never use that one in uh LOD. Makes no sense to use it. <sighs> there's some there's some recipes that only make sense in classic actually. Like that one. Hmm. There are other ones too though. Um yeah, there is actually. Um at least for unique items. You can check that out there. Exclamation MFBPs. There's a detailed breakdown of how MF will impact your chance to find a unique item. So like a shaker or something. However, for magic, it's just purely linear magic items. For rare and sets, you get minor diminishing returns, and for uniques, you get heavy diminishing returns. Makes sense, though. Honestly, it's a pretty ingenious system they ended up devising um, for this game later on in this life cycle. It's pretty good. Helps maintain the relevance of the type of item. It's pretty good. Ingenious. <laughs> you know, that'd be cool if you could do that, but you know what's gonna happen? The same thing that happens to Diablo 4 already. People are just gonna data mine everything. Ah, data mining ruins everything. I mean, they gotta be in the files somewhere, right? So then all you have to do is find the files. That'd be cool, though. It'd be cool if you could somehow hide it from prying eyes, but there's no way to do that completely. If you give... by allowing people to download the files, you're already giving them access to them. It's already game over. And obviously they need those to play the game, so... a single room. Oh wow, okay. Let's see how it is, Countess. Seems like the runes we're struggling with the most at the moment are soul runes and am runes. Hmm. It's not good. The order welcomes you. <clears throat> Seems like all the other types of runes are kind of coming along. Those runes aren't coming along at all. That's just how it goes. I mean, we already have an Iron rune, and sometimes that's the rune that you just never find. We found that really early on. <clears throat> Which is interesting. We gives us the opportunity to find more. I'm not super upset by this, because it gives us the opportunity to find more iron runes. But, 
It does mean that the farm will continue for a while. Uh, well, I mean, that's what I've been doing this whole time, Sigmund. Um, if you didn't catch the rest of the stream, you can watch it on YouTube. It would be Barbarian Rags to Riches. You can see just for yourself, you know, whether or not you actually want to do this. Crap. Oh my god, multiple shots. Yeah, multi-shot on um, archers plus my aura. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's dangerous. See how much damage it did? And I, think, I think she only hit me once. Only one of them hit me. Just imagine, though. Well, I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken. Could use some more towels, yeah, I guess. But ore isn't really what we need anymore. I think we have enough of those now. Can't help us make more thools though. Hello. Maybe we'll start making ams out of thools. Yeah, that's that can happen. We'll try to get out of Countess as fast as possible. I mean, that's I know every means possible to get out of here, but the problem is. Good day. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. Um, Countess is not being very nice particularly right now. You could be nicer. Definitely. Probably should stop killing things outside of the tower now. You can get to level 40 pretty comfortably doing this though, but. Probably want to make sure we just find the tower as fast as possible at the very least. Ninety-nine problems and a ninety-nine sin eight one. Or a sork. That was Yeah, it's definitely the hardest class to solo level, but that's exactly what this guide is. Um, it's to show you how to do it. Without, you know. Insanely painful things, but to be honest, there's always going to be a little bit of pain with something like this, so. Comes with the territory. Make sure to keep up your bow at all times if you can. It's really key to making sure you can cast work right at all, honestly. Especially before you get spirit. Yeah, if this is a speed run, this one would be either close to dead or dead at this point. So you need at least one spirit, I think. And then you need a... We do have the IO. We do have the black foot. So that would actually typically be one of the buttons. If you don't have spirit though, it's gonna make the run take so much longer. Aye, aye, aye. Gotta get at least like okay RNG on that. I think we're probably past that on a single spirit. 
But we're going to go past that a bit, though, because you want to be able to farm for riches. This isn't just about completing the game. You definitely can complete the game on very little on a barb if you really want to. You can make it very torturous, but that's not the goal of Rags for Riches. The goal is to build you a barb that's going to farm stuff semi-efficiently for the class. As much as you can do in a limited amount of time. Hey, it looks like we're, looks like the cubing cubing with fools is looking more and more likely. Cubing with fools is looking more and more likely. And you never know, maybe it's the soul rune that just refuses to show up. Let's see. Yeah, because now we have access to about what? Four fools? If we get two more Thules before we get um, two more Ams, that means... And Thules are more common than Ams. Means we're making a spirit using Thules. This monastery reeks with evil and corruption. If it doesn't give me a single soul rune, that's bad too, though. Uh, dude, I've seen, a, I've seen her drop two Ams and a soul in one drop. Uh, that's how it goes there. Countess has chosen control rooms, I see. Well, maybe not. Oh, this is probably gonna take at least another hour. <clears throat> Why do you switch to old game and you buy pots? Because spamming left click can be fast. You can also lift up the belt too, which becomes even better um, the more slots you have in your belt. I sometimes just prefer spam clicking that though. Because the lifting up technique will drop potions on the ground and shit sometimes. I, I, I don't know. There's a lot of way to buy, ways to buy pots. I wouldn't overanalyze it, but um, I've shown a couple techniques for fast buying them. And, I feel like I've done my due diligence. I can answer the same questions multiple times in the video. It gives people a little bit of a refresher, and if they like look at different parts of the video, or even like a different, you know, part of the entire guide. Of course, I do recommend, you know, if you want some of the basic stuff more, uh, to check out part one, which is what this is. It's really going to get you past those basics. I think at this point, a lot of people already know kind of what to do. Rowling? We have been kind of short on Rowling, so... Mm -hmm. I think we're about to hit our limit for Ethrins, though. I don't think we need too many more of those. Where are the Ethrins, though? I don't know. Well, we'll see. What you need? This is the this is the Countess farming life, man. But speedruns die on Nightmare Countess all the time. Nightmare Countess really has a lot of power in terms of how much power your barb will get quickly. These runes aren't easy to find by doing normal cows. We could farm normal cows with Warcry if you want to do something different, but it's still way easier to farm Nightmare Countess. Some of you guys might be wondering that, like, is there somewhere else that's Almost as good? Not quite. 
Yeah, you can find them elsewhere, but significantly less likely. What? You've got to be kidding me. Where's my uh, assassin rags to riches and we need it? Two to trap skill circle it? Oh, goodness. That's bogus. By the way, you notice how they use some of the same hotkeys in D2Rs and D, uh, D4? I feel like they're in training people. How to make the belt show all eight potions instead of four. Um, you have to click the tilde, um, that's the base button that it's on. The tilde is the far left, um, button under a keyboard that is right below the escape key and right next to the number keys. However, you can change that hotkey if you want. It's under show belt. So if I click this button right now, oh sorry, not that button, this button, I'm showing all 12 potions. <clears throat> I don't typically use that button. It's really good for like manually putting potions in though, so it's uh it's good for that. I use it all the time though. That button is called a tilde. It's a symbol. Rare amulet. I was wondering when this, you know, MF is going to start paying off that we have here. Oh, but it didn't pay off. Damn, that's gross. Really? Hey, at least we have two four-socketed crystal swords. That's by no means guaranteed by this point. That is actually very common. To not have to use any socket quests by the time you get your first Amrune. That just shows how unlucky we've gotten with the Amrune, or maybe it's shown how lucky we've gotten with the swords. But either way, I'll take it. Although, teleporting in the middle of as many monsters as possible. That's how you play this. Oh, there's the Soul Rune. There we go. It's becoming more and more likely that we start making. Uh, Am's head of fools now. And we don't need the F. Actually, I'll take one more, but I don't think we need it. We, keep, we found so many Fs from Nightmare Countess so far. So many Fs. But there is a Soul Rin, though. <clears throat> so. Chat, should we make it? Of course we should. Alright, we're gonna make Insight. Or should we wait until we maybe find a better base? I don't know, maybe, you know what, let's just wait till we have pretty much everything that we need to move on, at least for now. Yeah, you know what, let's see. Sorry for getting you guys excited. Yeah, that's how you spell it, I think. Uh, you could trade that day one of ladder. This monastery reeks. I just use I actually use the default button for a lot of things like that. Like W's my weapon swap still. Interestingly enough, by the way, if you guys didn't know, you can farm up to like level 40 or even 50 in normal. Especially if you have high player count. If you really want to stick in normal that long. That would also allow you to make a normal bumper. But, um, since we're just moving on in the game and showing off more stuff. This PD2 Season 7. I think they're aiming for late April. I 
which is fine because it'll give us at least a solid month before Diablo 4 and then probably a D2R launch for the new ladder maybe a bit after that yeah that's fine I wouldn't go later than that though any later than that and I'm not gonna be able to do that much honestly I'd probably just be able to do like one thing it's probably fine though It hasn't been officially announced, but um, late April is what they said was the target for Project Diablo 2 reset. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. And level 39. Believe it or not, we are getting HP. Well, I haven't been putting points in a war cry. That's actually really bad. We're gonna become so much stronger there. Let's like get some spirits and lures and stuff, though. Eh, that's up to Countess, though. But, you know, Countess can drop some other things that are good, too, while she's being a turd on some of these rooms. Ow! Wow, I can't believe this. She dropped that twice. This is so rare. Yeah, I'm mean, getting trolled a little bit, but you know, I'll take it. I used to have one eye rune at minimum for now. I got. You know, there's other things we can do with eye runes. I like a second one, but we already have a hell, so it's good progress for now. We don't need everything all at once, because we're not hell farming yet. Greetings. Yeah, it's a... it's a loss. What's the damage of Warcry currently? Um, I need a bow. I think it's 280 about. That's without any plus skills at all. So... One thing to note is if you want to make your lore, if you can somehow find a two-socketed gray helmet with Warcry skills, it's actually really good. But you can always make another lore later if you just end up finding that perfect base. Don't need to pinch too many pennies on that individual, like, soul rune or whatever. Where are the am runes, like, for real, though? Jesus. You would think I would have gotten at least one by now. That's why we still don't have a spirit sword. Because if I use that, then I'll use up too many full runes. Mm, three socket, three war cry would be good if you can get your hands on an Istanbul Lem and an Io. Delirium? Yeah, that'd be kind of nice. However, the thing about Delirium, though, is it really messes shit up sometimes, so... It's a hit or a miss. But it would be good. Yeah. At some point. Also getting tasty experience. It's getting higher level, you know, all of this is just making the content beyond this easier. Just one of those barbed power firms, you know. Uh 
Um, just buy another one. However, if it has gear on it, make sure you drop the gear that's on your current mercenary before buying another one. Otherwise, it will disappear into the void. I think they finally now have a warning too that tells you that as well. It's like warning, this will happen. That's interesting. I haven't seen a duel yet. That's one third of a hell, though. Interesting. Not useful, but interesting. Not really. Never know, though, when you might need it. Uh, keeping up duels and hells for iron runes is definitely worth it. If we find enough of them. Hello. Don't discount any runes, even if they're not used for any rune words that you need. This monastery reeks with evil. You can always turn three of any rune into another one. Once you hit pull rune, you can even hit two runes into another into the one above it. Nightmare Countess farm on the Barbarian. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be bad, so... Fortunately, I'm not, like, pissed off or anything right now, because... This is totally expected. There's just so many runes we need. Countess control us in so many ways. A lot of potential to get bad RNG. All it takes is like one or two runes and you never get them. You've only gotten one Aya rune so far. I mean, that, that already kind of tells you. And that one, you actually need that one. That's the hardest one to get. You need that one and absolutely need it. Can't get by without it. You have free hell, but no chip diamond. Where can you farm? Um, honestly, normal and Daryl, normal arcane sanctuary, especially if you can get the player kind of. Not before other runes. Bulwark is good, yes, but it's not more important than the classic rune words that you're gonna need. level 40. I think once we hit level 40, maybe 41 or 42, I'll just like start rushing the Countess. At that point, experience isn't that worth it anymore. actually uh, so we can make ort soul as well so that means we have the two souls that we kind of want yes. and at minimum make a basic lore and then we can put this monster on the mercenary which will lead to our res becoming a little shittier but it's okay Wow, this is a... Uh... How do we not have a single amp? I even have two souls now, what the heck? 
<laughs> I have all the crystal swords. Can't do jack with them. So sad. Should have had should have had spirits by now at minimum. My goodness. Well, Countess does do this sometimes. Alright, so Countess has chosen her single troll rune, which is Am rune. Okay. I've seen Shale be a troll rune, I've seen Soul be a troll rune. Even in Rags to Riches, I've seen Soul, I've seen Shale. I've seen Io. Am? I don't know if I've seen that in Rags to Riches per se. I've seen it before though. Not the first time. She has chosen her rune. She's chosen the rune hill to die on. Or... Well, I mean, Ort's only two below him. <laughs> oh, well. That's really good. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. <laughs> our gold is actually still going up. That's a good sign. That's a good sign we're taking care of our gold now. Sigmund, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the cult of Zane, Andrew C. You know, in Legacy, that would actually not be the proper color for that belt. But I know they don't care. <sighs> the bell doesn't have enough life to have any color. Have you guys noticed that a lot of the legacy graphics, quote unquote, are actually not the same? As, like, legacy. This monastery reeks with evil and corruption. It's kind of weird. Oh wow, Firewall? SCR and Firewall? Damn. That's good. That's really good. Alright, so this... At this point, the only thing we really need to get out of the Countess Prison... Is like... Two ams or an am or a fool or something. <laughs> or a ton of words, I don't know, I don't care. Work cubing doesn't even require a chip gem until it gets to fool cubing, so. That had 10 of Sierra 35 mana, then we're talking. I don't think they are, but you know, I've gotten even just two people here today that says they can't go back to PD2 because of it, so, you know, it's... Results may vary, right? Results may vary. Nice, but there's still no Amrun. Look at this! Four runes and there's no <laughs> Well there's another soul. And there's a Thul and an Ort. Alright, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Getting closer. I'll leave the Countess prison. I think we'll find another IO before we find an Am, so at this rate anyway. That might not be a bad thing. Greetings. Might find it later on anyway, but... Oh. 
keep using the space bar. Yeah, Diablo 4 really makes you use that space bar. Doesn't Last Epic also use the space bar or no? Hoi 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 hoi. This farm is brutal. Once we get all these items though, it's gonna be so worth it. A strong barbarian feels good. Alright, so we're level 40 now, which you saw how long it took to get 40 there. I'm actually just gonna push the Countess now. Ignore the monsters. Yeah, it's not really worth sitting down with. So we'll, we'll just kill monsters for their own a nightmare. At level 40, it's pretty good. end up low on gold and then I have to start killing the monsters again, but oh, there's a unique, there's a rare ring there. She dropped one, no way. Alright, we might be fine for now to move on. Let's see what we can make here. Holy crap! Only took what? 40 countess runs for her to drop one? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well. Oh, I didn't pick up the dole. Oh, that could be nice actually. Because now we just need one more dole to make a hell. You know, if we need to farm her again later, we will to demo some really nice techniques. But I think I'm pretty satisfied for what we've done for now. That's a solid Nightmare Countess farm, and I'm sure you guys are sick of it, so... At any rate, if you have to go back and farm her for more of those runes that are really easy for her to drop, like all of those, any rune up till Iom, souls, and everything else, you can totally do it. But what we're gonna do is we are going to make or soul. It's gonna give us mana per kill. It's also gonna give us energy, which isn't really useful, but it helps us a little bit. I'll put that to good use. Then we're gonna put this insane circlet on the mercenary. Our light res is still maxed out, but now the rest of our res isn't so good anymore. Actually, I think we'd be, be fine if I... Oh no, we're just missing cold res, okay. Nice, okay, so we still got good res even after taking off the quad res circlet. We're gonna make everything now. I think, I think we have what it takes to make everything, so this is what we're gonna do. Only problem is, is our res is about to go way down, but I don't care because I just want damage, and I want power. And if you're on hardcore, you definitely may, might want to consider only using one spirit and then using res. That's what I would do personally on hardcore, but you know, we're not on hardcore so you don't have to. We have two four socketed swords. <sighs> Hmm, it's a plus three skill. Oh, I guess I'm not. Oh, our res is going to be a lot better then. Okay. <laughs> I forgot we have the cheating skill in this character. 
Ah, uh, yes, the cheating will come through. All right, what meditation on the insight, chat? I guess it will be somewhere between 12 and 17 meditation. Router, tell, soul. That's how you make insight. Lore is or soul. This is really good for war cry. Not so good for like any physical damage build, but it's really good for war cry. Um, we got stealth still for mostly faster cast rate. We don't have a lum yet, but honestly, you shouldn't expect to have one yet. You could though. It's possible. I don't really care about. Oh, it's 16 with... Oh, man. That's a really good roll for such a shitty insight. It's just an F bulge. Well, that's all right. We put that to good use. Okay, so my mercenary now has good res now, too, because of the circlet, and he has insight. Big upgrades on the mercenary coming through. Definitely looking good. And more mercenary upgrades coming in a bit. And then guess both of the spirit rolls. Let's see if someone can do it. Guess both of the spirit rolls. Does level of meditation matter that much? Help you? Not really. Matters a little bit though. Oh shoot, are you kidding me? Dang. What is this? Maybe we just use a 34 MF boots for now, honestly. I think that's what I'm going to do, because I just want more MF. Yeah, eh, that's a good idea, okay. Because you don't have half freeze duration, but if we make Rhyme, we'll have that. So there's a lot of other gear we can use for bosses, so we have Shale, F, this is cannot be frozen, we use this along with Black. And then black is Thule Ionef. Um, which we're going to make now because we're going to need it very soon. I believe it's Thule Ionef, right, chat? <sighs> There's no variability on this. We're making a lot of rune words right now. Um, I'm not going to make a second black yet, but it would be pretty cool to show off a second one. So hopefully we get at least another Io rune. Can I take you? Somewhere. It's still Ionef, right? I don't know. Definitely, right? It's gotta be. I know it is. Black D2. Yeah, it's still Ionef. Yeah, okay. Still Ionef, and you want that in a flail once again. You put it in a slower base, it's gonna suck. Really want that in a flail. Um, a lot of people might be wondering, will something else work? Not really. Well, so yeah, you're really gonna want that in a flail. So we have our black rhyme combo with concentration. So concentrate, that's really good. That's something we definitely want. And honestly, we're not going to make any of that crap. Maybe we'll keep the two socket in one just in case we want to make that, but we're already light on full runes, so I don't see that happening. All right, Tal. Tal. Full. Full or it or it am and then we're missing an am so we need to combine do I have enough of these to do it? I don't know if we do honestly uh oop that's what I thought. 29, okay. Well, that's, that's doable. 29. Uh, if the other one rolls 31 or above, that's actually going to be very helpful for hitting 105 of CR. 
but we can't even roll it yet because we are wordless and we are foolish. We are everything we needless. All right, so we need a Thul or one Thul or three Orts. Okay, I guess I got more Countess to farm. I thought maybe we had enough. I don't know. I farmed so much, I wasn't doing math. That's okay, we'll put back on the, uh, I'll actually put on the Rhyme for now, and then use that. Need one Thul or one Amaran at this point. That would, that would trigger it. Um... We have one fool though, I would need a cube. A bunch of Rao runes, which I probably also don't have. Cube everything! Okay, a little more count is farming. But the good news is, the nightmare is almost done. 74 faster cast rate means that we can also take off one of these FCR rings. And I guess I can put on the half reservation one with. Light res and MF. Put on the MF ring. There you go. And now my MF is 95 temporarily. Cool. All right. Well, that's a big upgrade at least. So we just did a massive upgrade. All we need now is like one or two more runes, and then I'll I'll go. Damn. Not there yet. I should baited everybody. <laughs> A recipe to downgrade runes would be nice. So oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can get one fool. Uh, I can't get more than one fool by cubing up orts. And not only that, if I did that, I wouldn't have any orts anyway. So it looks like we need like a couple more runes. Or just an amrun. Hey, you know, it gives me an amrun. Simple as that. But now War Cry does 349 damage. And we have Meditation, which means you really don't need as many healing potions. I mean, uh, mana potions. Still need mana potions, though. How much health this give you? Just need the spirit. Spirit will scale natural res though. Now see, that's the thing is you need so many runes to do this. The good news though is despite needing all those runes, I have most of them. I don't get the IO rune I'm looking for. this reflex bow that was a really bad find for the countess tower it's all right we don't have to kill any monsters i don't even know why i'm killing any reflexes okay so double spirit sword stealth lore and insight that's the dream and it looks like we're about to have it all ready because we found so many bases. That's actually really big. What is this? Well, I mean, I guess if I need the mana and the all res later on, but I don't see that happening. Dude, what's with all the Necromancer stuff? Man, that would have been solid Necromancer-wise. Look at this shit. Two to Necromancer skill. Not getting that guard on me. Oh. 
Fine, I'll kill your ghosts. Give me a rune. Yeah, usually when I kill the ghosts, they actually give me one of the runes I need, but they were they weren't very nice. That was a long count as far. Impossible. Impossible. Let's see if this gives us to us. Was it worth it? It was. GG. Game over. There we go. See, was that so hard to drop two Amruns? She takes 40 to drop one, and then she drops two in a row. It's Diablo 2 RNG for you, man. It's a, it's a quick lesson. And we barely hit 31! Dude, that's actually awesome, because that means now... Only takes 10 FCR... To hit... 105, so now we have 105 FCR. GG, we barely hit it, barely, that was close. 31 and 29. All right, 105 FCR. That is a second to highest break point. Greetings. So now we just hit a higher break point for it as well. And the only way that's ever worth it is if you actually have an insight anyway, so. Yes. Let's do it. Warcry 3 blue amulet, I'd take that 100%. That would be GG. But I don't know about that one. This monastery reeks with evil and corruption. Good luck, good luck. Or rather not terrible luck. It's actually, if you look at these two, this is actually perfectly average spirit luck right here. Interesting. Take it. See if you get 135, then you can actually make do with a 25 on the other one. But Look at that power! Alright, so we have about 400 Warcry damage now. That's nothing, of course, so we're gonna get a lot more. Damage is doubled pretty much. Over doubled since coming to Nightmare. Look at this Malice. So, as you can see now, our damage doesn't look so pathetic anymore. And now the Barbarian is ready to rock and roll. It's definitely things we still don't have, but that's okay. The other thing is now that we have plus five skills here, two, two, and five. We just got plus five skills. We have level. I don't even have max level <laughs> Warcry. Right 400 damage Warcry and Warcry itself isn't max. That's a good sign. So yeah, this is what you want. No one should ever. Ideally 105 FCR, if for some reason you don't have enough FCR jewelry plus the spirits and all this, it would be whatever. That would be kind of sad, but it can't happen. So you just gotta make do until you get something. Then you get heavy use of all that FCR. Definitely need at least two pieces of FCR jewelry though. Unless you get 235 spirits and then you'll need one. Good luck rolling 235 spirits, then they one on the ladder or something. Not gonna happen. Alright, so we're gonna go straight ahead. We're actually pushing the boss now. And you might think, are we actually equipped to fight Daryl? Yes, we are. We get frozen. Right now we can use a thawing potion. Once we fight bosses, we have rhyme. We use concentrate. We don't have two iron runes yet, but if we did, it's possible to go double black. Which, even or not, but 
And now the game is easy, right? You know, this is... This is a... It's gonna be easy for a while here. But we're not even close to maxed out damage. So. Getting a huge amount of damage every level now. We're getting like 30 Warcry damage, so it's... Yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the other thing. A three Warcry, two Socket, a Greyhelm would be insane. We have a spare or Soul Rune, too, so. That would actually be pretty good. Is Barb's ready to get some riches? Pretty much. Hey Rose, I'm surprised he's still awake. If you're still around in a bit. Um, two to poison and bone skills. Again! More necromancer amulets and weapons. Nice. I would have had like 35 skills on a necromancer already from what I've seen. Jesus. Well, that would have made it easy. Wouldn't matter if it was PMB or something. Could have had either one. It's not rags to riches necromancer though. Yeah, can you check to make sure my stream doesn't go over 12 hours? Yeah. <laughs> Did you already know what I was gonna say? Yeah. Make sure it doesn't go over like 11 hours 40 minutes actually because a limit for that. You actually have to cut out some of the guide, and that would be good. So, as you can see, finishing the Countess on this character takes forever. Um, some of the other classes would have been done two hours ago. Um, Sorceress would have been done <laughs> at least like four or five hours ago. And that's just the Countess farm. Now RNG, you know, notwithstanding, you know, that's that is that is at least the minimal countess farm because I could have kept farming for eye runes. So keep that in mind that that's not even everything I could potentially use on this build later on. And if you're playing a uh, hardcore, highly recommend getting a smoke before you start playing around at all. <clears throat> if not, you can it can take some liberties, but. Wow, that's interesting. It's facing to the left, but behind it. Only I knew. I could have just gone behind there. I always forget to check right behind, you know? I should check that more often. Yeah, keep picking up blue amulets and rings. I mean, the rings I'm using are really weak. They're just basic FCR rings. One of them does have some mana, though. It's not useless, but... Oh, nice. There's more of those canoes there. I am overburdened. Mm -mm -mm. Serpent skin armor. That's a good base for a uh, smoke if we have to get one. Let's see what happens in this playthrough. Let's see how hard it is to get a, lum a lumrin. I'll just farm Hell Countess, honestly. Hell Countess will give it to us at some point. <laughs> I love how the only death in this one was to baby Sandmaggots. <laughs> dude, that was so dumb, dude. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. That was the laziest death I've ever seen. I was like, I'm fine, there's no monsters in here, I'm poisoned, I'll go down to one and I'll survive. No. Oh well, you don't do that on hardcore, man. I don't take chances like that. Because I know better, it I can happen, but more. I was so rigged though. It's like the most rigged death I've ever seen. We could definitely use way more MF on an amulet, that could be huge right now. 
Alright, we're checking the outside for Catacombs 2. Once again, no discrete pattern in this map. Honestly, we don't really care about Amp at this stage. Um, we are like over leveled at this point. Um, but the nice part is that you can over level pretty fast in Canis. Uh, level are we 41? One more level and we can use skill GCs if we could use them. But we can't. Look at all these. Honestly, we already have some riches in the form of these necromancer items. My goodness. Let's trade them to some Necros. Now, to be fair, Necromancers aren't the most valuable items, or not the most valuable items, but... Hey, I'm sure some starting Necros would use them just fine. I had light too, though. Already getting these heavy plus two. Image is getting good. Unfortunately, though, at some point the damage starts feeling shitty again. And, uh. The part is not too far beyond this. Since this is one of the farms outside of Nightmare Countess where you can start getting rich and you get the waypoint, we're going to do it a few times. This is a Nightmare and Dario farm. Believe it or not, you can farm it. I'm a War Cry Barbarian. But this is definitely some of the low hanging fruit. Alright, it's going to be down here, so it's got to be to the the left of where that's pointing. It's probably down here. Or it's just over here. Huh, that works. Left pointing, west facing, east facing, right facing is where three is from the waypoint. That's a system for world stone as well. I've seen it a few times. Three mana per kill jewel. And yeah, he killed more things. I do have insight though, so that's not bad. So you guys might be wondering, what do you even upgrade from here in a Warcry Barb? Uh, double Hodo. Um, you can also wear Insight and then use Reaper's Toll, or um, Reaper's Toll would be the best, but you can also use Lawbringer. Decrep will reduce physical resistance. So something I haven't mentioned yet is Warcry is physical damage, just like throw. Barb pretty much only knows how to do physical damage. Anything with stone skin. Uh, oh, my right button hotkey there. Attacking with concentrate randomly. Remember before you face a boss to lower the player count back down to players one. If you have been power level and a high player count, on single player.
Good evening. Hello. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, man, that was dumb. I turned off my mic because I thought I was going to sneeze. I ended up not. Okay, anyway, I was going to say that we have most of our gear required for hell at this point, believe it or not. Make sure you put it into players one if you're doing P8 for uh, farming experience along the way. Single player and kill and burial and players one, or at least players three. I was also going to say that surprisingly Warcry is doing well against Dario. Nah, I was th th this is all the stuff I was talking about right now. Uh, I just, you know, I done goofed. I left it off since I almost sneezed. It was about like a minute or so ago. It's not a big deal. Alright, so we'll do is this. You guys probably do want to see the concentration approach though, right? But no, I don't absolutely need it at this point, but you can use it. You're definitely going to need this in hell, but it's okay. Oh shoot. So we're using Black Flail and Rhyme, and then we're using Battle Cry, and we're using Concentrate to lower her health. This is how you would kill bosses. However, as you can see, we have so much damage with the work right now that Nightmare bosses really can't survive, but it doesn't really matter. You could just go in like this at the moment. See, not too hard. You at least need double spirit, or you need black to get past Nightmare and Burial. So I did misspeak. Uh, I did misspeak earlier, but you need something like that. You need a. <laughs> otherwise, it's gonna take a really long time. Uh, that's a decent. That's a decent pair of boots. I'll, I'll hold on to it, I suppose, for now. Good evening. Fucking ads. Oh yeah. So as you can see, this isn't going to become super important yet. But it's going to get even worse in hell. And Warcry is going to become extremely non-effective. More vitality though for now. More war cry. Hmm. Is there any like quick gloves you can grab? Nightmare gloves are really good, but it's easier to farm them once you make a cow portal, which you can't do yet in Nightmare. That will require killing Nightmare Bale. Which, strangely enough, will be a lot easier than killing normal Bale ever was. Under any circumstances. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Where can I take you? So, I'm wondering how far we should push here with this. So, typically at the end of part one, um, we get to the end of Nightmare, and then we start farming, or we're already done with the end of Nightmare, or something like that. I don't think we're going to get through that much in this amount of time. But we might get to the end of Nightmare before we start preparing for hell, so... That would be nice, I guess. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna kill... Radiment. Again, get those plus skills. Worry about killing Blood Raven ever. Do anything. Alright, so remember 
Sewers 2 is typically, wow, this is the same map as the one we got normal. Typically on either the immediate left or right. We've gotten lucky both times. I might not even bother with the whole black fuel business yet because currently Warcry damage is a bit much, I think, for this part of the game. Also, might even not want to do it for Duriel because he'll slow down our attacks. Let's see. I am totally good with this, though. Switch to lead, please. Okay. That's a weird map we had, by the way. It's supposed to be straight ahead from like the entrance direction in Sewers 2. One thing to note is that you can always use your teleport staff to get the mercenary where you are, but Leap does not do that. It's actually a good. Uh... It's one reason to get Leap attack. Save on some trouble, dude. Yeah, we really don't need the. Uh... Yeah, we'll just use War Cry Pure for a while. Thanks. It's got plenty of juice. Okay. Negative 92% enemy defense. It's really good. It means we need basically no AR to hit anything. And if we get some attacks rating rings, like a couple of basics, actually be kind of nice. And that one point we put in a mace mastery, you'll see it actually gives us some attack rating there. Some attack rating. I'm actually going to rebuy the Merc though. Uh, I'm going to go back to... Hmm, if I can do it. Or not. Balls, dude. It's always the one mercenary you're looking for they don't have sometimes. Especially a nightmare. Let's look at a nightmare. All the mercenary types spawn, and it's just like... Why, dude? Yeah, I know where it is at the moment, but yeah. It's possible, though, that I lose track of it. Insight, Meditation Aura, that mana regen, plus all the mana from Double Spirits is so good. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually going to get Blessed Aim. It can help for... I'll put that to good use. I'll put that to good use. I'll put that to good use. Couple of those incidents there. Strangely enough, Barbarian's one character, we really, really don't have to get a lower resist wand at all from Drognan. You might know from my other Rags for Riches guides, it's like a staple. But this one? Nope. Totally clear. What is with all these unique cast pieces? He wants me to go some janky whirlwind, I suppose. Except they don't have attack rating, so good luck with that. 
<laughs> so yeah, we amplify damage, and typically this could be worrying in night later on in Nightmare and Hell. I have so much health right now, and I'm not playing hardcore, so it's fine. Really surprising how tanky you can get just past level 40. And note that our res isn't even terrible because of natural res and all the extra points into it. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible. Definitely relying a lot on this belt or natural res and I res small charms here. Don't need to do the cube again, so the only thing you need to do in Nightmare is find the Far Oasis. Yeah, so that's always good. You already have a cube, you can only have one. Nightmare cubes aren't better than normal cubes. Aren't better than Hell cubes. There's always superstitions though, so, you know, do whatever you want, I suppose. <laughs> always superstitions. <laughs> I mean, that's just one of them. There's a lot of superstitions in this game. RNG makes people go batshit crazy. Proven. I wonder if we're gonna get the beetle mug. Well, I don't need to care if it's uh, software. But... That'd be funny. We do have stun. There are beetles. There's potential. Alright, so we need to find Maggot Lair, or at least the waypoint for Far Oasis. Let's see which one we can find here. Oh, what do you know? Did find Lost City though, so we're gonna put a TP there. I can't. Go to Lost City. Maybe find the waypoint first. See where the waypoint is. A bird specifically, uh, lower cross cannot be beaten. However, if you're looking for a whole medley of runes, Arcane and Travancol, in the realm of Chams and Jaw runes, plus the birds up competing very nicely. But if you're just like trying to get an infinity going, like on your single player or something, that's a, that's a pretty good approach. Pretty good approach, man. Yeah, what's your build, man? Okay, so... <laughs> you found the Viper Temple. Getting very badly at finding waypoints, so... See any elite packs, of course you can kill them. There we go. That's close enough to the Viper Temple that we'll just go in the Maggot Lair. We have enough teleport charges, maybe. Let's see how liberal we we're gonna want to be here at the teleport charges, though. <clears throat> you can see pushing through the game is so much faster than all these farms you have to do. Make the barb strong.
I got the scepter, it's a paladin the scepter. that for that right or east facing tile and maggot layer until we get to three once again i remember this from the normal segment straight ahead if you can and wow that was really straight ahead. connection though Need infinity. Um, I have a pit zerker and a light sorceress with griffins. Oh, sounds like you need bird runes then, so LK super chest it is if you really want to do it. Just just note that you don't have to do that farm, it's just the most efficient for bird and surunes. Bird runes at players 5, surunes at players 7. Never forced to do it though. You can always come back. Okay, oops. Alright, we got the amulet in our sights as well. The rest of Act 2 is gonna go pretty fast, I think, here. I think we might be able to get that to Act 5 or at least close. It doesn't take too long at this point in the game, because you just have You did all the you did all the, the um has never did all the here. prep work here. You really have to do. No, it's just a matter of getting through the game, getting rich, and learning about different strats on the barb to do so. All the way to the left. To know that the sun shines once again. <sighs> Ancient Arbor. That sells decently. Gotta sell all this crap so we can maintain our teleport charges. Yeah, 100% Rose. And you don't even need infinity to do that. That's the best part. To see you. <sighs> I do a physical abuse in hell. Do you skip it? There's a couple ways on the barb. You can go Grimward. Physical Sender will help out Grimward and things like that. Um. And then. You can also go Amplify Damage or Decrepify from like Lawbringer or uh, Reaper's Toll. Or, heck, even brand, I suppose, but that'd be pretty troll. You're never getting a brand in one of these playthroughs, I'll tell you that much, though. A Reaper's Toll is possible, but unlikely. Hey, Lobringer is possible. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Oh, great. You may. I... Good day. Uh, I need to talk to Drogdon. Well, make sure to talk to Drogdon if you want the power cellar. If you don't want the power cellar, don't do it. And you get stuck. Tro la 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 la. Okay, anyway. Straight across. Straight across. Straight across. 
the middle, to the middle one. So now that we have a teleport staff, we can just go directly into the middle if we want. And also look for uh, these dudes here and get some experience. Fire eyes, is super unique and always spawns here. That's what I was looking for in normal as well. Kind of nice to kill. One could get lost in here. Dude, this stream is super long, man. Why use Lawbringer? Decrepify. And Sanctuary Word to some extent. Decrepify will break physical. And if you do that with Bone Break, you actually get the full force of it, which is insane. A lot of people think Bone Break is bad. It's actually not. <sighs> A soul ring? Seriously? Wow. It's pretty insane. Teleports, no. Uh, we're really bleeding it dry a bit here. Being a little crazy with this stuff. Uh. Uh. It's not this way, it sucks. having the human rune scratches. Alright, uh, I'll trade a four dex for a five dex large run, I guess. Done. I'm not gonna put on two of those things though at this point. Ah. Alright, three way, let's go. <sighs> yeah, because you get the full impact of amp and decrep. Heck, not even lower res conviction and full mastery can do that. It doesn't go for a burr on the hardcore though. I'm sure it does on softcore though, but everything's worthless on softcore, so. <laughs> At least item wise. Everything's the same value. Pinch and pennies. Alright, we just got a. a four way arcane. It's, um, it's not good. It's not going to help with finishing the game for sure. Not quickly. Which shape is missing? Uh, square. Am I rich yet? I wouldn't say so, but we have solid items, so we're ready to get rich. Holy crap. Okay, maybe jumping into a pack of Urdars with amplify damage when they're extra strong isn't a good idea. It's a demonstration of my power though. I was able to uh, handle that with that done. 
You know that looking boss. Who wouldn't want to visit the harem? Mm. Mm, that's true. Alright, let's see if we actually need a... It's definitely getting tough. We can do the just pure war cry, but you can see how slow it is. I think against Mephisto, we're definitely breaking out the, uh, the other stuff that I have. Pretty bad. much cold res. I could put on a uh, line potions and it would help. I don't need it. So much health for him to eat through. Wow. What is this? Dang. 6% chance to cast level 1 amplify damage on striking. There you go. There's the amp prop you're looking for. And there is a very nice gloves. Oh I already did throw. No. I have failed. The idea is to use semi meta or meta strats throughout the whole way. Unfortunately, once you get to level 32, there's nothing more meta than Warcry, so. Here we are. Idea is to get rich as fast as possible in the barb, not just to do a playthrough. This is barbarian. Rags to riches. Can't even know. Oh, we have attacker takes damage. Okay, I see. Oh. I actually do think it probably would have been worth to do a concentrate there. It would have died a lot faster. Anyway, Duriel is not a farm. As a matter of fact, there's no farms in Nightmare Act 2. It's a pass-through area. That's really going to get you rich fast. Once you hit Nightmare Act 3, though, there's Nightmare Mephisto at the end. And honestly, that's pretty much it for anything that's Super standard or good. Oh, I don't give a shit. Yeah, but I'm just like going in this so now. Trying to do more video here then, if possible. One of these grottos has our spider cavern. One of these grottos is garbage. One of them has the waypoint. This one has the waypoint. Oh, <sighs> That's always nice to find. Anyone ever complained about experience run? It's one thing to notice when you change difficulties, not only do you lose resistances, but the monsters of course get stronger, and elites now spawn with an extra stat. It creates some more situations where you can just die suddenly. Alright, 
that's the useless grotto. Good RNG, Kappa. Alright, so Warcry Barb is actually a beast in Nightmare Flare Jungle. We're not gonna have to worry about a lot of things, honestly. A lot of other classes might have to worry about being swarmed by massive amounts of low HP enemies. But one thing that a Warcry Barbarian doesn't have to worry about is exactly that. That's what he loves to see. Of course in hell you could farm Flare Jungle, it's possible. What do you think is the best starting build for a Hardcore Paladin? Holy Fire... Into hammers. And then you can either stay hammers or go foe. We show a number of different approaches in Paladin Rags for Riches, so if you want to check that out, exclamation R2R Pally. And we also show how to get to Ubers as fast as possible. That was Fire Enchant, my goodness. Now, I know I don't have huge fire res, but Fire Enchant does a ton of damage in Nightmare. Fire Enchant Explosion is just insane. Alright, War Crown almost does 500 damage. Hey, that's the kind of OMG I'm talking about. Checking the last connecting area of the last grotto just after getting the eye and hitting clear. That's not bad. That's actually not a cap of good RNG. That's just a good RNG. Let's see if this is another one. I'm so curious. Okay. I was gonna say three four socketing crystal swords. Start selling them then. Let's get rich that way. Selling them day one of ladder is gonna gonna make something. <laughs> Uh, Grand Charm, got the flare, we got the uh, Jade Figurine, that's good, got a 3 socket, a decent defense armor, that could be used to upgrade the mercenary's armor if need be, might be, need to be. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Okay. I think we'll find what we needed to at all, actually, then we just need to go back. Find a waypoint, then we find the quest area. What we could do is let... is put down a TP there, and then we'll go back. I wasn't paying attention. Hacky! Thanks so much for the fall, welcome to the Colts Animal Stay. At this point in the run, I'm, I kind of zone out sometimes. It's like, eh... Yeah. We, we, we know what to do. But we're not done though. There's plenty of other items you can farm up to make our uh, job so much easier. <laughs> I am overburdened. I am not rich yet. I can't warning, warning. Full damage, maximum damage. That's not going to give us anything. One interesting thing to note is you can farm the super chests in Nightmare Lower Crossed for skill GCs, as it's one of the highest in your areas for skill GCs in the game. I can't Obviously, they can't get insane stats in Nightmare, like 40 life and 41 plus life, and not even 36 plus life. But they can get things like FHR, they can get decent amounts of life. Surprisingly good. They get the cross bizarre waypoint though, which is nice. 
Not in town. Hmm. Complete noob question. About to kill Bale for the very first time. And I start at the end cinematic and stay normal to do the cow level. Um, so here's the thing. If you kill Bale and get the Bale cinematic, you will be able to enter Nightmare no matter what. And you can no longer be a bumper for normal Bale. You cannot kill Bale. You can kill Ancients, but not Bale. Um, I don't know if that's what you mean. Are you going to be, like, put into Nightmare? No. But remember, though, D2R has a tour you can actually search games from previous difficulties. So it's not like it's a bad thing to go to Nightmare. You can just go back to normal. Cinematic will not put you in Nightmare, though. Um, oh, it will end in the uh, Deckard Kane screen congratulating you and giving you a title. So uh, after that, you can go to Nightmare or Normal or whatever you want. <laughs> and then you have to you're 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 put back into the character screen after that. <clears throat> the character select screen. All right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, don't worry about that, man. Unless you're trying to make some kind of a character to help other like level ones get the quest, I wouldn't worry about it. All right, we got the potion. Turn it in. More life. Why not? This character, <laughs> this one thing is not lacking. There's another attack rating ring, but it's not a good one. I'm hoping we can get some better ones soon. All right, so now what we're gonna do, as you can see, we're really, we're really gunning. We're, we are boosting through the game right now. Um, it's really nitro level once you get all these like nightmare countess rumors squared away. Um, there's no guarantee at this point you have like insight like two spirits Because um, you might not find a single four socket sword Then you have to wait till the end of nightmare to get a second spirit might even have to wait till the end of hill to get an insight But that's unlikely typically at least in normal uh, nightmare cows will find four socket of forms but at the very least um, It is nice to have everything at this point for sure And there's no problem in actually achieving that. Oh. Rip. I uh, teleport shirts. Oh yeah. You can always go back to the previous difficulty after completing the one before it. The cinematic has nothing to do with it. Hopefully, uh... Gives you some peace of mind there. No, I can go back to normal my level 99 assassin, you know? There might not be a lot of reasons to do that. Maybe I'm rushing people, but that's about it. Totally can Is that angelic ring? <sighs> No. What the heck? Half of you dirty fail. Left control click. We'll drop the item by the way. All right, we don't need the waypoint anyway, so this is good. Just find the Gibden, find the dungeon. Go back to the cross bizarre waypoint. This is the same thing we did in normal. No one should be surprised what's going on here. This Missed some of the basics that we went over in this cool. act of the game. You can go over them again in normal. Hello. Also, at this point in this video, I'm pretty tired. There's a lot of places to go over it. But yeah. Anyway, remember, you can always put a TP down and then go forward and then find a waypoint further on in the game and go back. Damn, my, my rare ring luck has been total boo-boo. 
this playthrough like total boo boo. Just greetings. Wow. Okay, well there's some attack reading on it, I guess. Jeez. I, I don't even know. Like uh, some of this RNG is fine. Or even good. Some of it's bad, but that's like really bad. I'd say this is a very like average run overall at the moment. Right, to the left, to the left. One yell this time, bam. One yell this time, bam. One yell this time, bam, bam, bam. Leave, 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 leave. Watch out. Alright, we're doing this. We got this crap. Those are dolls, be very careful. I have so much health that I'm kind of ignoring them a little bit, but... Um, Nightmare Tolls hit really hard. If there's enough of them, you can die even with this much HP. Um, make sure to kill them on the edge, kill them one at a time. It's actually a real danger to this character. At this point in the game. It's an actual danger, you know, not a... Not an imaginary one. Or a, uh, partial danger, you know, it's, it's a real danger. Dolls are insane. When they explode, they do a huge amount of physical damage they can crit. Um, based on how much health they have, and in Nightmare and Hell, they have a lot of health. They, uh, they rip you to shreds. Okay, so now we got the brain. Now we can get the book and the heart. The book is in that. Temple facing towards Upper Cross and Lord of Light. I can't carry anymore. Well, it's looking pretty good. I'll take it. Here's the book. Five free stats. By the way, if you don't know how the uh, Potion of Life spawns, how Jade Talon spawns, no, sorry, Jade Figurine, uh, there's a 50% chance for some kind of elite monster or champion to drop it. So it's typ you're typically going to find it pretty early on. I remember when it was at 33%, though, sometimes it was pretty frustrating. Sometimes it would take a really long time. Get it, and it wouldn't even spawn until Travancle in some cases. It's pretty wild, but it can happen. Wow, I found it immediately. GG map right there. GGmaps.com. Jump over the wall, find it on the edge of the map somewhere, but find it immediately. And find. Very good. RMG's starting to look a little better in this act in general. Good evening. As in, it's good. I would love a good rags to riches. Well, this is the last one I haven't made, so. May this book lift the shadow from After this, if I do long runs like this, they're just gonna be challenge runs. Good to see you. Uh, well, no pressure, because now at least they have this series done. You know, once you start a series like this, a lot of people are like, when's the last one? When's the next one? You know? When are you going to do this class? When are you going to do this class? Well, here you go. Barbarian. In the flesh. I'm going to put in my stats or skills in a bit here. Oh, just the stats. So one thing about this character is that you can kind of get away with booty resistances on your gear because you have resistances from 
natural resistance. But keep in mind that even if you have no resist on your gear, you can still die, so. You still don't have enough res. I also have so much health, too. Definitely really. What? Plague Bear? I'm not making a lady sword. Neither is anyone else. That is not a riches, that's useless. Are you kidding me? Did that just drop? Mamma mia. Just got a Plague Bear unique rune sword. Not useful for any purpose, for selling or using or anything. Unless you decide to make a rabies druid and just do cows forever. For all of eternity. That's pretty much that's all that's gonna get done there. Alright, we got the waypoint. Be careful for the fire enchantment. He has a lot of health, so that explosion is kind of similar to the, uh, the doll explosion. You can see though. Oh wow, there was, just as I mentioned it, that was the fire enchant right there. Oh my god. No! We're doing so well, and now I'm gonna die. This fire enchant too. The dark powers Wasn't here close enough. No longer poison the land. Only got hit by the uh, frost note. Try to stay out of range if you can of that though. That is nasty stuff. Put it on your op oh, put it on your weapon swap. Swap out your staff, put your staff back in. No! Hey. Swablish! What's up, man? Ten months as a member of Xena's attack squad, the ghost of the machine, the Arcan Disciples. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. I'm not using you for opening the cube. You know, I could reset that hotkey, but I'm not used to opening the cube like that with the hotkey. Maybe I should. I don't know. More hotkeys, right? Anyway, that was pretty easy, and now it's just Mephisto. Okay, we have five teleports. There's dolls in this one. I want to go immediately left. You know, we might actually just stop on Mephisto, and then farm some Mephisto and Dario for a bit. To simulate farming those. I didn't I didn't do the Endorial farm really. I said I was going to, but I didn't. And we're gonna farm some bosses with a barbarian already. And you might think, what? You can already farm bosses and it doesn't take a billion years? Yeah, that's right. It's all about making sure you have all these items in place. <laughs> This is LOD. Um, classic is a lot tougher. Um, imagine playing a barb in classic and you have none of these ring words <laughs> or anything. All you can use is some 20 F Sierra wands. Oh, it's painful. You can get it done eventually, but you're gonna have to do a lot of farming. Need that bone snap ball. Maybe some other stuff too. Yeah, that's um that's a really painful thing, and honestly, there's not enough of an audience for that. Well, maybe for the pain aspect, but not the uh, you know, pushing a barbarian through classic. That's a that'd be interesting though. 
Ugh. Maybe we'll do some classic challenge runs soon. Yeah, maybe that's that's what we need to do. It's so long since I played classic. Could be kind of fun. Alright, waypoint is to the west of where the entrance is facing for two. That means from the entrance straight ahead, it's also to the west of the waypoint. Found it without much incident. So I think what we're actually gonna do now here is because we're kind of coming up on our limit here. We haven't totally finished Nightmare, but what we're gonna do here is really gonna hone in on those really good Nightmare boss farms. And then we are going to tomorrow finish pushing Nightmare and then we start prepping for her. It's still possible, by the way, that we can do this in two segments, but I don't know. I might. I think doing this in two segments is definitely possible. Good day. Good day. Doing this kind of a guided playthrough. How you doing, Swaddleish Man? Alright, so what we're gonna do... Honestly, get a black. All right, so this is all you need: a black and a run. Get him with battle crying. Keep battle crying him. Look at those chunks. This really makes a big difference. This also makes it possible to farm him semi-efficiently. So even though we have like no attack rating, I mean I just have like 1600. We have 50% chance, we're actually hitting a lot more than that because of battle uh, battle play. Okay, once he gets low, we finish him off like that. Maybe now. What? Will have peace. Spectral shard. Oh wow. Um. Well, that could allow us to get FCR and not use the FCR rings. That's actually really sick. Uh, but we're probably gonna keep using spirits for now. But that is an option though, so. Spectral Shard is the lowest level item that grants 50% faster cast rate. It also has a lot of mana and resistances. Also, we happen to find a bunch of other things here that you might recognize, such as a Saigon's. This is pretty rare, actually. Chromatic Ire. If you found this in the very beginning of Ladder, actually, um, that would be worth something. So, already Hello. Mephisto dropping some riches. Not too surprising, but... A little bit. That's pretty cool. Um, wow. Two good ones. Even finding a Saigon Helm, which is definitely worth something in the beginning of Ladder. Very nice. So already we're farming Nightmare and Mephisto and Nightmare Andy, no problem. And, uh, yeah. It's pretty good. Assassin Claws like never sell for anything, so don't worry about those. I think I don't know if I mentioned that. They have plus skills, but only later. And so typically, they don't sell for nothing. Alright, however, make sure after you kill Mephisto to hit the super chest behind him, and then make sure to always go through the red portal to get Act 4, because it's a lot better than going down the Walk of Shame. Want to make sure you're in Act 4. <clears throat> so that you can easily access the waypoint and then access Durance 2. Since we already found the Durance 2 waypoint, this is pretty easy. So what we're going to do now, we're actually going to make sure we sell most of everything he drops so we can maintain our gold. 
And we're going to use our teleport staff to somewhat efficiently farm Nightmare Mephisto on a Barbarian. And to be fair, as you can see with that, he is still the slowest boss killer in the game until he gets more items. Um, this is not what I would say his forte, but his forte is pretty tough to begin with. So he's definitely going to struggle a little bit here. But we're going to go immediately I left can to the already rest tell of the that I'll be your best friend in this That's how you find Mephisto. Game. And sure enough, this one was immediately to the left. That's always nice. That just happened. Or it didn't happen in the last map. No, the map was pretty much... Eh, the last map was pretty good, actually. Alright. One thing to note is my cold res is garbage, so it's a good thing I have this cannot be frozen here, because otherwise Mephisto really uh, put the freeze to me. And there's not much I can do. Notice how I'm still frozen, though. That's because of the other effect. <laughs> This is why we put all of our center viewpoints in the battle cry, by the way. So using that teleport staff, using that battle cry, using the black foil and the rhyme. Rhyme gives us more MF too, which is not bad. So if you want, you can actually finish him off somewhat weaker war cry and put on get some more MF out of it as well. It's a slower boss kill, but it's not so slow that, you know, it's not semi-effective. The cool thing about crushing blows is that its effectiveness doesn't diminish even in power, so... Like I said, we pretty much have, you know, most of what we want at this point. Alright, so I can just replace this one spirit there, and I'll finish him off. Get that enough off of the other one. Ooh, wow, okay. Damn, that's sick actually, okay. That could potentially be used um, against Bale or something. I might use the Clug Laws we found very early on though. So that's really good as well. Well, see the thing is, is like, I explain things over and over because I realize people come at different parts in the video. I also realize you might have forgotten. You might be like, what am I missing? Why can't I kill Mephisto? I see you doing it. And maybe, you, you know, you forgot your battle cry or something. And it's like, oh, that's right. I forgot we need to need to get battle cry into the, on the Mephisto. But what's interesting, actually, is we can actually attack even faster with this if we wanted to. We can actually show that off a little bit. Um, the slowing effect I plan on showing later when we show Cleglaw's gloves that she found earlier on. Pretty common item some of these are. So it's not like it's going to be like insanely hard to find these. Remember to go to Act 4 every time. It's faster to re-farm a Fisto like this. And then just go right back to Durance and do it again. On single player, you want to actually reset your map by going back to normal and going back to Nightmare until you have a map where it's literally an immediate left or right behind you or something like that, so you can just instantly farm Mephisto over and over. And uh, that's very easy to do for the for a Mephisto map. Doriel's a little tougher to do, but you can get like two close catacombs as well, and I can also do it as well. That sounds like a good warning to me. I'll just do some Mephisto farming, actually. I'll just farm some Mephisto. I remember Mephisto, oddly enough, can drop a Hogs. can drop crazy items. can drop Train Gloves. Imagine that on this build. Pretty good stuff. You can drop Matrix. Mephisto can drop Oculus. A lot of super valuable items. No Shaco though, so um, I'm gonna have to get at least to Hell and Daryl to farm that efficiently. Keyword is efficiently, because you can also farm that elsewhere, but Terror Zones or Bale, but it's not efficient.
Okay, here we go. Once again, you can see here, the waypoint is pointing this way, so I'm looking out this way for... for the end point here. It's probably like right here or something. Ow! Well, it is, but I had to go further than that. Yikes! All the way out left. Notice I leave plenty of room in my inventory to do this. And so now I'm going to use a faster attack speed. So this should actually get us to the next breakpoint, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's getting us to the next breakpoint. The Sanders is kind of nice, giving us some attack speed. Getting us to that extra breakpoint here. Shouldn't be using all these juice by the way. It's kind of bad for him. Okay. Put on some MF. Finish him off with Warcry. Another Necromancer item. <laughs> That's not a good one, but definitely shows uh, the game really wants uh, me to play a Necromancer right now. Seems to be what's going on. <clears throat> Our playthrough requires 200 IQ. Uh, it definitely requires beyond what I would say the standard knowledge that you can acquire just by playing the game. I know I never knew how to play a barb like this until I watched like speedrunners and stuff, so I'll admit that uh, um, playing barb is definitely a learning curve. It's rough. It truly is. Mm. That's not bad though. Yeah, that's like a unique. Oh, definitely, man. They're definitely going to add some kind of holy class. It's interesting they actually decided to wait on the paladin this time. Hmm. The druid and the assassin-like character actually got first pick. It's about time, right? <clears throat> add some breakfast. How did the spirits roll? Good enough. That's the good answer. Just barely good enough. So you want your spirits to average at least 60 FCR. Um, so that this 25 CR here can carry it up to 85, meaning you only need 20 FCR more. Unless you had another 10 FCR AMI, which I actually don't. So if I didn't have that, that'd be pretty uh, sad at the moment. I'd be sitting at 65, and we'd really be relying on this for killing bosses even more so. So it's 31 and 29, just barely hitting that breakpoint there. Exactly 105 right now. That's nice. If you guys didn't know, fun fact about the Barbarian. Barbarian is arguably the most efficient magic finder in the late game. You target elites with a skill like Berserk or Leap Attack or Double Throw, and you use Find Item. Another fun fact about the Barb is that it is the fastest, faster cast rate frames in the game tied with Sorceress. Did you know that? Now you know. <laughs> Thought it was time for a fun fact near the end of the video. <clears throat> Zerk Barb is really nice, but unfortunately, in order to make the Zerk Barb a little bit better, you're gonna need some, some kind of an item. Notice how the mercenary really tanks. I swear, battle, battle command and battle orders are so broken. So one thing to note is, um, I think we have Nephrims for this. If I wanted to, I could try to roll a 20 attack speed 
crushing blow gloves as well, and then I can get even higher crushing blow. So that's actually a way to get more crushing blow to go faster like this. We will be making some crafts in a bit. I don't typically mess with that though until I at least get to the end of my game. Oh, that was... I, I didn't even put my out there. Already fast for one walk, cool and all, but not really need it. All right, we're gonna do one more Mephisto farm, and then I think you guys have seen enough of Mephisto. I start tomorrow doing some Endorio farm, and then we'll continue pushing through Nightmare, which really isn't much left at this point. It's pretty easy, and then the real work comes when prepping for Hell. However, strangely enough, this character is already kind of prepped for Hell in a lot of ways. Just might not already know it. But there's always ways to prep more, and so we're gonna do that. How much magic find do we have right now? I put on Rhyme almost have 90. So that's it's pretty good. I did this one, I'm not paying attention. So, as you can see, he is perfectly capable of just farming a boss over and over again. <laughs> Concentrate is really nice, by the way. Just one point into it gives you a lot of attack rating and a lot of damage. And the attack is not interruptible, which is important, because that means if they try to hit you with something that would put you in a hit recovery, it doesn't do it. Which allows you to actually kill the boss. And that's why we have the one point Concentrate from the beginning. Nightmare, like I said, you can wait to get it a little bit longer until you want to start boss farming. If you don't care about boss farming at all, I suppose you don't have to get it. But even barbarians can benefit quite a bit from a boss farm. <clears throat> and let's see, are we down? No, probably up. Up and straight ahead. Nope. Is Barb Hardcore? No, but we've only died to something stupid because I was just messing around, so... Barb is really tanky. I never died on the <laughs> Double Throw Hardcore Barb playthrough, and that one was a lot tougher because it didn't use meta strats. You just used Double Throw and only Double Throw throughout the entire playthrough. I wasn't allowed to use... Um, I wasn't allowed to use uh, War Cry on that playthrough. Oh, Mercenary, no. Okay, so we're here. Run some attack speed, put on Black Will, my spirit. Notice that battle cry. It's a negative 84 enemy defense. It means that even without much attack rating at all, I can hit him very reliably. Now that the mercenary gave me attack rating, it's even more likely. Yep, alright. So we're gonna show off what we have so far, and then this will be the end of part one. As expected, the barb got least far. Overall. Die to him. That's possible. No, I don't do it. He didn't do his uh, chain charge bolt attack. If he did, I would have been dead. But I was just trying to finish it real fast because this video is almost 12 hours long already. It went over a lot in this video. Um, there's a lot of things you have to farm very slowly. So that's kind of how the Barbarian works. And some pretty cool things already that are kind of helping us out. A lot of them that are not required. But as you can see, riches are already within their grasp. Nightmare Mephisto drops all kinds of high caliber stuff. And even the not high caliber stuff, he drops a lot of decent stuff as well. 
Good evening. I think this like towels mask would be nice too. Can always deal with it. So at this point, we're gonna show off her skills again here. Show off her HP at this point in the video. We're level 46. Continue to level up tomorrow. So as you can see, our res is decent for Nightmare. It will be bad for hell, but how bad? I don't know. It might be passable for our HP and with stun. Keep in mind you have stun. Also have faster cast rate. We have a decent amount of MF here. Uh, we have more MF with Rhyme and we can stack more. Unfortunately, we haven't found like a really good MF amulet yet. Otherwise, it'd be even easier to stack. But we'll find some more stuff. Or, you know, at least a high MF ring and then an FCR amulet. Something to switch it up. One point battle command though. I actually have two in the battle orders because initially the uh, length was really low. So I want to at least have a little bit more. That's not a bad thing though. You don't lose that much damage doing that. You get a max war cry though. You get a max battle cry. And then you get a max taunt. You can put some extra points in a howl if you want. Um, one into all these. One into mace mastery. And then one into concentrate. Of course with a max battle cry. Um, being a synergy for War Cry, that's perfect because you reduce boss's defense a ton. Whereas for items, we have an insight. Four socketed uh, pull arms are pretty easy to find in Nightmare. If you're really desperate, you can use a four socketed bow with an Act 1 Mercenary, but it dies a lot more frequently. This is just a res. I've been using this since normal. This one's nice. Quad res, uh, 40 life, some damage reduction. We're gonna get more resistances on the armor soon. I'll probably just upgrade his armor if we don't find anything better by hell, 100%. For now though, he's got plenty of survivability, as you can see with his stats. We have two spirits. With exactly 60 FCR and 25 from stealth, we only need 20 more to hit 105 exactly. So that was a close call. Exactly hitting 105 there. Um, didn't get bad RNG, didn't get good RNG, got dead center RNG. And then we got some MF. Um, dual res belt, very nice. Um, at some point we're going to want uh, four potion slots though. And I'm using a lot of MF on the build still so we can actually find stuff. Like when we find bosses, whenever you get MF you should put it on. It's really easy to get MF from Nightmare Vendors. Uh, you can get 25 up to 35 on this. And jewelry is pretty easy to find like in places like Cows. Uh, once we get more flawless topazes it's pretty easy to get three topazes as well in the helm. We'll go over that later though. And then we have some decent charms, just some res, light, you know, mana, some other stuff. Um, of course, we also have a setup with some items that will prove very helpful later on in this guide video. Black, Rhyme, Sanders, Quagla is faster attack speed, and we can even make the boss slower, which means they won't move as much and they won't attack as fast. That's going to prove very good as well later on. Of course, bosses can't be knocked back, so that works. Um, otherwise, in most cases, that wouldn't work at all. At any rate, good stuff. This is Barbarian Rags for Riches Part 1. Of course, uh, we'll have all of the timestamps and, of course, all of the chapters for you guys uploaded to YouTube. Um, Barb is indeed a monster, arguably the most efficient magic finder in the late game and in Travancore, but in the early game, you can see it's a real slog. Um, we're going to do a lot of crafts, we're going to do a lot of other preps, uh, gambling, vendor shopping, and things for hell, um, of course, and of course farming a lot of nightmare cows and things similar to that. So that will be a good time, but keep in mind though, this is a very solid way to get a lot of faster cast rate, a lot of mana, and a lot of damage, and with the mana regen, this is a solid build, it's going to pump the game. So you're already kind of ready to farm some riches at this point. As you can see, the nightmare bosses are pretty easy. Um, but we'll, of course, look deeper into the game tomorrow or the next day. Um, we'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow after this. This is a lot. Talking like 12 hours straight pretty much completely the whole time. Anyway, guys, of course, like and subscribe if you like these videos. And remember, there's a... Um, a whole series on my YouTube, R2R, Rags to Riches. Um, there's six currently um, in there with all the parts, of course. There's like a lot of videos. This will be another one. This is the last installment, so let's finish it out. Let's finish strong. RNG was decent today, so.
We get it tomorrow. Love you guys. Thank you guys for the support. Let's get it. Smash it.